Welcome everybody to the live stream. I'm Megan Fox and I'm with pjmedia.com and I am here today with Dan Kleinman of Safe Libraries. And we are going to do something that we haven't done before, uh, at least not for a while, right Dan? We are going to go undercover. That's right. And interestingly enough, the webinar that we're in is playing this music right now that sounds a lot like mystery music. Here we go. <laughs> can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. All right. Well, I don't have any way of muting it or anything. We're just kind of waiting to go in. So for right now, I'm going to uh, remove them so we're not talking over that. But what just happened to you, Dan? You were registered for this webinar. I was registered for the webinar and I joined it uh, three minutes early and uh, I was blocked about uh, two minutes early. So they have Welcome, already... friends. Thank you so much for joining us today for this special conversation <laughs> right. on sustaining a positive reading culture in the midst of book challenges with Amanda Jones, Courtney Pentland, and Melissa Tom. Welcome. I'm Fatima Policarpo, an editor here at School Library Connection, and you'll only see me for a few minutes now and at the end. Mostly you'll be hearing from our presenters who have so many empowering ideas to share with you today. <laughs> Before they get started, Very I'm just going to go over a few keys to your experience with us during this webinar and share a little bit about our sponsor as well as School Library Connection. Today's webinar is sponsored by Overdrive, the leading digital reading platform for K-12 schools. We're so thankful to so have we should tell Overdrive, Overdrive they kicked me out. Company that cares about strengthening libraries and offers solutions for getting ebooks and audiobooks to your school. Delete community. anybody who says anything otherwise. If you want to learn more about Are these Overdrive, with they the would American love to hear Library from you. Association. Reach out. Any of these contact contacts here. <laughs> Now on to some housekeeping. Um, you'll notice that your audio is automatically muted, but please do use the chat for your questions or ideas or to share your feelings on this conversation. Please do be mindful of your use of the chat space. All comments should be respectful of your peers and contribute to the discussion in a positive way, as well as avoid any offensive and exclusive language. But I know we don't have to worry like about Like the words in the books? Um, you can also use the blue question box to share questions blood, and emojis to share reactions. <laughs> if you have any difficulty with connecting, you can um, select the phone um, icon up at the I'm top to and they'll give you out. instructions on how to connect using your you phone. You can't even use the language that's in the kids' books. I also want to remind you that if you're here with us live, you will be receiving a PD certificate for I one won't. hour of professional <laughs> Dan got kicked credit. out. But you must be online with us for at least 45 minutes and just make sure that you registered with your um, email so that we could send you that certificate. And it should be coming to your um, your email on Wednesday. If you are watching the recording, then just go ahead and take the quiz at the end and we'll uh, give you that certificate right away. Some other free resources you'll find on School Library Connection include articles from our current issue of the magazine, reviews of recently published children and young adult books, and interviews with authors. When you subscribe to SLC, you get access to even more articles from leaders in the field discussing instruction, the latest research, tips for managing the school library, and so much more. Um, I don't I'm sure you already know this if you're here, but School Library Connection is also your pre premier source of reviews for K through 12 books with over 500 book reviews published yearly in the magazine and online. So our reviews feature guidelines set by educational leaders to address real world needs of librarians and educators. And they also feature ideas for teaching with the books in your library. And all the ideas we are hope slanted, that you'll stay so parents and don't know what's check really in going from on. Your community of library peers, stay in touch through social, or feel free to email us directly. So today, we're also very excited to announce that we have two prizes for two attendees. Ooh, that prizes! Are here and not me. Today, uh, we are offering the first one is a six-month subscription to School Library Connection. If you don't win, you don't need to know SLC, just look for your 30-day uh, trial, free trial, in the follow-up email that you'll get from us after the webinar. Oh, they're giving away the a tablet. The second door prize will be um, from Overdrive Education. Thank you. And it will yeah. be a Samsung Galaxy tablet as well. They robbed me so of that stay tablet. stay tuned throughout the <laughs> webinar. We will announce Minimum damages the winners right there. at the end. And now it is my 
full pleasure to folks amanda jones you our presenters sued today. I'm parents so excited to have for saying the truth about parents and <laughs> reading advocates thing? here with us to share their thoughts with you um we have amanda jones oh Courtney my god Cullen, and melissa tom Welcome, welcome, welcome. I should get what's and his I name in here. I will let them now tell you a little bit more about themselves. Michael the Lunsford. I'm going to invite him. With you. Okay. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'll start off. Um, my name is Amanda Jones, and I am a fifth and sixth grade school librarian in Watson, Louisiana. I am the You're current more than president that. of the Louisiana Association of School Librarians. And uh, I am the ASL, ASL, there we go, sorry. Yeah, this woman sued. Chapter Assembly Secretary. Parents. I've been an educator for 22 years, because 14 she wanted years to push as the an English books language arts teacher and reading specialist. She lost, this is by my the way. Year as a school librarian. Right, she lost the case. And uh, like I said, I'm from Louisiana, so next up is Courtney. I think she got $11,000 from the American Hi, Library everybody. Uh, my name is Courtney Pentland. I am a high school librarian in Nebraska, and I worked She's for a very be the long new time ASL um, president. with our state association as a member of the board for about 10 years. Um, and one of those things was as a chapter delegate to AASL and am now serving on the board of directors for AASL as president elect and um, adjunct faculty for a school library program here in Nebraska for the last 12 years and have written and worked with a bunch of different school library publications like School Library Connection. Um, and I'm just excited to talk about how much we love, like we love reading. <laughs> so, um, and how we spread that joy with our students. We're gonna talk about the and book my banners. My name is Melissa Tom, and I am a middle school teacher librarian in Connecticut. I am the current president of the Connecticut Association for School Librarians. And that's actually kind of how we three have met originally through all our library connections right. throughout Since the we're past doing years. this, um, this is my eighth year as yeah. a librarian. This, a uh, you know, introduction thing. Let me get them out of here for a second because the chat needs to know what we're doing. Okay. So we are undercover right now in a library, a radical librarian meeting where they're going to talk about how to thwart parents like us that don't want our kids looking at porn like this. This is what they're going to be talking about tonight, how to keep this away from you. And we are undercover. Dan just got kicked out because they recognized him. He's Dan Kleinman from Safe Libraries, and he is the nation's leading expert on everything dangerous in the libraries for your kids. So they don't know we're here. If you haven't already in the chat, go ahead and put who you are and where you're coming from. And we oh, also really to like to know our audience. So there's going to be a poll. No, I would recommend and we'd not love doing If you that. would fill it out, just what is your current teaching position? Like, where do you find yourself in the world of education? I, I, I suggest right you now? don't do so it. Give everybody <laughs> okay. a minute to it's a fill that thing. out. Oh, it's so even. It's like a, you, <laughs> a dead heat between all three areas or all three levels. Ooh, I'm so excited to see there are a couple administrators and supervisors here. I wish we had more of those to some of our Yes, PDs. we're going to indoctrinate like more of them. Those are the groups we're that we get really want to hear We're going to get the inside scoop on what's going on inside the library world, you guys. Systemic changes. I'm telling so, you, yeah. you think awesome. they're not they're radicals? Cool. They are. Uh, I got some major All breaking right. news. That's really out interesting. About that. It's very, very even that between the elementary, if you want, middle, I'll try and high to break school. It with you here and as later. we said, Amanda and I are middle school right now. And um, Courtney, you're high school, you said, right? Yes. Um, but we all work with our state organization, so we have a lot of experience really with K-12 in the work that we do. So hopefully everybody will walk away with some really great stuff for tomorrow. I was an elementary librarian for like a hot minute. <laughs> so I was not. <laughs> three quarters of a year, um, 2019 to 2020, if that tells you why it was only three quarters of a year. Oh, so. I was yes, a volunteer librarian for two years. So. I got more experience than this I'm, lady. I'm not built to be an elementary librarian. <laughs> I don't I'm think I am either. Cool. Oh, God. Can we They're get, to, it, so Can we get to, to the see point, you, though? <laughs> My sixth graders are pretty darn excited to see me every day, too, That's I have true. to say. <laughs> um, but we wanted to talk about, first off, several things have changed in the past few years. I'm sure everyone has noticed. 
um, even just uh, yeah, yeah, more you porn. The kids, you know, just, more porn. Even if it hasn't happened to you, we're seeing a lot of book bans, it, a lot no, of harassment of educators, school librarians, teachers online because of this. Um, Maybe it's because we're of seeing this. a lot of book challenges. <laughs> And I know I was looking at Could numbers in 2020, uh, the American Library Association, um, what was it, 273 that titles, two awards titles were challenged in 2020, and we're in October of 2022, we've already had 1,651 uh, individual titles challenged. So obviously, that reported. Yeah, right? that are reported. That have been reported. Yeah, those are just reported. And actually, those numbers are from January to August 31st. So that doesn't even cover September, October. Um, so we're seeing some huge challenges. I know just personally myself, um, I have spoken up about censorship in our public library, uh, at our right. public library board meeting, and I have been harassed censorship. for the past three months. As if people have lawsuit, not actually, always censored um, porn when it comes to defamed kids. defamed and harassed online. For defamed who, and harassed? Uh, are not happy with oh, me she speaking out against case. censorship. And yeah, she lost that case. Too bad for them. She did not get defamed. The <laughs> but, judge uh, threw it out. Things have changed. And if, you know, did, did, did either of y'all want to talk about anything you've noticed? Well, I do think things have changed a lot and everybody who is in tune to current events, as Amanda up. said, sees something pretty regularly. And if you are involved in your school library association on a state level, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of discussion and advocacy that has come out of all of these things. So remember, you know, things this have is changed, kind of stuff but one of the, the things books. that I am very proud of as a librarian is how we've all pulled together Teaching and how we how support each other. And we're going to talk more about how we do that through our reading. <laughs> As this webinar goes on, that's Courtney, what this book is gay. Yeah, I would just say that the um, the challenges and things that are coming from community members are absolutely something that is on our radar and things that we need to be aware of. We also need to be very, very cognizant of legislation that is proposed, as well as mm -hmm. how that They're legislation, proposing legislation is. Um, <laughs> She put asked before Louisiana for legislation your state legislature to works, prevent parents from complaining uh, about books. Sometimes she there did. are things These that are, are two-sided tacked into things um, instead of being standalone bills. So just be really cognizant of what is being they proposed right within your state at, legislature. Yeah, the have really pay attention uh, to the proposed. candidates. Um, as we, we hit, like we are hitting elections, anything, including hard here in the next couple of weeks. Um, some of you have already filled in maybe your mail-in ballots or you're receiving those mail-in ballots. Do your due diligence and do your research on the candidates, not just for your state and national um, legislature positions, but also your local school boards, um, your state school boards and even like judges that are in your area. So really pay attention to the candidates. If you thought that um, paying attention to the elections was, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time to really, really do that and to talk with your friends and loved ones about being are they trying to um, avoid saying to vote voters for Democrats because it who seems are getting like their it. information from reputable and reliable sources? Yes, you know, but Off some things box. never change. They don't. Some things, oh, some things never change, sorry. and that is the fact that school librarians uh, will always champion the right to read and the right to read porn. Also, we like champion this. a parent's right to make decisions for their own child. <laughs> and as well. this. Um, we just, uh, we have to be careful that. You know, you know I'm really old and I've never done any of as that. As a parent, <laughs> and I, I don't force your opinion on other parents. But we, um, you know, we Why will always challenge. Why are they trying to force their opinions on us? Challenge censorship attempts. Our kids. Um, but we'll also always uh, champion reading joy. And so that is what we are. Reading joy. And I'm so excited That's to talk about it. That's one way to put it. Uh, today. Shame on you. I'm, yes, uh, because <laughs> I, as anybody, there's need, a lot of familiar names a in the board, attendee folks. list, which is we always so wonderful uh, to Shami. see people who we know. And there's lots of new names, which I'm always glad to bring more people into our community. Uh -oh. um, but one of the things that me? I work very hard in my life, as do Courtney and Amanda, is to bring joyful reading experiences, not only to our students, to but to our community as a whole, to our staff, to the families that are in our communities, and even into our own personal lives. I know all of us 
spread the book joy every time the we book go joy. to any That's gathering one way to put it. or family event or wherever we yeah, are. Yeah, it's like family so friendly drag really shows in libraries. Really fun oh, strategies so that we have all used in our schools in order to do that. Um, and the first thing that we're going to talk about is kind of the plan for our our whole presentation. So, Courtney, take it away. Yes, Courtney, okay. take it away. Um, these are not things that are new to anybody, I don't think. These are all things that we See what they're doing? Done. They complain like about parents groups for doing never this. Change. They these complain about mass resistance, Moms for Liberty, Parents Defending Education. Professionals that we are. We're helping people like other parents. But so they're that we doing that exact thing right now. Create this is another one of those projection double standard things that the library Lovers of literature, I mean, I think one of our goals is that our students, like when they're my age, and older still want to read, you know, like that is still something that is, is a joy for them. So all of these things we have done. Um, and while we know that there's some legislation in states that is tricky to navigate um, and that there are some political landscapes that don't feel super safe necessarily um, in some respects, we still want to be able to, support our students and their love of reading. Like we want to be able to do that. So um, here's some things to think about. So one of the things is just to make time to read yourself. Uh, I know there's a lot of librarians who said, especially during like the, um, the start of the pandemic where they were just like, I cannot get into reading. Like I just, it, I have lost that. Um, and coming back to that piece. There were no children to sexualize to when they weren't yes. in class. So Thank think about so what you're reading because we're going to be joy. asking you We are going to ask that question. Their book yeah. joy. Um, talk with your students about books. Share with each other. One of the best ways for me to help support yeah. students reading is to find out what they've liked. Um, what they don't like is even more helpful sometimes. <laughs> like talk about books. Um Look at this and one. Says bond, my school district community is scared. Like, you want a community. If they create a collection policy, it will tell the community that, that they can that, challenge. That is a culture within your That's funny. school community. Connect your students with authors. That is one of the most powerful things for no. for students <laughs> to look and say, "These are real people <laughs> that wrote these books." Um, and I could do that too. Like I think. Yeah, that, I'd like that to know so who great. are the real people who wrote about, these books. Um, I really author would. talks it's with and visits with kids. And then promote what's Who in your collection. Zzer Thinking about like how do I get the word out to students about the great stuff we have. That's so those Juno are kind Dawson, of the topics. Again, changed, none of this is new stuff. This is stuff y'all do already. Um, so please, please, please. Teaching kids how to meet up as with, we're going through some of these things, gay dudes share your Grindr. brilliance in the chat. We can all learn from each other. So please make sure that you take some time and, and add that in. All right. Oh, my gosh. There are people are already, like, putting in like, stuff in the chat. Um, and actually, Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus is one of my all-time favorite books. And if you have not had Dusty Bowling, and we'll talk more about this for author visits, but if you have not had her, for your students, she is amazing. And I highly recommend trying to connect with her to talk to your students. And then the event are the um, the sequel momentous events in the life of a mm -hmm. cactus. And just a really quick tip right now. Um, Shannon, what? who is on this call and I are doing a spark book fair a virtual book fair that is really like from book depot and book outlet. And those are really highly reduced like websites where you can buy books. Uh, the insignificant events in the life of cactus, I believe, was one of the titles I saw as I was going through list and making like my cart for my home library, which mm, is a problem. But um, so definitely that book is amazing. So good. I saw somebody put Hummingbird in the by oh. Natalie Lloyd. I haven't started it yet. It's on my pile. Like I'm about to start it. So I'm Amanda, I'm so start it tonight when we get off the call. Like for That's real. My hair. And, oh. Shameless That's plug too. And Perry, I think I saw your name. You should totally put the link to our podcast episode in the chat. We interviewed oh God, they have Natalie a podcast. Lloyd and it just came out Tuesday. It was the most amazing conversation. She is one of my most favorite people for authors. And she's most so favorite real. people. Hummingbird is her like 
heart book. Um, you, everybody needs to add that. I don't care how old you are or young you are or what grade you teach. That is a book for everybody. So I'm about to start it, but I just finished, um, words with wings by Nikki Grimes, which I, Nikki Grimes, she, look, she tweets poems all the time. And I'm like, what a, what a gift. She just tweets out a poem. She just writes a tweet. It's a poem. It's like a gift. Um, so I just finished this one, but I'm about, I'm going to read Hummingbird, but first I have to read The Joy of Reading. Yay. Um, by Donalyn Miller. And, it's um, funny Harry how none of them Lis are reading the books that they want the kids Lis to read. Lisenny. Lisenny. Lis thank right? you. How come none of them are reading and Gender I'm, Queer? And then I'm going to Hummingbird. I've got my pile. They're they're not oh picking well, the books they want the, the kids things, to read. I think this is a slide where we talk about. Oh, well, this is kind of to go along with that previous slide. So, um, there were a couple books that I wanted to mention that I have recently read. That if you haven't added these yet, to definitely add them. Um, this is the first one. I'm going to hold it up to the camera, sort of. It's kind of a weird reflection, but it is called The Secret Battle of Evan Powell. And it is by Wendy Wan Long Shang. And she actually was. Um, I just sent you a, a DM a graphic of my ago, getting kicked out of this room. And I don't remember the name of it. Oh, right you got now. a screenshot? It was a, it was a nutmeg nominee. Yeah. Um, Great. But this you got a book screenshot. Is Everything so they do. Just There's came out right today. So it's relatively there. new. You might not Did have you seen give it to me it on yet. Twitter or and the private it's chat? It's all about a, a kid. I'll give it to you on the Twitter DM. Okay. Uh, because his dad did something really bad um, financially. It didn't like, come through yet. took money from the neighbors and then disappeared. Yeah. I got nothing. And so mom I and. I gave you the picture of before I got kicked out and after I got kicked out. Kind of it didn't come through. That's weird. Okay. And well, maybe it'll come through soon. They moved into this town. It's a picture after all. And he to start over. And. In this town, they always do an annual Civil War celebration because they're on the East Coast. And Evan is Chinese, and he is struggling with kind of figuring out how to connect with this. But he finds out some really interesting information about the Civil War and how there were Chinese soldiers. Hey, this sounds like an and actual I good book in Connecticut, that talking And there's about. a Connecticut connection. So that was like an extra bonus. Are, are they um, so giving those to kids or, or is it just uh, the queer one. stuff? And I have two others if it's I have possible time that's just the way that they're spinning the book as usual. I mean, anything the library yeah, There could be blow jobs in it we don't know about. Uh, right. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So here's my phone. I've got the Empress of Time that I am listening to from Libro FM, the ALCs that they I'm have a for teachers and librarians. Way. It's fabulous. It's nighttime. That's kind of how I get my reading done. Um, I saw Kathy Lester posted she's reading the inheritance games my blurry background is not letting me show my books hold on let me unblur for a minute um but that one was great um she just announced the book number four <laughs> is happening so i am super excited about that um in the wild light by jeff zentner is probably one of the best books that i have read in a very long time there we go there's in the wild light by jeff zentner um, it was beautiful, just absolutely like masterpiece in story craft. Here's the inheritance games. Is it, fun twisty is that turvy a bust mystery. Of and then I'm gonna plug a local <laughs> author, um, Lynn Painter wrote a book is called Better Sherman Than the Movies, Mouth which is absolutely head? adorable. <laughs> and her next book for teens, The Do Over, comes out very, very soon. Like I think in the next couple of weeks. So, and my one that I listened to a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago was Sunny it G's series through, of Dan. rash decisions by Nadine Dillon. I think you sent it to Dylan. me. Did you send it to somebody? Oh else? my gosh! Oh, so good. Say it again one more time. I'm going to write that down. No, I'm sorry. Sunny it's, uh, you. G's um, series Megan of rash Megan decisions. Um, Fox it was uh, on Twitter. Yeah, it didn't it's come Megan through. Megan Fox writer. And the other main character is like, Wong. She writes and things. They, not, yeah. on this epic adventure on Twitter for civil rights. Yeah. <laughs> Megan Fox right. I will say that Jeff Sentner's in the Wild Light was I'm at uh, Seth's so harass. good. Like I could go on yes. about it. I just I, I just uh, sent you a DM um, so you can Violet see there's no photos there. By Barbara D. And mm -hmm. I, like it I didn't get your DM it's about yet. a girl who does makeup tutorials, YouTube makeup tutor tutorials, but like um FX like movie That's makeup. Anyone that now just and says text. so it has that aspect which I, it feels like our kids oh, are always you send it to my wanting phone? to watch the makeup YouTube you tutorials. So I feel like it like drew them into that, but mm -hmm. it's also about substance abuse um within the home life. You know, home life is just she just writes so well. 
Oh, for substance abuse. Current. They love books um, so about substance abuse because I love for kids. Blue. And hey, they're, they're always the giving planet. them books about um, alcoholism, substance abuse, well. rape. It just came out. Just I the think darkest yeah. shit you can imagine. The last two weeks. So go in the, the, the and then young one adult last one that's kind of a book. A little bit It'll be nothing but drugs, sex, depression. Many of you and alcoholism. I swear to God. This one right here. Only so this one um, just came out September 6th. It is Attack of the Black Rectangles, and it is by the wonderful Amy Sarah King, or A.S. King, as she writes for her young adult stuff. Um, and this one is all about kind of censorship and oh, keeping censorship. kids from reading things that adults think they can't handle. Um, it oh, is yeah. very well done. Attack There's a the lot of rectangles. things oh, that you can I discuss see. in this book, and I highly recommend adding it. It's to like what the library did to you when you were the audio investigating the child pornography. Yeah, the that's, audio. What, that's what that's like, what I got from the library. Nothing but redactions. The most popular way that I get my books. <laughs> All right. Wow. That was. We could do a whole. Could you imagine if we spent time that. teaching kids English <laughs> and mathematics? Okay. Yeah, and how to I feel like the sentence. three of us, we probably <laughs> are constantly talking to our kids about books. Um, how to be writers. I know, yeah, so I know that's what y'all are doing all the time because that's what I, that's what I'm doing all the time. Um, and well, I love suing that. you parents with the ALA's um, money. Right. The book wrangler. I think it was the book wrangler. Put out some posters. If you like this, this try this. This one raised a hundred thousand yeah. dollars to Sue Parents. So I have those posters all around. Hundred the grand they gave her. And but I love talking to the kids. Um, you know, the other day a kid came in and she had violets are blue. Yeah, be sure to she's follow, like, I've read all of Barbara D's. Rumble. And I'm like, well, if you like Barbara D, let's try Ann Braden. Wow. Because also similar. Was that you or that? That was me. Handled very well. Oh. <laughs> um, so those conversations I, think, I put are that really up important there. to talk to your students um, and and find out what they like in order to give them book suggestions. I agree, and I know that um, we all do this. We all do book tastings. We might have little like ways, different ways that we do it. Uh, but I do this this regularly, at least once or twice a month with different grade like. levels in my school. Pros. Sometimes it's formally, sometimes it's informally. And I have gay. a really fun um, graphic or like paper that I actually yeah, I have on gross. my tables These in my little basket that looks like that this to make, you know, the whole metaphor come to, as young as come to life. And Shannon McNeese, I think, Ugh. is on this call. She is one of my co-librarians in my district. And I most of the good ideas that I have. I really get from her. I'm not going to lie. Like she's amazing. Um, and she shared this with me a long time ago and I kind of tweaked it a, a smidge, but mostly it's what she gave me. And you know, the kids, like, I just want to know what they're interested in. And it's this whole restaurant metaphor, you know, they're coming for a tasting. I have cute little candles that I put on my table that I bought on Amazon. I have little fake like plastic vases that I put their pencils in. I put tablecloths on the table when it's a formal book tasting. And then I just put out all the books and they just get to like browse and walk around. And we do like impromptu book talks, students and teachers that are there and they write down their list. And this is something I do at the beginning of every year with all the grades and just kind of book see what tasting. they're interested in. And that Ugh. helps guide my kind of book advisory for the rest I of the definitely year. definitely don't want to taste this book. And it I'll really helps me much. connect with individual kids, especially those that don't really write down anything. I can kind of see, like, get those students off the bat and then try to, like, you know, make some concerted effort to share books that they that might pique their interest. So I don't know if either of you have anything to add for book tastings. I know you both do them. <laughs> I do them. Okay, but let me tell you, somebody tweeted about this the other day, and I was like, I totally do this. When we're doing book tastings and stuff, and I'll get up in there with all the books, and I'm talking to the kids, and they'll say, oh, I really like this author. And I'm like, yeah, that's my friend. I like can't just, believe they let this person oh, talk I've to kids. I met the author like one time, and I'll pull up my phone. And I, I guess be like, that's because of, and the obscenity Hale. laws so are. Because uh, <laughs> me and R.L. Stein. I'm making so friend. that the uh, librarian. Oh, my God, Amanda. Uh, I do exempted. that all the time. Shameless, like, shameless. I'm shameless. I'm like, do you know I know them in real life? Yeah, shameless. <laughs> I'm like, I met that person. That's my, B that's my BFF. Look, look right here. Look at this picture. But they get excited. They're like, you've, you've met so-and-so? I need to read this book. I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that. Oh, I tell them, I'm like, I met them. They're so nice. And they're, and they're like, like, you okay, met them in real lady? life? Are you yeah. real? Like, are you for real? I'm like, yes. My high school kids are not as excited about that as your middle school kids are like, whatever. <laughs> oh, they got a they got a huge kick out of, um, I got to meet Kwame Alexander. Uh, <gasps> oh, two weeks ago, like two weekends ago, right? 
Yeah, and I got I'm like, look, it's me and Kwame. Woo! My best friend forever. I think what? even high school kids could get behind that one, to be honest. Yes. Who's Kwame it's Alexander? Am I missing like, something? Real. Is that an uh, author? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> you, you, well, I'm going to have to Google that. Build those relationships. <laughs> um, I always admire the way Tennessee School Library they... and Dustin Hensley builds relationships with his high school students. Why are they um, he's, simping he's for Kwame? He's really good at it. So if I follow him, ALA does. I want to see what he's doing. Who is um, he? But it's it's really oh, important that you build on race. that sense of community of with the kids. You build that trust. <laughs> These white wine you show them that you're a safe person for to talk to. That the library is a safe place to them. And I have the Dr. Rudy and Sims Bishop quote: um, "Books are windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors." They and think I have this it. keeps them safe. I blew from it up huge. It's hanging in the library. Racist. And I talked to the kids about it. The American so Library Association was created by a racist. Was so racist that it's representing the name of one of their awards to get rid of the school. racist thing. And I think that's, John that's very important. They still have that the John sure Dewey we're Decimal the Dewey System where based on our collections. They were met mostly Democrats. What we know the Democrats were the most racist. They put the system in the systemic racism. This is the American Library Association. They wouldn't let blacks read in their libraries. They wouldn't let them borrow books. They wouldn't let them come into their libraries. This is the American Library Association, racist to the core, to the still core. racist to this day, anti-Semitic, anti-white right now. They have a Spectrum scholarship, and the Spectrum scholarship is not for so white people. It's interesting. So <laughs> not for white if people. there has been, it's often verbal. And if you have a process in place, people can complain all they want. You know, like everybody has kind of that right. Oh, but, look, 49% you know, there are said formal neither. processes. Like we were Almost professional have never had a book as challenge. librarians. We, and, and the district That's interesting, and the board of Dan, ed, Look at this. There are systems in place yeah. for these. They're and making it seem like it's a big the deal. Absolute right to like, you know, That's what Band Books Week is all about. It's a total fake. I, I found the fake numbers. I got the authors question, admitting to it being fake, Amendment literally right, saying, my book is challenge once, why was I put on the list? So, because um, yours dealt with LGBT, so we decided to put it on the list. Shared. The numbers are literally the fake. I found I the top book in 2010. It was only challenged four times across the entire United States all year. What a and big non-story. A lot of times librarians are by themselves. Not news at all. In Everybody complains about something it's four times all year. Top book. Come on. District, it's a fake. Unfortunately. And it harms um, LGBT community. Look at this. They community claim, look at, within right. the librarian world. Because we all need the support of one another. And when we're going through really hard things, <laughs> we are each other's best ally. And we understand what you're going through. So... <laughs> Reach out to your state organization if you are experiencing I mean, I do that. any of these I don't recommend going in there and, and don't know who to turn books. to if people I in your district don't necessarily <laughs> understand what's funny. going on <laughs> or like don't have really turned. like answers for you. Like reach out to your state organization, and if nobody is responding for some reason, you have us three now. We are all part Sorry, of your we'll community, try not to talk and over we them. can get you to yes. the people that can be the most helpful in the situation which you find yourself. So just know that you have people. Okay. That's, that's the most important part. That's the, I, you know, I'd also, I'd like to give a shout out because Becky Calzada is in the audience. And um, if y'all have never been to the Freedom Fighters website, mm -hmm. they give oh, um, Freedom Fighters, they have like scripts and things that you can tell parents word for word. Um, why is this talking? What points. is this? And it's a, it's a how to guide to help you. Um, have these conversations with parents and it's freedom F R E A D O M. Oh, yeah, I could go yeah, on and on about this. They put the link in the chat. Them. Um, so there it's, it's an a excellent website and Becky, um, who is in our audience is one of the founders of the freedom fighters of Texas. So I do want to give them a shout out. And there's always resources that are available. Um, there's a lot of state organizations, like Melissa said, that have really rallied and put together resources for their state level because every state, the how education is run, how things are funded, all of that is very different from state to state. Um, but there are also resources from ASL, like I'm not here as a representative of ASL tonight, but I do want you to know that those are things that are available through the ASL website. Yeah on like if you don't have policy and they also place, teach you how to hide things from parents mm -hmm. hide okay. those um, there are free Rumble, you don't have to be a member that. they're freely available the screen in a um, as well as some other uh pieces there too um and 
if you Good comment, need little help galaxy and you need support and you or have how to questions, lie to parents, please reach yep. out um, to, how to lie. folks in your state or national organizations. Awesome. They teach them how to lie to um, parents. So it's true. For us three, we have about 15 minutes. I knew we would not have a problem talking yeah. and filling <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try to go through the rest of like kind of our resources and slides. But one of the things I am so excited to talk about with this building community is um, this year has been my first year that I've implemented lunch book clubs. I'm a middle school librarian, completely fe flexible schedule. So I have to rely on teachers to collaborate. And lunch is really kind of the only time in the day for my students that they have like the choice to decide what they do, right? So I decided to do book clubs during the lunch waves every Wednesday. And the first titles that we're just wrapping up um, all have to do something with banning books or censorship. So with my sixth graders, I chose Alan Gratz, Ban This Book. It was Never a, been not made, not made, which is our Connecticut State Book Award a couple of years ago, and it talks about the topic. For seventh grade, I did Property of oh, the no. Rebel Parents Librarian asking if by we have Allison books. Barnes. What do we do? And if you have not read that, absolutely add it to your list. I feel like it's been under the radar a little bit, um, but I am very excited. The students loved it, and I've actually scheduled a virtual author visit for with her for like Q and A. Um, we're doing it on Wednesday this week that the kids get to ask questions and it's going to be like 20 minutes. So she didn't charge anything because it's, it's just a really quick kind of Q and a session. And then for my middle or my eighth graders, I did suggested reading by Dave Connors, which is actually one of the nutmeg nominees this year, which is very ironic and interesting. Um, and he is doing an author visit with my eighth grade lunch group on Wednesday also. Um, one of my superpowers is organizing author events. I, I'm going to toot my own horn. And so one of the frustrations I had had. You read about that. This book is good. How to toot your own horn. <laughs> we, we had a hard time getting people to come during the regular there's a chart day, like this. Honestly, in a middle school. <laughs> so I decided to be in control of said attendance. Oh, and now God. they're happening Don't during forget, my lunch. Book we club, teach where kids, I know kids how are gonna to be use there, grinder for And it's going to be like, we're going to have time to prepare and ask really great questions. Look, so, easy to meet up with them. It tells you who the nearest that. homosexuals um, are. And I highly recommend Wait, it actually you says a that. flexible schedule or have a time in your day to offer optional book clubs because you're going to get readers who are excited. And you, as a librarian, how you have a little bit homosexuals. Do you know how many sexes there are nowadays and all they're interested in is one sex? That's crazy. So I do several optional reading challenges. They're completely optional. Should um, be we do a sections. battle of the books every year. And we do those I love with Lodge our Pass. Louisiana Young I Readers Choice Pansexual. Awards um, nominees. There's 12 titles. And if they read five of the 12, they get to be in our battle of the books. And then I created a um, district battle of the books. So the past, read the past woke. three See that? or four years, yeah, um, that's it my... 2020, uh, we've had a district battle of the my books. My daughter where was involved in battle of the books. All of us have um, come together and we bring our students. I didn't and realize we battle it was, with trivia it was questions done by about ALA. the Louisiana Young Readers Choice Awards. And it's a great way. Read um, woke. We get our local bookstore, our state library involved, our public library brings the bookmobile. It's a fantastic. They time. do what author visits. I also do something called with, the Mesh uh, Society, Marks and Mesh stands for. Media, literacy, Lennon. ethics, sociology, and history. And it's a take. I was totally inspired by Cecily Lewis's Read Woke campaign. Read but woke. she's for older students. And right. uh, here in Louisiana. Sure, because there's a lot um, of blowjobs in those books, uh, I'm sure. The word woke. That's why it's for older students. It'll, it'll blow their minds. Uh, so, so, um, I called it the Mesh Society woke, as political. a way to get them to read yeah. about Dan is um, the greatest. With, uh, historical <laughs> and societal, um, <laughs> some type of message to learn. So they have to read John, you're one from each join category. Us. Do you I have want four books in each category. Yeah. And the I buy John's stuff, by the way. He's and they have to read one from each category. He writes great for kids. We do 40 book challenge. Based off of Donna Lynn Miller's forty book challenge, uh, where I he's um, the kind of person the American Library um, Association will never invite to do a challenge the kids to read from a variety books. of right. genres. So That's they might good. have to read two poetry, There's not three enough science fiction, in John's books. two mystery. <laughs> it's a way to expose them and get them interested in other genres. Um, I mentioned Cecily Lewis's Read Woke campaign, which is uh, amazing. On, uh, um, we do La World Rose Read Aloud Day on uh, and Twitter. J -L -L I should have put the link on there, but every year author Kate Messner puts out a list of authors who will do free Zooms 
uh, free Zoom author visits for World Read Aloud Day. So every day we get, I mean, every year in February, we get three or four, five, six authors to Zoom our school for World Read Aloud Day and invite community members to come in and read. Um, and then Shelly, we're birthday trying. book club. I'm not sure whose that is. I added quiet. that, and I actually want to add on, Amanda, to World Read Aloud Day. So through CASEL, which is the Connecticut Association of School Librarians, the last two years, we have actually organized author visits using connections with Kate and her website, and then just connections we have. And we set up a calendar for the day, and we try to get K-12. And we last year, I think we had eight authors, and it was a schedule. We did a Google Meet link, and we had... Anybody in Connecticut, anywhere really, could sign up, and we would send them the links for the Google Meet. Except so me, it was a really me. cool event. Except it was. Dan. I think we had 300 people Dan's request the invited. links, um, and it was a way because a lot of librarians and teachers don't know how to Still do that. The they don't know how Dan. to set up their own. Ooh. Um, Wait till like, John sees the shirt. Or don't wearing. have the connections, but through Castle, the we organization, go. we found a lot of success. Oh, like and grateful people that have benefited from that. So that's an idea for people out there. Um, and then birthday book club is something that it's not my idea originally. I got this it a actually point, through Clues. Junior Library Guild, which I have subscribed to since I've been a librarian. We don't want to get a strike just, for I copyright. Like, I like which some they will of their totally products, do. and I, I do three levels every year. But they have this idea That's where right. uh, we're you allowed can to send comment. a letter to parents, and actually they're going to put uh, a link. They hey, yes. John De La Rose. We'll take this out for a second so that we oh, don't man. have to listen to them. Man. How are hey, you? Hey, look at that shirt. Nice shirt. Welcome <laughs> to the stream, John De La Rose. Uh, we are listening to woke librarians in a closed webinar that they kicked Dan out of just, you know, before we started, but I'm in there under an assumed name and they don't know. <laughs> so we're, we're undercover right now. And Dan, why'd they kick you out? What'd you do? Bring in the form and they know who he is. Told the truth. Of the birthday mm. of the told child. the truth so to about this the library, shit. And I have a separate what shelf teaching where kids. I kept books that aren't able to be checked out. They're the birthday book club books. And a student can see number one of those three. Books. And it is donated in their honor. And I have a sticker that, that I put in the front. Is this like grinder says, for like uh, pedos? In they were literally Jones's teaching honor. them how to get on um, grinder. And they're the first reader. What the hell is this? Out and read it. And when <laughs> they return, it goes on the regular children. Topic. That sticker is in there. These are the books. So it just has this positive message that like a book. Oh my god. Is. And, you know, it's helping the library and it's helping the community. It's part of the culture of reading. And, and if you that's are what this is about, this is Have about book banning. We knew that there's a lot of families who don't recognize birthdays. Like you have to be culturally sensitive and aware. Did they just um, show that? Do something different. You could still have. The no, I no, I did. did. No, oh, I you did. did. You did. It would be some other <laughs> yeah, like, club, you know, where you're just they recognizing. Don't they don't, want they don't show that. So don't just know. kind of be conscious of your community. Uh, but it's been very successful. I brought it back this year after two years of no COVID. Um, and I've had probably, I sent it out a month ago to start and I already have about 20 people who have signed up. And if you, especially if you don't have a budget for your library, this is a way to supplement and get some new books into your library every year. If your system doesn't give you money to this do This doesn't that. feel very diverse. It's all fat white women. <laughs> <laughs> and I am doing that a reading passport a just really quickly with my students where they read that, up but... to four books and basically the challenge that they do is to help promote the book so they write a two to three sentence review or they get to pick a favorite quote from the book or they make a book ad for the book and then they get a They've stamp in their passport and for each one of too. those they get like some kind of prize like free ice cream at one of the local restaurants or something like that so they trying to encourage very, very them some pasty. fun that way and i i feel like we kind of already have talked a lot about connecting the students with the authors um i did want to say if a child comes in and they're turning in books and i'll say oh did you like that or the other day when the the child came in and said i really like these two barbara d books i snapped a picture and we have, I have a library social media page. So we have releases. So I didn't just put a kid's picture, like there's oh. a media release, but I tweeted and I said, um, Israel loves Barbara D's books and Barbara D replied. So what I did was I printed that out for Israel to take home and keep. Um, and nine times out of 10, I find uh, that the authors will, will generally yeah. um, tweet back, which is something pretty yeah. cool. I, I had um, something else I love about authors is author fan face off. Written. And if and, you have uh, not seen one, Chris, this YouTube um, series uh, by Chris school Crutcher librarian Stacy well. Ratner and um, to the stuff that I've written, yeah, they're professional, unlike these librarians. 
I wish I knew how to turn down the volume on this thing, but I don't, so I can't even make. Oh wait, I can mute it. There we go. Yeah, mute it so that we can actually say something over them and be terrible. Listening to them, it is terrible. And by the way, this woman who's speaking, Amanda, she sued parents for so-called defamation because they (laughs) complained that she was pushing these porn books in school. She lost. The judge threw it out. We actually had two of my students. Yeah, yeah she yeah. actually was listen, doing you it. Know, both you and I have been sued for defamation as well. Yes. For the same reasons. And they also lost. And they also lost. So, <laughs> and what I did was I made QR codes and I put them on the front of the books and I talked to the kids. I have a display that says author fan face off book so the kids can take it, read the book and then scan it and see that author fan face off. Uh, the hottie from the thumbnail is going to be joining us at 7 p.m. That would be Jamie Mitchell from Gays Against Groomers. She is super hot. Yeah. Um, I have done. She doesn't respond to my DMs. Visits at both of the high schools that I did not help John. organize oh. um, for a school district <laughs> that I worked She's for. And you. I love the fact that I can get four authors for the price of an in-person visit usually. Um, oh. And I absolutely Getting four authors. love That's watching the students. Okay. Like the first one that we do of the year is hilarious because I make them come up to the camera and talk to the person. And they're all like, <gasps> so nervous about talking to this celebrity, you know? And then after the first one goes, they all want to talk. But um, I've had some fantastic authors over the years. Actually, A.S. King was one of our virtual author visits last year, and she was phenomenal. We're going to have Jeff Zentner in December. Um, I know. I'm (laughs) so excited. Um, So, you know, one of the things that people ask is, how do you find these authors to do this? And, like, Kate Mester puts out a great list, but there's not a list like that for high school authors. So what do you do? Um, well, you just kind of cold call people through email. <laughs> you say, you look at their website and find out who it is that you have to talk to. Um, and then you email back and forth and negotiate. And sometimes people wow. are out of my price Please range. And sometimes people things. are just in that. I'm time. available, so ladies, if you want to I do have, buy a out. book for every kid <laughs> who um, we got a grant this year. Someone is helping us supplement that. So every kid gets to have a book. And I've noticed that if I ask the authors, if I provide book plates for them, they will sign them and send them back. So every kid ends up with a signed copy to add Probably to their own Cavit- personal library, Cavitino. which is phenomenal. That would not surprise um, We have a very me. strong <laughs> sexual presence media. of the same kids. Um, asking, and by the time that they graduate, like if they start. Asking, though, instead of asking. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the authors. A.S. King. In person. You know, through the magic of the internet. Well, and one of the things too that I recommend is if you have a local independent bookstore, mm-hmm. I have collaborated with them before to help. You know, me one of the things that Amanda Jones complained about was defamation, that this would defame her and harm her, what those parents said about the truth. Here she is in a, in a seminar showing showing that the she was not defamed or harmed in any way. She's now being promoted as a Yeah, she's being expert. promoted. She actually... Yeah. How's it that actually happen? helped her reputation. She's now the <laughs> one they go. call to, to speak at the webinar. So it looks like Amanda Jones is doing well Been for herself. Been able to bring in some really amazing <laughs> authors. I brought in Shannon I have Messenger, to say, at least, who, if you don't know. At least we don't have to suffer through the vocal fry. None of these ladies actually have <laughs> the vocal fry oh, going God. on. It is bananas. And the ninth is book is bananas, coming out in two weeks. Though. I have pre-ordered multiple copies so that I have them when they when they, are they come out. Talk about the band and kids are so excited, and that's that was what the I only way I could for. ever have afforded somebody like her. Um, we've also <sighs> had Renee snack. Watson actually through an independent I do a snack bookstore too. because I don't have a budget for that in my my library, and it's oh it's they only always complain those other about not having enough money. I'm able to bring that. It's always about and the money. And then last but not least, um, I have done for yeah. quite a few years. They got, with they got giant success, diversity, equity, lie. inclusion. I tried to do student though, book reviews, right? And I school. have a super fun success story. I am so grateful to my sixth grader, um, who this year she is like the light of my life in this whole student book. Student book I had an advanced copy in New Jersey, of a fantasy um, book that I got. A library um, would have these I, students she, review she books, and one it. was she all about rape like and sex. And then the teacher days. decided not to use the book, but they made the kids read the books to make that determination for the media specialists that they were paying eighty-three thousand dollars a year. 
exceptional this review was. Like, I couldn't believe it. And so I asked if she would be willing to send it to the author. So we went onto the author's webpage. She filled out the contact form and she she sent her review um, to the, the author just a couple days ago. We're waiting for a response. Um, but this is just a way, again, to connect and make the, the students realize that authors are real people. And it really helps you and um, get a connection with both the author. And then I'm going to send this review to the publisher who sent me this advanced copy because that's then like they're getting something back for giving me this book that I'm sharing with other people before I purchase it for my library. And it's just been very, very successful with, you know, a small number of students, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying. The other success story I had was about four years ago, I had a student read a book. It was a sequel of one of, um, I think sisters of summer. Uh, that might be the wrong title, but she read a, a, a copy of book two, wrote a review. We sent it to the publisher and the author and they both loved it so much. They sent her the third book, like in edit copy form. She, my sixth grader was like the fourth person to see the like. copy of this book in PDF form because she had sent them her reviews. So you just never know what's going to happen. You might not get any response, but I think more often you will get a response and it'll be that direct connection. Um, especially yeah, You should know that like very... Uh, this one has the uptick in her voice. She does. Where she talks like this every single time that she says anything. It's not the fry. I know. But it's um, the, uptick. Promote the uptick. library. Like, let people know it's there. Like, you don't have to like, hide that. I have displays there. all like, over the dang place. <laughs> um, if you have ever seen pictures uh, of my library, the tops of the bookshelves are filled. We have face outs all over. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. I have displays that change. We do genre of the month. We do. Um, new books, we do the celebration months, all kinds of different things. Like we just show what is there um, for students. Every and library I include been those in our printed and video announcements up in front as of the well kids um, as the, putting it on some of our social section. media accounts for the school. So like, right let people know that these the books, books are there. Um, get your they students to write blurbs to that you can add on to the books. That you know, should that's be in the adult fiction section. Like one to two <laughs> yeah, just pop right. it on the front of the book. Um, like let people know what you have because they can't check it out if they don't know it exists. I have one thing to say. Unacceptable. <laughs> And look, real quick, because I know like we're running out of time, but I did want to mention, um, you know, the power of graphic novels. We all know graphic novels are amazing. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Um, so there we know. That's me. Oh, no. That's not me. If you'll see the link That's in, the, um, no. in the slide deck. Oh, but I have a wakelet like board that is a resource yeah. board in support of graphic novels. <laughs> if you need articles or uh, research to back up why you have graphic novels in your library, you can look at that Wakelet resource board. There you go. And there's tons of things in there for you. And I did want to mention there are three amazing, three amazing school librarians come, that have they never um, show these ones, reviews Megan. for manga. So um, yeah, that's there's a link. Folks, and we're going to give you a that's not, that's not my book. Roots from New, New York saying, City. Um, if you're going to go with like a website called <laughs> Manga in Library. Something yes. like you were just showing. I'd rather Ashley look Hawkins at this. Is also I'd from New York. Back, I'm not right? sure if it's yeah. New York City or just the state of New York. But Ashley Hawkins <laughs> has Manga Library website. I wouldn't let my kids, I wouldn't let my kids look at that, though. Smith of California yeah. has the graphic library. Nobody. For reviews or ideas. Yeah. Or that manga, is a very sad little uh, package too, by the way. Check out their three websites. So I did want to show. Pubic hair, uh, I'm just not digging it. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, God. Um, but did anybody, like closing thoughts, do we have questions? Oh my God, they have thoughts? We've got two it's minutes like before we have to turn it back over. It's like they're trying to make sex uh, unappealing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I that always ask the students about manga because I'm, I'm clueless, Maybe. absolutely Globalist clueless. Vampires, and I'm, blood and I'm like, okay, tell me. Right. <laughs> Turning what to do frogs I know? Jail for pushing this shit. <laughs> what what are the cool things? Because we really didn't have a whole lot. And teachers and librarians. They, I now have a loyal group that come and people. tell me on a right. weekly basis what Laws I need, need to buy next. Changed. And I'm like, y'all, I've already bought you a lot. It's not my fault that you blow through them in a week. Well, and Wendy oh, said in the chat, it's so hard to find manga for the middle level. It yes. really is this. Especially, I have fifth and sixth grade. So they're either like really babyish or they're mm -hmm. just, they go, woo, right out the bat. What, so, is that? what do you mean by woo? Um, but I've, I've looked at those three ladies' um, websites and found what do you mean um, reviews by woo? for. Is it this? Age, you know, age relevant, age appropriate. No, that's gender um, woo woo. Yes. yes. Manga woo -woo. in the middle. Um, 
to, to find, and, and I found some good ones off those websites. Amanda no, Holmes is acting like she cares oh, about age sorry, appropriateness. No, I was just saying, I agree with all that. And you just need to reach out to people who know. And I'm very excited, Amanda, to go to the session at School Library Leadership Summit. So they're just going to ignore the, manga, the fact that's happening. that they are keeping there. these books in the libraries. Is that it? They're just going to ignore it. So, look, Reading they, Joy. They skipped right over it. That's yeah. What, you know, that's the, the best part of our jobs. They don't want to bring it up. That reading Joy. Building those connections and, and promoting well, that reading Joy. Well, because the American Library um, Association teaches so them did, to uh, redirect anybody, messages to the ones that they else want. Did anybody want to have a final thought before we turn it back over? Yeah, I, there's I, something. I have a bunch of links that I had shared. Um, there is some national legislation that all librarians need to be aware of <laughs> and start really advocating for it's the right to read um, act for their state legislatures because they're, it's the they're right advocates to now. Read bill. There you go. I'm there's, sure that's horrible. If you just do a Google search, and you I can have get a bunch news of different on information because there's all other right, we'll right get to, to it as read soon as they're things done. that are out there. But um, they're going to put the links in the chat. It was just announced recently, relatively recently, I think. Um, and it's two yeah. people. One I know is from Arizona. I don't remember where the second um, congressman uh, Jack, is. Jack uh, Reed from but Rhode Island. We actually met as a castle. A uh, myself and another castle member met last week with a bunch of people in one of our state legislatures to really, really? Um, really? like, make sure that they know that this bill is coming and to uh -huh. support it. And it has this a variety of things. It's for literacy. It is to support certified school librarians in all libraries, oh, which is huge. And then it's also connected to the First Amendment and protecting librarians no, and educators who are protecting their freedom to read, basically. No, it's not. So just become, like Courtney said at the beginning, you need to be aware and cognizant of what is happening. And right. you do need to protect your own mental health as well. So know yes. what you can handle. <laughs> And From what the parents. you need to step back, like but in Dearborn, try to stay in touch with what is happening so you can spread the word to the community members. That oh, need to we hear know it. what's happening. And I legit mm -hmm. take social media breaks. Shame I on cannot, you. I can't. We know. All the time. <laughs> like, like, that is how I keep my joy is that I need to not engage with the world 24 yeah, 7. Shame is what, on um, you. <laughs> yeah. And there is, uh, <laughs> there is a thank you. Kathy Lester, for that bit.ly that you just dropped in there. If you have not signed the thank you note to the two senators, um, they are going to send a thank what you senators? out to them as soon as uh, it the guys who wrote the right to read. Oh, right. To read. Last week, we were just Jack Reed and a representative. So it does so not have to just be school librarians that sign that thank you. So you can have nice. your community members sign it as well. And my, my biggest thing is just read yourself. It's hard to spread that joy to other people when you're kind of feeling yeah, they can all help about other, reading. Do, um, my big suggestion allowed. is to read something different if you're stuck in a rut. You're white supremacist. Um, I took <laughs> a break and I read books just for me that were not for school right. for the last couple of weeks because I needed to cleanse my palate. Yeah. Gosh. And um, now I'm These back. women like just they, they just make it all about themselves. Listen to audiobooks, you know read yeah. fiction, do all the, the things school that we library. Tell our students to it's do. It's about my reading joy. Yeah. Do yeah, that okay. for yourself. Yeah. Yes, take some me time. Yeah. Thank you all the best. so much. Yeah. This has been such an inspiration. I feel like I want to run out to my library right now <laughs> and read all these books. And I think it's just a really wonderful reminder of why these conversations are important, especially during times like these. That often they didn't discuss anything can be, can important. wear us down and just um, distract us from the real world. Well, nothing that we're important doing. to us parents because so we say things that they don't want to hear, with, so they don't you know, say the them. And they've been trained by AOA not to say and, um, mm. and so I want to thank you all for sharing and also all of you for joining us today because I know you're here because all of these conversations also matter to you as well and that you're doing this real work in your communities. And, um, you know, always coming back and, and coming back to these really igniting topics and especially reading. Um, I'm just very, very inspired. So thank you. And I just want to close our time today um, by um, announcing our door prize winners. So we have- I'm going to miss out on them. You all, we are offering a six month subscription Maybe I won. to School Library Connection. And our winner of that subscription is Elaine Fultz. Congratulations, if they do Elaine. pick me, I'm not going to be able um, to say yes. It's to me because we'll it's my fake name. Subscription. If you already have one, you can always offer it to a colleague as well. 
Um, and then our winner of the Samsung Galaxy tablet from Overdrive Me? is Laura Herman. So congratulations, Laura. I'll reach out to you as well. And um, hopefully you can use this in your program. Or maybe and, she's Herman uh, Laura. Also reminding you that <laughs> your PD certificates should be arriving in your inboxes within the next I'm 48 hours. I'm going to get a hours. PD certificate. Again, if you're watching yeah. the recording, just make sure you take the quiz and you'll get that right away. Pretty decadent. Um, and the PD. recording will be available on Wednesday. It will be unlocked. And oh, that's okay, ladies. I have a recording. So feel free to share with your community um, on <laughs> Don't worry. Wednesday as well. And you'll Great be receiving on here with all you and of John. email with that information. So, so again, buy John's these, uh, books, uh, folks. Amazing conversations are archived. Exactly. Not in libraries. Library. All right. I can't listen None to None of my books are in libraries. They're terrible. Listening. All right. So let's just let's just recap, shall we? Basically, they skipped right over the fact about that why the parents are upset. Went straight to, oh, these terrible parents are 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 putting up a fuss over the books without discussing or describing what are these books <laughs> i mean and it's uh, and then they, they just continue to to give examples of good books right of books that are yes. appropriate that no you didn't miss it iron dog don't worry we have an entire uh schedule happening after this okay the librarians are done but we are moving on now to wisconsin yeah. to the TOSA school board uh, where there is going to be a huge ruckus because Gays Against Groomers uh, president, uh, Jamie Mitchell, is there with Moms of Liberty. They're both speaking yeah. tonight at both a protest and the school board meeting, and I'm covering it live. We're going to be sharing it here. We're going to yeah. be making fun of weirdos for the rest of the night. It's going to be fantastic. Yes. Blue-haired yeah. weirdos. We're going to be we're going to be telling fat jokes. Yep. It's going to be fantastic. So stick around because you didn't miss anything. We were just doing the yeah. undercover part of the program is, the is now over. Yes. Dan, and tell us about this bill and the breaking news that you have. On the, okay. The uh, right, just, is it right to read or freedom to read? What, the right to read act. Um, just read, everybody weird. follow Moms for Liberty with a number four, Moms for Liberty. Okay. The, the breaking news that I have, I have to make it quick because you want to go to that other thing. Um, is, no, we're, um, we're just waiting for Jamie to pop in. So we're not we're not in any hurry. I mean, she's oh. going to pop in sometime around seven. I mean, uh, what, whatever time it is. Yeah, seven o'clock. Okay, now it's I'm fine. not going to be terribly specific because I don't want to tell them the, I, the particular source that I found this at because the American Library Association will delete that source. Okay. But basically, I found a certain major leader at the American Library Association admitting that these books are sexually inappropriate for children, but they are to be recast as something else, namely diverse and inclusive. Of course, because okay, then they can- Okay, so she admits they're children. sexually inappropriate, inclusive. then inclusive. says you gotta yeah. recast it as diverse and inclusive. Then you look at the Right to Read Act, and it says you don't have the right to challenge any books that are diverse and inclusive. Of course. That's how they're going to get graphic child porn that they admitted Jeez. to. You could watch this person admitting to it when I when I publish this story into schools and make it illegal for parents to even challenge those books. And if but they that do, will never hold up under any kind of scrutiny because that is a First Amendment violation. You cannot in America make any kind of law that says you can't complain about this book that's okay. ridiculous okay but you remember these are librarians they have a giant <laughs> goodwill everybody assumes that they only care for children and nobody else and not carl right. marx and, and not, not their else. parents especially right. not their parents because they know better than all of the parents okay. this bill is already being considered already has a, an sb number and, a, and an r number whatever it's been proposed by senator jack reed of uh uh, uh, Rhode Island right and and uh, Representative Raul Reed, um, Gr Grijalva. Yeah, that sounds right. Of Arizona. Uh huh. Okay. So this is already being considered. You can find the text of it online, and when you see that I it says, it. "Okay, you're also going to see it says diverse and inclusive." Okay, that means graphic sexual porn, <laughs> uh, that like gender queer. We will not be able to challenge that anymore. It's also going to give a giant amount of power, about $300 million worth of power to the American Library Association and elevate all librarians to the level of teachers. Oh, no. So, so that, when, so that uh, when, when schools are cutting back, they don't cut off the librarians first. So they're taking away local power, giving it to the federal government. 
it's it, it, it's just a giant bad news thing. And it does just, you're absolutely right, take away the first minute right that parents have to seek redress of your government because these are government schools pushing. Yeah, I, mean, they can't, they, I don't think even if they pass this, which I don't think it will be passed, I don't think right. they will have enough votes to pass this. I don't think it would stand against strict scrutiny. I mean, obviously there would be lawsuits. Obviously this would be challenged. All right, so let's see. Uh, is this the right one? Do I have the right one? HR 2023? Wait, what does it say? Author no, this is for dyslexia screening. Dang it, I got the wrong one. <laughs> Did you say right to read? The right to read act. Yeah, I looked at it. It's not coming up. They're trying to hide it, Dan. They're trying oh, they, to hide it. They were initially. Would the, dys would the, the dyslexia screening be the right to left act? <laughs> That's a good one. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to. I'll be here all night, Chad. <laughs> good. You should be here all night. I, I will not be here all night for real. I know. We just need to get snacks. <laughs> we need to get snacks. Oh, man. If we had snacks. I, just, like, I went to Vegas on Saturday and I just like, they had a big death storm. And uh -huh. just my sinuses are just like, oh, man. Just disaster. The allergies right now are bad, really bad. I'm not finding the act, unfortunately. I can't find it, but we will find it. And we I will make sure that I write something about that because we should be on alert for that. Because uh, oh. anything that is going to curtail our First Amendment rights, I'm against, just right. in case anybody mm. wonders. That's what it's going to do. This is a giant paragraph. They want to silence parents nationwide. Right. That's why the American Library Association created Unite Against Book Bans last year, because parents were successfully getting genderqueer removed from schools under the PICO case. This law actually mentions the PICO case to try to basically say that, uh, you know, to try to put the ALA spin on it. When in reality, what the ALA doesn't tell you is the PICO case allows you to remove pervasively vulgar books like genderqueer from schools and do it immediately. There's no need for materials reconsideration. There's no need for those month long delays. Just remove it if it's pervasively vulgar. A book like Gender Queer is pervasively vulgar. The American Library Association says it's not obscene, so you can't remove it under the, under the California versus Miller case. But that case doesn't apply. They're lying to you, right? These people who are they suddenly law experts, I'm almost done. These people who are suddenly law experts also tell librarians they are not lawyers, so they cannot determine what is child pornography, so they have to ignore it. And that is something that we discovered when we wrote the book, and Shut Up, The Bizarre War That One Public Library Waged Against the First Amendment. Right. Uh, they were trained that librarians don't know what child porn is, and so they can't tell oh, a person watching child right. porn on the computer that that's what's happening. So they're trained to say nothing because they can't mm -hmm. define it. For real, that's what they're taught. Uh, only <laughs> Bill says, why do you think parents don't show up in numbers when there is a controversial subject at board meetings? Well, uh, sir, you're going to see it tonight because there's a big one in Wisconsin tonight at the to Tosa, the Tosa School District. Is they're going to and we're going to be bringing it to you live when Jamie calls in. Uh, they're going to be they're doing their um, protest. Uh, supposedly starting right now, but I'm not sure where they are broadcasting it. Uh, Jamie's supposed to call in and hopefully she will. I hope that uh, she hasn't forgotten about me, but I don't think she will. I think she will call in when, when they can. Yeah. And then at eight o'clock, uh, we will be live streaming the board meeting and there will be tons of parents there, just like there were tons of parents at the Dearborn meeting. My God, there were uh, mobs of people at that Dearborn school meeting. So, you know, the, the point... The thing is, is that people have to be aware that this is happening in order for them to show up. And so we're trying to help get the word out about these events before they come up. And Moms of Liberty, Moms for Liberty are, are doing a really, really good job uh, doing that and getting the word out and getting these events together like the one we're going to cover shortly. So that's the answer to that. Uh, where did Dan go? He left. I, I have to uh, leave pretty soon. Okay. But I'm getting ready to leave. I'm probably still going to watch <laughs> you, but I don't know if my connection is going to be stable. And okay, it, it's another topic, so I'm just going to kind of watch you right now. All right, cool. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, if, if yeah, we'll talk again soon.
Great. Dan Kleinman from Safe Libraries. You guys should look him up. He's at Sex Harassed on Twitter, where he has all the information <laughs> yeah. about what librarians are doing uh, to sexually harass librarians in the libraries with these uh, with True. porn and all kinds of stuff. Right, Dan? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. We'll talk to you later. Right. Have bye a bye. good night. So, John, what's, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Oh, I told you I'm doing. My sinus is just killing me. So I'm. I'm. I've got that like. I need to sneeze thing oh, going on right now that. where it's just like, do and that's have, the worst thing for being on air too. Yeah. Do you have some nose spray or, or a, a steroid? Cause usually the steroid noise, nose spray works really well. You got to get some of that. No, you got to call the doctor and get the good stuff. I'm a yeah. man. I have nothing, you know, <laughs> can't pop it out. Well, um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to tough it out. Uh, that's my husband just sleeps whenever he gets sick and then he will sleep for like two days and you just don't, I just don't bother him for two days and then he's fine. Oh, he, that's today he had a tick in his stomach Oh, Ooh. and he had to go to urgent care cause he, he tried to get it out and the head got stuck. Oh gosh. Terrible. So he had to go get it taken out at the urgent care. And then I told him, I'm like, get over to the, the urgent care and get a antibiotic because it's been in there yeah. all night long. He was, he woke up with it in my bed oh gosh it's awful i know you have but ticks in your bed i right we might oh my god <laughs> is that scary <laughs> oh my god i'm not gonna be able to get in there tonight at all uh because that's terrifying camilla i did not see kamala hand harris i did not see the link you you posted a link what link where i'm looking hold on i'm going back For the bill I don't know, but if you post it in the YouTube chat, I can't grab it from there. You have to post it in like Rumble, uh, where I can. Oh, there. Oh, there it is. It's in the Rumble chat. Okay, hold on. So there's the there bill. There you go. All right, let's throw that up here. Paste. Oh, and I gotta send uh, Moms for Liberty an email too. So let's see if we can read this. Present share screen. Text. H.R. 9056, to ensure that children in schools have a right to read and for other purposes. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, to ensure that children in schools have a right to read and for other purposes. This act may be cited as the Right to Read Act. Mm, blah, 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 blah. None of this is important supports the digital learning environment and the development of participatory learning, inquiry learning, digital literacy, that means porn, and information, literacy. information literacy. That's what they call porn at the ALA, information. Oh, gosh. They Keep all it. your kids off the internet. That's what yeah. I'm going to say. Supports, supplements, and elevates the literacy experience. Yeah, that doesn't mean what you think it means. Through guidance mm -hmm. in reading for learning and motivational reading. Motivational reading, by the way, means porn. They think that motivates kids to read if they put porn in it. It probably does. I don't think it does. I think the kids are like grossed out by it and feel uncomfortable is what I think mm. really happens. I don't think they're really even very interested in these books. And I think it's weird that adults keep trying to push it on them. I mean, really, if you look at what kids are reading, they love uh, fantasy series like Harry Potter and they love, um, oh, my kids love all kinds of different mystery books and murder mysteries and stuff. They are not into weirdness. Um, That's true. Like Most Nord YA books as it is are, are actually uh, actually geared towards 40-year-old women. Yeah, so. they love your Bizarre. books, John. And yours are science oh, fiction and space, you know, space westerns. And, you know, they like those books. Um, so then it says, what else does it say? Provides facilities, equipment, technology, blah, blah, blah. Provides regular professional development for teachers, school librarians, and other educators. So there's the money for the librarians stuck in there. And professional development, of course, means going to the ALA uh, for real. Like just going to the ALA is like um, their ALA conference that they have every year in Chicago. And they spend bazillions of dollars on lobster dinners and stuff. And then they charge it to the taxpayers. That's what they do. Well, of course, if you've got that kind of budget, you just do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. And it's gross, and they should stop doing it. Hold on. I want to make sure that Jamie has the thing on her phone. Maybe she can't get to Twitter. That would be bad. So let's send it to her on the phone. Okay. There. The link? 
Oh. Yeah. Sending Jamie the link. Okay. Provides opportunities for collaboration between class classroom teachers and school librarians. Implements nationally recognized standards of practice. And all that is is ALA bullshit. American Library Association bullshit. Whatever they say will implement in school libraries. That's a bad, bad thing because the ALA is crazy. Information literacy. The term information literacy means the set of skills needed to find, retrieve, understand, evaluate, analyze, and effectively use porn. Sorry, information. It says information. <laughs> but we all know that that means porn. Um, blah, blah, blah. The term right to read means all students have access to linguistically and developmentally appropriate. Notice it doesn't say age appropriate evidence-based reading instruction, effective school libraries, family literacy support, culturally diverse and inclusive materials. Oh, oh there, there we there go. There it is. There it is. Reading materials in the home and the freedom to choose reading materials. Now, isn't that interesting? My kids don't have the freedom to choose reading materials. I agree. I either say yes or no to all of it. Yeah. As you should. I mean... Ridiculous, right? Ah, there she is. Hi, Jamie. Guys. Sorry. Uh, no, you're good. It's on live stream, so it's okay. being recorded. Um, hey, so we're here. There's, a bit, of, there's a bit of a crowd going on. Sorry. I'm here. Can you take that for one yes, second? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Thank you. It's really windy out here. Sorry. And it's noisy, too. But uh, we're out here. There's a bunch of people. There's some counter protesters that support the sexualization and indoctrination of children. But um, I think we're going to outnumber them. I just did a news hit on the local news. Um, and yeah. That's great. And so this is now, are they going to be broadcasting this on their YouTube channel, the Tosa School District? Because I've got that set up. It's but gonna, I don't... There's a live stream um, that's going to be a zoom i don't know if it'll be i know you can get to it through zoom oh um, shoot i don't have like the link. link i don't know i can send you the link all right cool all right link. So, i don't yeah. know here let me let me send it in here real quick um, all right cool sorry i'm like raid their happy. zoom chat let's go <laughs> <laughs> zoom raid i'm sending it in the chat all right awesome sorry this probably isn't very camera friendly right now. I got it. it. Awesome. Thank okay, you. Great. So, yeah, that's how you can watch it. And uh, the, the building is right back there. Um, awesome. And yeah. Okay. So, so what are you guys planning tonight? What? What are you guys planning tonight? What are we talking about? What kind of, uh, what kind of problems are happening at this school? I have not been informed of what's going on at TOSA. Um, yeah. So they're doing this uh, social emotional learning, I guess, is mm -hmm. a you know, somebody else might be able to speak better on exactly what's happening at the schools. Um, I'm here, you know, promoting the Gays Against Rumors message, which is that people that are doing this, uh, you know what, actually, let me show you a sign of, we have some of the material that they're showing in schools. Oh, wow. great. Perfect. Can I flip this camera? Human <laughs> oh, boy. So is, oh, my God. So they're teaching that to kindergartners. Um, I, I had crossed that yeah, out. she had to censor it. They're, they have all of these flags in math class. Is this? Oh, no. Know? Yeah, so this is a lot of the curriculum that's in these schools. Seventh graders are being told that transgender men can get pregnant. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a mess. It's a mess. And it, it's all over. You know, it's, a, it's in Little Town, USA. So. This anyways, is insane. Yeah. Um, Jamie, how did it get, how did this stuff happen this fast? Cause I, I feel like this wasn't around like four or five years ago. I mean, it's yeah. just like overnight. I know it feels like overnight, but I also think it's been building for a really long time. I think it started back when, you know, the term gender was coined. I think there was always this, uh, this was like the goalpost, um, to, hmm. to go after the kids. And, you know, you have to introduce things slowly for society to really accept it. And now it's gotten here and the push is happening on kids and that's trying to be normalized and we have to intervene before before it fully is because this is not normal um this is child abuse and um yes it not, is we're not gonna let big pharma make lifelong patients out of these kids and what's happening mm. in the schools is planting the seeds in their minds that you know they they are trans and that they need to get hooked up on puberty blockers and hormone replacement and even be butchered 
to be able to like feel comfortable in their own bodies. The truth is, is that no child is born in the wrong body. Nobody's born in the wrong body. And right. um, that's a message that the school and all schools need to hear. Yes, so, they do. I have a speech written for tonight uh, that I'm going to be reading to the board. Um, and yeah, you'll you'll see it in the live stream if you're if you're watching. So has anybody Great. there in Wisconsin, has uh, the Moms for Liberty or anybody, do you know if they've reached out to the Muslim community there? Because is, this is happening. They're starting to get real upset about this. I don't know if you watched my coverage, but we've got Hassan Shami is coming on my show in November. Shame on you. That's great. Love him. Love him. He's the best. And, you know, we've had, I've talked to Haas Cash. These guys in Dearborn are like for real serious about joining hands with uh, gays against groomers and parents who will stand against this stuff. I wonder if anybody's reached out to them in Wisconsin. I'm not sure, but I can ask somebody if you'd like, uh, or I can ask them a little, a lot of people are being interviewed on the news and doing their own live streams right now. Sure. But I got something that needs to be done. I mean, we need all the allies we can get and they're definitely fierce allies, excuse me, um, against what's happening. To people. I'm going to hook you up with, them. I'm going to hook you up with one of the uh, ladies in the Arabic community who reached out to me, who's starting to organize across the country. She wants uh, right. people to, you know, partner with, and I want to get her your information. Um, she's got a huge following on Twitter and she, she ran a uh, Muslim, uh, chat today on Twitter where they were all talking about how sick they are of this woke stuff. That's and great. I mean, it, it's reached a boiling point where if you and them and Moms for Liberty all join up, it's going to be unstoppable. It's yeah. just And we're all going to join up, you know, because it's going to take an army and, and all of us are bringing our own armies and we're going <laughs> to make a battalion that like uh, the likes of which they, they are not expecting. Mm -mm. Uh, you know, and, and it's no, we're not going to stop. That's the thing. This is the most important issue facing us. You know, we all thought it was um, medical freedom. But yeah. you know, and as as it's like they just keep hitting us with stuff and, and, and it gets bigger and bigger, and more, uh, more um, important, I believe. So I agree. You said there were a few counter protesters. Can you take us over and show us the counter protesters? <laughs> Can we see the weirdos? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Here. laughs> This guy right here. What do their signs say? Sir, what does your sign say? Vote no. for what? Silence bigotry, he says. Oh, sir, do you want oh, to yes. talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> Who's oh, look, he's, Who's look he's, got soy, he, he's got soy face and a man bun. <laughs> do, what's, who are the bigots, sir? Well, anyways, I think he th he says I don't know, but but he's he yeah they 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 tend to not know much of anything. But they just you know there's like they, five of them though, so that's like, a good sign. Yeah, it, they're NPCs, you know. They uh, they they just go around and chant the message that um you know Dylan Mulvaney <laughs> tells them to. So oh god, not that guy. Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with. But there's a lot more love here than uh, these people. You know, they say that we're the hateful ones, but you have to really hate children to do this to them, to sexualize oh, God, them yeah. and to indoctrinate them, to believe that they need to medicalize, sterilize themselves and, and chop off body parts. You have to hate children to teach them to do that. <laughs> this is true. Kim Jong Poon says, "Are we sure those counter protesters are allowed within a thousand feet of a school?" <laughs> That's right. A good question. <laughs> Wait, I gotta show you. Look at the T-shirt I'm wearing under this hoodie. Hold on. It says, oh, "What?" Jamie's your taking heart? her shirt off, guys. Hold I on. know. I'm like, wow. This is <laughs> glad I came on this show. What's it on says, your hard drive? Yes, because anybody that supports this should ha should immediately have to have their hard drive swept. I agree. 100%. Yeah, I, and, I and search history. Don't forget Anybody search history. Anybody that opposes gays against groomers or supports this indoctrination and sexualization of young children, I mean, you're kind of outing yourself, right? It's like, true. Yeah. It is. It is. One of the commenters said it's straight demonic. I agree. Only Mr. Bill says they can write a sign but can't explain it. Who are the bigots? I don't know. Right. I'm like, am I a bigot? Oh, duh. He's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you believe. Then I tell him what I believe and, and he still doesn't know. So. <laughs> See, this is what happens. This is why gays against groomers is so effective because they can't say shit to us. Sorry if, for the swear word. Sorry. No, you can swear get, all you want to. We're I get on very, Rumble. I get very heated. Oh, I love Rumble. Great.
Um, if we get kicked off YouTube, it's no big deal. We're streaming on Rumble. Right. We can say whatever we want. But, you know, that's why our message from Gays Against Groomers is so important. I tell them I'm a gay woman and I oppose this and they don't know what the hell to do with themselves. You know, they can't say you straight homophobe, transphobe, right. blah, blah, well, they'll, blah. They'll start saying you have internalized homophobia. Uh, that's yes. what they'll do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's also untrue. And I, I mean, they can believe what they want, but they know they know they're wrong. And honestly, I believe that these people want this push because they are child predators. They are sexually attracted to children, period. There's no other reason for it. You know, I think some of the parents are well-meaning and they just don't understand, you know, and they just want to support their kids. A lot of them think they're like getting woke points. They're using their kids they're sacrificing them for some woke points in their neighborhoods, you know, to be the cool mom. But yeah. this well, it's not hip. It's not trendy. It's abuse. So, so just so you know. Yes. Just so you know. I'm oh, my, an, I'm my an megaphone. An, yeah, that's your megaphone. I brought a megaphone. I'm, I'm an anti-gay bigot standing here with you. Right. This is my friend, the anti-gay <laughs> bigot. The no. anti-gay yes. bigot. <laughs> you, look like, you look like you got some white supremacy no, going right. on, too. <laughs> so. Even though he hates me. Yeah. yeah. I, I yes. seriously can't stand her really yeah. what oh, are we gonna God. do with people like this <laughs> i don't know so, it's 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 really unfortunate all this ra I, this hatred <laughs> I, I it's asked a serious question of a gentleman that's holding up a sign yeah. about how this is a bigoted agenda and just ask who's bigoted yeah what we do you asked mean by him the same thing, thing. He, he didn't said, know you're not a bigot but you're pushing a bigoted agenda which i'm like okay uh, what? I don't know what that means. But how, huh? yeah, guys here, there's people here with rainbow flags. I'm gonna go talk to them, and because I don't oh, think okay. she's gay. Okay, we'll watch you. <laughs> Let's just watch Lily do her thing. Are you gay? Are you gay? Wait, no, no. I'm a lesbian woman. I'm wondering why you're waving this flag. This is good programming. Yeah, yeah. Please, can we just talk for one second? I'm a lesbian woman. You're holding a rainbow flag. Are you yourself gay? She's supporting so the gay no. kids. No, what straight white woman? It's the yeah. problem every time. She's I swear, I'm bigoted against white women. I mean, she's holding the fucking gay flag, thinking that she speaks <laughs> for us. Ma'am, you don't speak for the gay community. Gays against groomers speaks for the gay community. You're a straight white woman. So Tell her. <laughs> Tell her. <laughs> and you're making the gay what, people what look like on? groomers. She's a tell her. She's woman. making and gays she, look like groomers. She for the gay community. No, ma'am. I'm a lesbian woman. I speak for the gay community, and everybody in our organization. Anyways, what are you gonna do with these straight white women? I don't know. You know, it's always straight women. white women, man. They're 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 it's always everything. straight white women. You should always the liberal straight women. You There's need to something. tell her you're making gay people look like they want to groom kids. And we don't we're not into that, man. Like, why you know are you doing okay. this? Can I just say can I just say one thing to you? I, I won't ask for a response, but I just want you to know that you're making the gay community look really bad. You're making me personally look extremely bad by supporting the sexualization, indoctrination and mutilation of children's bodies. You don't speak for the gay community, ma'am. Yes, you look at bouncing your little happy rainbow flag, a straight this woman. So Make beast. it make sense. I don't understand. <laughs> That's good. Make it make sense. You do not speak for the gay community, ma'am. You are doing harm to the gay They're community. They're going to be crying and going home soon. Anyways. <laughs> they are. All right. Well, lots of friends here. Lots of um, straight white women that think they talk for gay people. I don't know. It's weird. It's really weird. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, she is. It is I, weird. I, I, it is weird. to support and amplify my voice, but she won't even talk to me. Right. Liberal You're white not... women have a mental virus. Something's wrong. Anyways. Anyways, Cruz, I gotta don't get... be worried. She's not going to get jumped. There are big guys with her. They've got more people than the... Yeah, weird weirdos. Oh, There's only like okay. five weirdos over there. Megan. She'll be all right. Sure, Megan, I gotta go. I'll talk okay. to you. Okay, we're gonna have meet you guys inside the meeting. All right, great. All right, bye, thanks guys. for being here. Jump back on later if you can. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. That was awesome. That was good programming, man. That was entertaining. Oh, it's amazing. Why are you doing amazing. this? Amazing. <laughs> ah. Why are you? See, it's weird. Are you? I love how she's like. Are you gay? She's just holding a rainbow flag. <laughs> Not gay. 
No. So like, were they it's, paid? Are they? That's how you can tell it's all like this, like weird conditioning, or for for her own Instagram posts, right? That's you know, it's like okay. Yeah. Right. Like the virtue signaling. Yeah. And whatever, or maybe like let's just be totally honest. Maybe they're being paid to be there. I mean, because that look, be I'm too. telling you, something is something is extremely wrong with uh this grooming thing it's extremely wrong and it's almost like it's orchestrated and if the gay people aren't out doing it because clearly those people with the flag were not gay well then who are they it, it the question well kanye be west was asking that question too and we can't do that on youtube but you know i don't know <laughs> well i don't really know what kanye was talking about although has he joined the black <laughs> israelites now he said, yeah, he said he's basically saying that that's a, the, the thing. So it's, I don't know. Um, yeah. Like All right, well, I, I follow 50% of what he says and don't follow 50% of what he says. We can't get in. Well, we have a problem because if it is, I don't, it's launching on the app and I don't think on StreamYard I can share the app page. I can only share a no. web browser. How do you no. share the app? How do you I think, do it? Um, there should be shit. Um, how do I do it? Uh, it should be like share window, but it's not coming up. On yeah, the you might be right. Oh no! Oh no! What are we gonna do? Cry. This is just on. Wait a minute! Isn't there a way to to do it on Zoom? Like why? Do... Does it open the app? Maybe because I have the app downloaded, but what if I deleted it? Maybe it would open on the... I think it always prompts you to open the app. The Zoom browser? doesn't open in a web browser, does it? I don't think so. No. Oh, wait. Yes, join from your browser. Hold oh, on. Oh, you can. It says join from your browser. Yep, I'm doing it from the browser. Yeah. Yay. App. Saved. Yay. Saved. Okay, allow, use microphone, and... Okay, should I put my real name? No, I think I'll put my fake name. Just in case. Uh, no, because then everyone will see my my fake name. All right. I'm just going to say, put my initials. Stop video. Mute. Join. Uh, meeting passcode. I don't know. Email address. What? Oh, okay. It has the meeting passcode. I just have to put in my email address. This is difficult technology, John. I'm I'm having trouble. My boomer self. Well, they want to track. They got to make sure you're tracked. You know. Yeah, I guess. I think in I'll every put my regard. Fake. I'm gonna put my fake address. <laughs> in there. I don't think I'm gonna put my real one. Let's see. What did I? Ma I made a LGBT one. Oh yeah. <laughs> LGBT at gmail.com all right this webinar is for authorized attendees only yeah okay save please sign into zoom with an email address authorized for what oh they're keeping out the public they're How scared they oh that's they unbelievable do that all right listen, wow I'm gonna get, wait a minute i know a way around this we're gonna get moms for liberty on the case i've got a source <sighs> How can these assholes, you know, technically, legally, they can't do that. They cannot keep the public out of a public meeting. That's ridiculous. That's not okay. They might say that all. the meeting is is in person and you're welcome to come to that, but this is mm, not, I don't know. No, because if they're offering it online, they have to make it open. So let's see. How do I get them? Let's see. Scarlet, the person I need to talk to. She's one of the moms for Liberty, and I think I have emailed her. Shoot. Why is she not in my email? All right. Well, we're going to figure this out. Don't worry. We have some time. We have a half an hour, so we can talk about other stuff until then, but I will figure it out. Um, I'm going to tell Jamie that we can't get in. Uh, Scarlett, I can't get in to zoom because it says authorized only is there a trick oh also if someone is live streaming let me know who and i can i can grab their live stream 
Yeah, that's true. Our it's the easiest way. Streaming. Tell me who, and I'll grab their video, grab their live. You know what? I bet Moms for Liberty Wisconsin in Facebook is live streaming this. So let's go over there and find out. There are a million. Let's ways check it out. This. We're going to find it. We've got a half hour to do it. And I know we can do it. <laughs> uh, those of you in the chat, those of you in the chat, you can help me. Just start looking for Tosa School yeah, if you got links. live stream and send me a link if you find one. Links and links. Live. Tosa School Board Live. I bet Moms for Liberty is doing it. Let's see. There's Centerville. No, that's not it. Let's try Moms for Liberty. Oh, I finally sneezed. It was great. Oh. <laughs> what did you hit the sneeze button? I didn't even hear it. Uh, yeah, I muted while Moms I was sneezing. I'm trying to be polite to the chat. So. Dun, 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 dun. All right, this is bad. I'm going to have to text Tiffany. Tiffany Justice will help. Tiffany. Help. Megan knows everybody. <laughs> I can't get into the TOSA meeting. Who is live streaming? Man, okay, I just I lost a bunch of, of subs because I made a video so saying the GOP needs to stop infighting right before the election. You lost subs for that? Right? Why? Yeah. Well, it I don't seems know. like a reasonable I, thing I don't get to an ex say. I don't get an exit survey. Yeah, right. It's Wawatosa. Uh, isn't it Wawatosa? I don't know. I was told it was Tosa. But is Tosa and Wawatosa this? Yes, it is Wawatosa. Yeah, it probably is. Mm -hmm. So Thanks, Tosa Sandy. is just like the thing that they say, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's try Wawatosa uh, board, school board meeting. We need a live stream, man. There's a school board meeting watch group that came up. Oh, here we go. From Wauwatosa School District. Oh, they've put out, look at this. They've put out a statement. Look at this bullshit. So you know that this is going to be, Wauwatosa put out this statement. Oh boy. Let's go. We stand with LGBTQ plus Oh students. gosh. Rally to support an inclusive human growth and development curriculum in Tosa schools, 530 before the school board meeting. That's the this five was September 27th. That's the five people that showed up. Oh yeah, you're right. It was this was September. last month. Yeah. Huh. Hey, that's the girl who has the live stream. I need her. Scarlett Johnson? Yeah. She's the one that may be streaming, so I'm going to message her. Is she is she on their team, though? She's Moms for... No, she's Moms for Liberty. She was just oh, she is. putting that out there. Yeah. Oh. I want to live stream school board meeting. Don't have a link. Can't get into the Zoom. Can you help? I'm conservative media. I'm a good guy. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Are they gonna uh, believe I'm, you? I'm friendly. Yeah, she knows who I am. I have talked to her before. So hopefully. Uh, let's see. Oh, she was live a couple minutes ago and it was public. So let's see. 31 minutes ago. Here's her live stream from 31 minutes ago. Let's see. So hopefully she will live stream the meeting too, maybe right on her Facebook page. Let's see about this. Here it is. This is where Jamie was just speaking from. Hello. <laughs> Open up, please. There we go. There's oh, there Jamie. Can you keep recording this live? Is she being interviewed by the television stations? Looks like it. Oh, they're going to edit the shit out of this. Yeah, they're, she's uh, she's going to get torched. <laughs> 
All right, so the volume on this is not good. Nope. Let's see if it gets better. I, good. So you've got some remarks. Who has? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go. Go. Let's so let's finish go this in or no? Or you want me to get them over there? Yeah, yeah. We need some commentary or something. Look, there's the non. Well, there's our friend with the rainbow flag. That's, that's yeah, non-gay, gay. That's the woman who's not gay. There's the straight wine mom holding up a, a rainbow flag. That's right. And can you? Can you? Hey, Amber, can you? Shoot it! I'll shoot it! But I mean, no, I'm saying like I'll shoot it. But I mean, they're gonna. Yeah, but you're te she's telling oh me what he cannot do. Right the now. camera man is saying we can't show that on TV. That's kindergarten right there. That is being shown to kindergartners. That's being shown to kindergartners without the X. Can't be right? shown on TV. That's right. For the female yeah, anatomy on one, then you had to put the X's on yeah, there to even display it publicly. No, they can't. Can you say that a little bit louder so they can hear you online? The, oh yeah, the, this, they're they are the, we're here channel twelve WISN. They're unable to put these images on. The audio, this is horrible. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah, it's hard yeah I just here. was asking just to speak up a little bit louder so they can hear you online. That's all. So the I. Yeah, you can't hear them at all. All of you were able to watch. All right, here, this is uh, Scarlett. It's getting a little dark. WISN was here interviewing um, Jamie Mitchell, who is the founder of Gays Against Groomers, and she's right here from Wisconsin, and she lives um, in this area in southeastern Wisconsin. And she gave a great interview. I hope all of you were able to watch it live stream. And I was holding a sign which will not be allowed to air on WISN because the content is too graphic. The content that is too graphic, that is kindergarten curriculum. So kindergarten curriculum that will be taught to Wauwatosa kindergartners was considered too graphic for WISN to air. <laughs> it's too graphic. That's the words are I mean, that's short. great. You caught that on film. For adults that is watch really but good and like that says everything everything you need to in know the classroom in wauwatosa and let's not forget one of the big reasons why i'm here it's not just for the parents and the children in wauwatosa but this curriculum advocates for youth this curriculum is recommended by wisconsin dpi jill underling who declared pronouns save lives and her highest priority her highest priority revolves around critical race theory and comprehensive sex education in every classroom in Wisconsin. That's what you'll get more of if you vote for Tony Evers, that's for sure. I think they're, these people are not, the woke are not taking education seriously. They view it as a place where they can create, you know, political advocates. They're trying to change society from the preschool and the, and the kindergartner. They're viewing our classrooms not as a place to teach kids, but as a place where they can program kids to make little robots yep. who will vote the way that they are told to. And any parent that doesn't see that, doesn't fight for their children, you know, just please wake up and realize what's happening. And the only people out here against us, they're holding signs saying we love public schools. And when we show them the images, they literally just close, they plug their ears and go, la, 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 I'm not listening. Literally, I show the pictures. They're like, that's not happening. That's not true. Well, it's pulled straight from the Wauwatosa website. You, They can click on it. Anyone can. Go to the Wauwatosa website and look up the human growth and development. Go to Advocates for You, 3 R's curriculum. It Because... Because we pay for it with our tax dollars, it's available for anyone to view. If you go to, if you look at, go on my Facebook page, my Twitter, I routinely post about this curriculum. And that's why I'm here right now. And I'm going to show some more of this curriculum. 
It's really dark, but I just want to say, like, sure, grade two, the vagina has great elasticity. <gasps> And can adjust to the size of a penis. That's taught. Second this is graders? grade two, lesson one, page four. Why do they need right? to know that, John? There's no, graders? there's no possible way they need to know that for any reason whatsoever. Unless you're trying, ridiculous. Unless you're trying to fuck them. Like, let's yeah. just be honest. This is all stuff. Is it, you know? Then in seventh grade, they talk about sexting. And what do they say? That you don't need that in seventh grade either. Oh my god. To get closer. Yeah, why would we need that? And that is and a yeah. YouTube video. You shouldn't give your and seventh grader a phone. It's harder for me uh, to read because it's But kind if, of dark if seventh graders are sexting, that's um, child porn. You're like not allowed to is, do that. This is right. the material that could not be aired on Channel 12. Seven, in um, sixth grade, kids are taught how to go on a website, sex, etc. And you can see right here. <laughs> this is so going to get shut down on YouTube. <laughs> We're going yep. go to <laughs> guys, get ready to go to, <laughs> you have get ready to, go to Rumble. To these um, oh to these websites listed listed in the sex ed sleuth activity sex ed etc. Basically, these websites would be blocked typically, but the IT person will unblock them for the whoever is teaching that class so that they can allow the kids to go on for ten minutes and research at sex etc. When I did that, the first thing that came up, one of the first things, other than uh, there was, t they, oh my god, uh, give us your opinion on the. Uh, on contraception there there was this transgender men can get pregnant too that was For one God of the sake. articles the kids could click on hell's bells um, this is right here Se sex is a funny word this is content for teachers so some of this content i pulled from the advocates for you three r's website where they provide the instruction and training man manuals for children um and they teach the teachers how to get very comfortable with very uncomfortable words and speaking those words to five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. So it's getting too dark to probably show this. But one thing I wanted to point out to you here is Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is behind this curriculum. In their words, we're using a trans uh, we're using a gender transformative approach. CSC, that's comprehensive educa sexual, sexuality education, is a means to transform gender roles and advance equitable social systems. You notice they don't say our goal is to educate kids. Our goal is all about, you know, making that so they can thrive and learn, learn math, learn English. No, their goal is to transform gender roles and create equitable mm. social systems. This is purely, again, programming, Gross. politics, creating social justice warriors. And grades three through five, describe the role hormones play in physical, social, cognitive, and emotional changes during adolescence Perverts. and the potential yes. role of hormone blockers on young people who identify as transgender. That's three through six. Do they tell grade. them that it'll Your destroy their orgasms years forever? Old, and they're being told the role of hormone blockers. After starting in kindergarten, they're told this, that, that you can be a boy, you can be a girl, you can be neither, you can be both. A five-year-old can believe anything. An adult can, a, an adult, a trusted adult, that's the words they like to use, a trusted adult could could be programmed to believe anything when they're five years old. If you start program, programming them that young, I don't know, do they even stand a chance? No, they're going to be sexual This is weirdos. just wrong. This is not science. This is pseudoscience. This is playing God. And it's wrong. And it needs to stop. And it this right now it's in Tosa right now it's in Wauwatosa but it will be in your classroom wherever you are Iron believe dog. me this I'm would going have been to too speak much information in some very rural districts in yeah. very red yeah you're right me uh, too. counties and it's gender support plans are there gender inclusive language the trans agenda it's all there because these administrators are all trained in the same place they all have the same agenda, and Jill Underlin is the DPI of everyone in this state, of every district in the state. And Wisconsin DPI is a cesspool, and they are pushing this radical agenda. They are pushing it hard. It's a it's a multi billion dollar industry, and we just have to wake up to what's really happening.
Our schools are becoming something other than a place where our children can be safe and thrive and learn and grow. They're just, they're being used. And we, we can't allow that. It, it's, it's, this is civilization ending kind of stuff. So I hope, I hope that the message that we're trying to send here and we are here again we're here with gays against groomers we're here with with a group they just teach that the trivium agrees instead? with us in every possible uh, yes, way they need to and they're gay and lesbian and and i i love the message that jamie just had she said not in my name stop indoctrinating yeah, kids stop doing this in my name using using me using my community as an excuse Sick. for your nefarious uh, activities things. Like, no shit she i was talking to her and she described how she was a tomboy and had had this curriculum been prevalent when she was younger rather than growing into a same-sex attracted adult she could have easily been targeted to for a gender identity uh crisis and could possibly have removed her breast tissue and 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 cosmetically uh cos cosmetic surgeries could have been performed and this is just this is wrong just jamie said kids can't decide their bedtime but kids can decide their gender kids 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 can't even take tylenol without our permission yet they can take puberty blockers without our permission there, this doesn't make sense I feel like this is a cause looking for science. This isn't based on science. It is a it is a multi-billion dollar industry that is looking for the science to defend right. their profit. All right. So um, I found right out. now we're gonna move. She's we're gonna have um, Jamie with Gaze, Gaze Against Groomers give her speech. All right. I found out. All right. That yes. We can we can get into the meeting as soon as it goes live, it will be public. So okay. I guess it was just because it's not live at, you know, exactly right now. Uh, what time is it? Let's see. Oops. I didn't mean to put you up completely. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so it's 10 more minutes until the, the meeting actually starts. Um, I was sending this link to Farron balanced because she was asking me what the heck I'm doing. Um, She's watching some debate right now in Florida, the gubernatorial debate, and she says it's amazing. But we are doing this right now, so uh, oh, is DeSantis uh, blow, blowing up? Uh... I don't know. Should we should we go over and look real quick? Because yeah, uh, why not? We've we got, got ten minutes. We've got ten minutes. All right, let's. let's I might have to look. go in about ten minutes, though. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. I I can it's hang out time. by myself. Um, present share screen. So Kanye uh, had a hot take on education. He said that we should we shouldn't have anything subjective in education. Only things that should be taught, taught is like engineering and trade skills. This is one thing. Interesting, huh? I believe that. I'm gonna tell her I'm sniping her stream. Nice. Innocent students in our schools. It was absolutely abhorrent, and you have to do what's right. Uh, and listen to them yeah, I'm going to go into her chat. Okay, this isn't good. You get sure this one. Enforce those laws that say there are She's putting music underneath of him. Aaron. Okay. I think he There we go. We're just checking in on Farron for a minute here. In cold blood, 17 <laughs> innocent people. There's no other punishment uh, that meets the gravity of that crime. And to have one juror Ladies hold down on that was a travesty. So, yes, I'm going to ask the Florida legislature to amend that statute so that one How juror doesn't have veto state. power over appropriate punishment. You but I'll tell you this, when that happened, I wasn't crime. governor yet, it was the year before, but I became friends with I a lot of people. Uh, like, I, like, I like Trump pretty. debates better, no though. Being held accountable I mean, no, yeah. Ron DeSantis is kind of like a, like, my first nerd. Week, we suspect, well, he's, you know? look, yeah, he's, he's Trump with polish. You know, like, he's he's got the same policy ideas and he certainly has the balls, but he is he he has a lot more polish. And so he comes off like kind of boring sometimes, you know, like he's not spitting fire right now, which is why Trump I don't would just get right in the guy's face and go, you're short and weird, <laughs> you know, yeah. and the guy would just stumble over himself for the next five minutes. Yeah. And that'd be yeah. it. You'd be in jail. <laughs> yeah. You'd be in jail. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's what, because you, and you know, but the truth is, I mean, we all enjoyed Trump. Uh, I enjoyed him immensely, but I kind of think he lost his sense of humor and he's not as fun anymore. No, definitely. Well, I mean, the pressure. I mean, if you're under that press, kind of pressure all the time and the media is that awful and that conspiring against you for that long, I mean, it's got to, it's just got to, it takes a toll and it clearly yeah. took a toll on him because he is like not capable of being funny anymore. I've watched one of those. Uh, I, I think I watched my last Trump rally. I don't know a while ago. And I was like, Ugh, what is this? Really? This is not oh. the Trump. I, the tr I, I mean, I, I used to watch every Trump rally just because yeah, yeah, you yeah. never, you never know what he's going to say. And sometimes and it's not like amazing. that anymore. Now it's no? just like wine, oh. wine, wine. They stole the election, blah, blah. Oh, now I'm going to get kicked off. I'm going to get a strike for saying that. I was quoting. Oh, no. I was quoting him. <laughs> uh, I, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of whining now and it's like, I don't know. It's just darker than it used to be. And I don't mean darker mm. the way the left means it. I just mean that he seems off to me. He's not funny. He's not telling jokes. Um, and frankly, I was, I was all in for the jokes. It was, that's yeah. what I loved about Trump. Trump, the Trump fun. jokes were hilarious. I could do that for the rest of my life. But um, yeah, I mean, right. Feel, like giver, I agree with you. Four years of attacks, raided by the FBI, subpoenas to show up for the January. Six, I agree with you. Yeah, it's, it it's tough to keep like a bright face on it at, at, with that going on. It's really true. tough, really tough. But at some point, you have to let it go, and you have to move forward, and you have to give people what they what they expect, which is That's fire true. and fun. And the dude's an entertainer; he knows it. So I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Daisy says he was on fire yesterday. I missed it because like I just don't tune in anymore because he depresses me at this point. Hey, I might, get may, maybe he'll pick it back up once it's uh, once it's kind of time to get that rolling. I don't know. God, I so hope we'll see. So. I hope so. All right, let's go back over to the school board meeting. Let's see if I can let's see if they've updated it yet. Uh, how do I get there? Board meeting. They haven't updated their website yet. It's 756 here. It should be starting in the next four minutes. Let's try that link again that Jamie sent us and see if it goes to something live. Yeah, purple, uh, blue dragon says, or blurple dragon. I, I wanted to say purple, then I said blue, but it's blurple. Yeah, he, he has kick dog syndrome. Mm-hmm. He does. And he needs to get over it. He needs to seriously get over it because it's bothering me. And I'm sure it's bothering other people. Like nobody wants to be around a downer. We like winner Trump. Winning Trump right. is the guy that I like. He's the one I want to see. I want to see the winner, not the loser. Stop being a loser. Like get off the loser. Th He's got a lot of loser think going on with the, uh, I got, I got railroaded and this and yeah, you did learn and move on. Learn and move on is what I have to say. And he, he just didn't seem to do that. All right, let's see. I'm trying to log in again. I keep saying webinar is for authorized attendees. Oh, sign in to Zoom. Oh, that's all I have to do. Okay, fine. Sign in. Did that work? No, that didn't work. All right, let's try this one. Does that work? Yes, it will begin soon. You're in. I'm in. We're in. We're in. All right. Hey, so you have sinus problems. Do you do the neti pot? I haven't done anything. I've just been, I, I feel like I'm right. going to sneeze again. All right. You need the neti pot, John. <laughs> the neti yeah. pot is amazing. What's that? But you have to use, just to, you don't know what a neti pot is? No, okay. of course not. Hold, please. Yeah. Let's teach John a thing or two about being sick with a sinus infection. Neti pot. Let's pull up a sinus rinse for you okay so sounds terrible it sounds terrible but after you do it it feels really good and like you can breathe and it will heal you a lot faster um and it looks scary and it kind of feels scary when you first try it but i promise you it works um but you have to use distilled water you can't use tap water or you could kill yourself with a brain i have virus. that i have oh, you, that oh you do Okay, we don't yeah. need we don't need them talking about it. We just need to show you. So you stick this warm water with salt, and you can buy the salt uh, stuff at the pharmacy. Just go to the pharmacy, and they and you get one of these little bottle things or a 
if like a pot or a squeezy and you stick it in one nostril with the warm salty water and you lean over the sink and it goes up through one and out through the next for, through the other oh, one. Geez. And you do that on both sides and it feels really weird and you have to tilt your head forward so it doesn't go down the back of your throat, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay. And, and then you blow it all out and then you do the other side and then you blow it all out and kind of breathe deeply for a while to dry out your nasal passages and you will feel so much better. I'm telling you. Okay. The neti pot is miraculous for sinus infections. Ugh. I know it looks horrible and it kind of feels bad at first, but then you get used to it and it's not bad at all. It actually feels good. Don't use too hot water, just warm water. And I promise you will feel better. Okay. I'm telling you, you will feel better. I'll try something. I'm, I'm dying right now. So you got to get that crap out of your sinus cavity. Mm. That's the problem. You have too much junk in your sinus cavities right now. You got to get it out. Also, Thanks, Vegas. I would also, and no, I'm, I, not, I'm not, we being don't mean paid, it like that. <laughs> I'm not being paid by this. I'm not being paid by Zycam, but I'm telling you, use nasal swabs from Zycam. Do you guys use these? I do when I'm like got cold stuff going on. Yeah. 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 I think that it works. I mean, I, my kids got, is sick right now and uh, we've been using these like, you know, nonstop. Uh, and if Zycam would like to sponsor this program, I'm, I'm totally up. I'm open to it because <laughs> it's a product I believe in. Oh, here we go. This meeting is being all recorded. Faces in the audience tonight. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I call the October 24th, 2022 school board meeting to order. It is 7 p.m. We're in a room, conference room C of the Fisher Administration Building at 121. Are they going to put a West camera on the uh, Ms. Summers, please call the roll. Ms. Mielsel? On the Here. speakers? Ms. Fraley? Here. Mr. Meyer? Is Primetime 99 going to show up? <laughs> that would be so awesome. <laughs> we need to send <laughs> you the link. Here. Ms. Willis? Here. He could wear the big, the super tits. <laughs> members of the Wauwatosa School Board value the input of students, parents, staff members, and community members. The board's regularly scheduled meetings provide an opportunity for opinions and concerns to be expressed publicly. The board values all comments and will respectfully consider this input and decision making. The board requests that individuals limit their comment on each item to three minutes. Following any comment, an individual board member may respond on the yeah, issue raised. Minutes. However, it is not the intent of public comment the or the agenda for the board to be entered into a debate with a member or members of the community. Because non-agenda items are not publicly posted in advance, no action will be taken on public comment regarding non-agenda items this evening. Um, for those of you who have not been here for public comment in the past, um, how this rolls is there's an opportunity to come up. Uh, you would introduce yourself, share your name, share your address, and you would have three minutes uh, for any non-agenda public comment. Uh, at this time, is there any public comment in the room this evening? Hi, board members. My name is Sunny Iwaski. I'm uncomfortable sharing my full address. I'm in the 2500 block of in East Tosa. Um, I think most of you know me, so I'm a Wauwatosa resident, and I wanted to start by thanking you, uh, staff who's here on a Monday evening, board members, Dr. Means, for taking the time to do this. Um, I think it's really important that we're moving forward with the business of the district. I think that it's important that we acknowledge that a lot of work has been done by a lot of community members, by a lot of faculty, by a lot of staff, and by a lot of administrators to get us here. I think it's really important so we just to acknowledge get to that we have listened head. to the voice of the people of Wauwatosa oh, and that we are gosh. serving the children Bad of Wauwatosa. Bad camera Wauwatosa. angle, man. I come from a background in the sciences and business. I started my freshman year of college and there the were microphone? people who had not been educated on basic it's, biology it's making this who noise. were intending to be biology majors. I had a friend who in her freshman year biology class passed out because she heard about an ectopic pregnancy for the very first time. Oh, so people don't there do are this, ma'am. There schools who need to understand the biology of their bodies. Biology is one thing. To oh, gosh. What we just saw is not biology. Yes. Surpassing that. Fucking groomers, man. I'd also like to add from yeah, we get the, the back of, of their heads, business unfortunately. Education, that in the absence of information, people make information up. And children, what? students, they're not children, right? A young uh, adults. Oh, wait, there we they're, go. They're young, children. Wait. Hey. Oh. Sorry, this is not your time, and this is not your space. Please be quiet. Oh, my. We're already These Wow. Have the right to learn 
about this information that they should not have to go onto the internet to learn. If they do not receive that information, they will find it in other well, then ways. Then let them do Am that. I right? They don't need to have your groomer. Right. Yeah, yeah, they don't. So it, yeah, they don't need to do this. Find it on their what own it way. is to be an inclusive, we all figured it out on our based, own. fact-based community. Inclusive. And let's listen to the voice of the There's people the word. who chose that. And thank okay, you for the Karen. work you're doing. I know this is hard. This is obviously hard. You can hear it in my voice. I'm frustrated, and I'm ready for you're us to move forward as a district. Thank you. You're fr if you're sexually frustrated, ma'am, buy a vibrator, yeah, but don't yeah, teach kids about it, procedure. okay? Please. Oh, here comes I Jamie. Think it might be helpful. Let's go, Jamie. I, the, the, the chair is running the meeting. So if anyone is out of order, it is in the province and authority of the chair to speak to it. So if you're at the microphone and something happens you don't like, don't address appeal to people. the chair. There you go. Okay. Well, he's controlling the meeting. Well, on. that's good. Please don't get into it amongst yourselves here because Dr. Jessica Banger is overseeing and running this meeting. Please give that to him respectfully. Thank you. Am I good? Yeah. Okay. Bring it home, Jamie. I am here tonight as the founder. Excuse and me. Can you actually share your name, your address? You mean, I am not comfortable with sharing my address. Can you share what town that you currently live in? Uh, no. I live in, I live here. Here's <laughs> here. I live in Milwaukee. He can't ask her this. Are this is illegal. Illegal. I'm not a resident of Wauwatosa, but I am a community member and I have many friends who have children here. So I just want to be. I'm speaking. No, just, no, no, no. To understand that you are here we go. not a resident of Wauwatosa. This is what he's trying to do. She can yeah. sue him district, for not letting him. I have many friends who do that are concerned, and I'm speaking on behalf of them as Under, well. Understood. Intimidation. Okay? Sure. Okay, I appreciate that. Yep. Uh, my name is Jamie Michelle. I'm here tonight as the founder and president of Gays Against Groomers, a coalition of hundreds of thousands of gay people and allies who oppose the sexualization, indoctrination, sterilization, and mutilation of children being done in our name. And I'd like to help clear a few things up for people tonight. Drag queen shows and story hours are not kid friendly. They are child abuse. Indoctrinating students with radical gender ideology is not inclusive, as some say. It is child abuse. Encouraging young children to explore their genitalia and their gender identity is not progressive. It is child abuse. Medically transitioning children and turning them into sterilized, mutilated, lifelong big pharma patients with an endless list of complications is not care. It is child abuse. Mm -hmm. All of you here do not represent the LGBT community. We do. You do not speak for the LGBT community. We do. You know what you're doing is wrong and depraved, but you continue to do it anyways, with the material being shown and provided to children in your district. The day of reckoning is on its way, and when it arrives, and it will arrive soon, you should be ready to defend, defend why you allowed and ushered in this mass scale child abuse, the likes of which have never been seen in this country before. You who allow this are abusers and enablers. You are the enemy of parents and their children. And if you are okay with, with you have 30 what, seconds, if you are okay with the material being taught in your schools to your students, you should never be allowed within 500 yards of a child ever again. Please remember our name, Gays Against Groomers. You're going to be seeing a lot more of us, and our work is just getting started. Shame on you. Thank you. Yep. Good Let's job, go. Jamie. Good job. I love it. Is it. Amoral says, isn't that crap already illegal? No. It should be. It's not. The thing is, like, this shit's so wild. Like, I mean, nobody's thought to make laws about this stuff because it would never come up ever There's in any a, civilized society. Uh, this is insane. Uh, line for the strategic goal number uh, for today, the human resources. Will there be opportunity for com community comment on that? 
I believe that's just a report and we don't have community comment on reports. Okay. There will be an opportunity at the end of the meeting for community comment on anything on or off the agenda. Okay, perfect. I will make comment then. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this person's like, I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> I, mean, I am not here for this. I'm here for some insurance I'm here for problems. Something else. And I- <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> oh, rainbow hey, hair. My name's Marissa Darling. I live in East Town. I am a community member and I'm also a former school counselor. I am here Ooh, tonight to Definitely echo some her. points of what my friend Jamie said and also oh, maybe share not. my relative expertise. Oh, she's on the team. The she's on the team. Of, oh, uh, let's go. Oh, this is shocking. You see the hair and you just don't think it. Uh, knowledge and development around the topics of sexuality and gender identity and to urge you to reconsider what's happening in the school district with the adoption of the new sex ed curriculum in Wauwatosa. So Jamie put it pretty perfectly when she said that this is really ultimately about the sexualization of minors to their detriment, to the detriment of their minds, of their bodies, of their souls, and of their spirits. There's no room in the school day to talk about they, them pronouns. When kids can't can't read on grade level, there's no room in the school day to teach a kindergartner about gender expression and drag queens when they are still having accidents at school. Yeah, no there's kidding. no room in the school day to talk to high schoolers about anal sex when they are busy applying to college. Yep, that's right. The demented, the short sighted, the <laughs> don't judge a gay by its hair color. <laughs> yes, sorry about that. Just not. Not evidence-based nature <laughs> of Very the late. You're my gay. that has Sorry. been adopted and that is going to be used across <laughs> the district of Wauwatosa. We don't even know what the effects are going to be of this yet. We don't even know what the data is going to look like. We even know what is going to happen to the children that are being exposed to these ideas that have no basis in science, that have no basis in biological reality, that have no long-term data to back them up. And yet this is something that you want to do district-wide. Starting in kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade is to teach children that they can be born in the wrong body and use that as a basis for some form of social, emotional, well-being, learning. I don't even know what it's supposed to accomplish. All I know is that kids are born the way they're born and they should be accepted for the way they're born. Gender non-conforming students should be accepted for who they are instead of pigeonholed into a supposed gender identity because they're girls who like sports or they're girls who want to have short hair or they're girls who are Amen. gay. That's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I am putting a link in the chat uh, to read about Jamie Michelle because I have written there. about her on PG. My name is Kristen Bach. Click and click. I'm a Wauwatosa resident and parent. I have four children in Wauwatosa schools, four recent graduates of Wauwatosa schools. Don't disappoint us, Including my son, Theo, who is here tonight uh, as a student representative for the school board. So thank you for that super cool opportunity that you give to local kids. Um, I am speaking extemporaneously. Please excuse stammering. Uh, My eldest child is a gay man. He has graduated from Washington Elementary and Longfellow Middle School and East High School. And he is a college student at UWM having the time of his life. He was a gay 10-year-old. And then he was a gay 12-year-old. And then he was a gay 16-year-old before he grew into a gay 20-year-old. And despite the very- So at what point was he abused? Nine years old then? Okay. Every educator who ever invested anything into my child, and there were countless educators who invested countless resources into my child, There are zero times he ever saw himself represented as a gay man at any time in the curriculum of any of his human human development classes. His sexuality was not present. 
his but there weren't boys in books of his gender expression was not present no his, I, stop it i've had enough oh, this is, this is not present. Shame. his emotional was not present shame. and that was not cared about him shame that was because of an outdated curriculum we're using the shame wherein belt. gay people that's good are absent shame or a rumor. shame and i would like to thank the school shame. board i would like to thank everyone who has invested dozens of hours of uh, research and meetings and community spirited volunteering to make it so that yes but does he know how to do math Charlie math gets to be the <laughs> yeah. last kid if you're calling your kid gay at 10 is a secret like there's yeah. something wrong Best with mates. you you're like yeah, just wait and see how they turn out okay because 10 years old you're going to change your mind a lot about a, a lot of things in his own classrooms i would also like to oh, thank the school board for the prioritizing the safety of children in using medically appropriate terminology. Yeah, my Christianity Whoa. wasn't represented in school. Because as we all know, yeah, mine either. An That's right. Body of research in the social sciences regarding. Oh my gosh, Megan, this is gonna get me mad right before dinner. I stayed 15 minutes longer than I wanted to because I wanted to listen to Jamie. Their uh, and then I wanted to listen to the biggest red-haired. If you have got to do it, you can in go. Children starting at all right, the thank you for dismissing me from class. Through adulthood. Uh, you aren't teaching kids what their body parts are. This I'm is so not wild. teaching kids what their body parts are. We're teaching them what they're called Shame. correctly so the predators recognize Shame. that they're an educated child and so that they Shame. can... Uh, the so predators they recognize they're an educated child and their own choices. They, so <laughs> they know how to, how to please a predator? Like, seriously, yeah, I guess. all my kids need to know is don't let anybody touch you down there okay nobody puts their hands inside your pants i guess i guess we're educating them against That's predators it. uh we should teach them how to use guns yeah <laughs> my name is yeah, paul guns. Bruno. um i live yeah. in ravenswood uh i've got two children Stun in the school guns. district uh something stop the watching nhs this, in the uk just told doctors not to encourage young people to change their names and pronouns because most uh children who think they're transgender are just going through a phase it seems yep. to be really important to the people on the board. Uh, we were giving no. <laughs> My love of dragons uh, wasn't represented. In school. Right. Um, we had two weeks to figure it out. And of the 13,000 people that you sent surveys to, 184 were counted. We don't know how many actually responded. Um, but I, I think, you know, we're going a little fast here. Uh, countries think? in Europe are already turning back the clock on That's where right. we we're going. And having to take my kids out of some of these things, they're going to be ostracized. And that's the last thing I want my child to think that their dad's a homophobe or their dad hates transgender people. Um, Cause like, I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what you want to call yourself, but teaching kids this young, I think it's inappropriate. And, you know, look at test grades, they're falling fast and we're putting in a brand new science. Like I want reading grades and math grades to come up before we Yeah. Start. And doing all this yeah let's do that that's all i have to say and i really hope like look at what the nhs remember said. when schools focused um, on that they're turning back mm. the clock because they see the what's coming um thank you for your time <sighs> sensible yes good job okay well thank you for having me on i appreciate it i'll leave with that guy right. a happier note and see okay, you. all see the attention that's been devoted to this topic is ludicrous and the younger grades, this curriculum takes up 0.2 or 0.2, 0.3% of instructional time. I remember those oh, actual that little, stats just throw it out from the school district. It's a drop in the bucket of our kids' education. I have no worries about the math and ELA time and science and everything else that my kids are getting during the school day. However, I think there are certain people from outside our community, a lot of them here tonight, and a few from within our community who are using this opportunity to fuel divisions and scapegoat our public schools and vulnerable kids for their own political purposes. It needs to stop. Thank you for all you do. Yeah. That was that was dumb. Thanks. I think we're going to shift into we'll have public comment again at the end of the evening. So what? folks are welcome to stay. But we've got a lot of business to get to. We're going to roll through all that business uh, and we'll have public comment at the end of our evening. Oh, God, um, they're going to well. make us sit through hours of okay. this. All right, fine. I got to go get snacks. It's a fun evening. Oh, um, was that we snarky? Have three of our four student school board representatives with us this evening uh, who will be taking the oath. The fourth is my understanding coming back from a college visit. Um, so we'll 
we'll catch him up at our next meeting. Yeah, censorship. Um, but thank you all he for wants your to applications weed. to everyone else. He who thinks applied, they're not going to stay uh, for using your voice to advocate for student perspectives on the board. Um, and I'm delighted that you're all joining us here this evening. Um, our school board cl clerk, Dr. Jenny Hoig, uh, will administer the oath of office to student representatives at this time. All right, I'm going to go I get snacks. I'll let this run and, and I will be right back as soon as I get my snacks. Either from your, a lot of times we'll have them stand and do it at the microphone. <laughs> Both. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're gonna repeat after me. I and then say your name. I do. Having been appointed to the office of student representative on the Waltosa School Board. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. Swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. Thank you all and welcome. Um, the student school board representative position is something that the board uh, began to include about five years ago, four to five years ago. Uh, and have really played, I think, an important role in being able to bring student voice. Um, Dr. Means and I will be setting up a time for onboarding when all six of us can get together. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about your roles and some of the goals that you might have for this year that you would like to bring before the board. So con get, again, congratulations and thank you. Uh, our next item is the consent agenda. Uh, are there any items in the consent agenda which board members God would love like to Mr. Remove? Fox. He made noodles. Oh, yeah. I skipped one. Like chicken and um, the next is a report from the Education noodles. Foundation of Wawajosa. Dr. Means. Ms. Costa from the EFW will what did I miss? be making a presentation to the board and community regarding the fine work of the foundation. Is this when they pat themselves on the back and they do all the ass kissing because there's usually a lot of ass kissing at these meetings a little asmr for you we may hold on this item we can table it then. can i have a motion to table this item what's the item they seem Second. very hesitant to talk about it we'll come back when she's able to join us later in the meeting uh please call the roll Ms. fraley yes uh dr jess binger yes mr meyer yes Ms. mulefeld yes mr phillips yes dr hoyt yes Ms. willis yes Next item up is the consent agenda. Are there any items in the consent agenda which board members would like to remove for separate discussion and action? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Thank you, ma'am. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, any board discussion on this item? Ms. Riley. Um, I just want to say that it is great to see that we are offering this to students. Um, this is the first time I've, you know, learned about it from a personal standpoint and have been very, very impressed by both the WTC folks and the UWM folks. And um, I just think it's fantastic that we offer kids this opportunity. Um, and though it costs us money, I'd like to make sure that we are making it uh, making all of our students aware of it. Um, you know, I, I wasn't aware of it with my first kid. Um, and so, you know, by the time you get to your third child, you know a little bit more. Um, so I, in, in terms of 
equity and we're thinking about our strategic plan, I'd love to make sure that this is knowledge that we make available to all families um, so that everyone benefits equally. So, the heck are they talking about? Watching uh, on TV or in the room, what Ms. Fraley is referring to is one of the things in the consent agenda is uh, all the different opportunities where uh, students at Tosa East and Tosa West are taking courses uh, for college credit. Uh, at a variety of different post-secondary institutions um, and all the different courses that are being taken and the budget approvals for that as part of our consent agenda tonight. So good thing to know is one of the things that we do provide is an opportunity uh, as appropriate to attend post-secondary institutions. Uh, and these could be uh, anywhere from WCTC, I think MATC is on the list, Mount Mary, UW-Milwaukee, Marquette, several others. Uh, so a really great opportunity for students still in high school uh, certainly lots of opportunities to get post-secondary credit, uh, and this is another one of those. So thank you, that's really. Any other comments from the board? Seeing none, any community comment on the consent agenda? Seeing none, please call the roll. Ms. Mulefeld? Yes. Ms. Fraley? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Joseph Anger? Yes. Dr. Hoig? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Willis? Uh, Dr. Jessup Anger, I see two hands raised, but I'm not sure if it's for public comment on this item. I just want to bring attention to that. Yeah, those hands I'm just lowering now, they've been um, they've been raised since the initial public comment section. So if any guests now want to comment on the consent agenda, could you please raise your Gosh, hand? Gosh, could online. I comment on this? Should I raise my hand on the Zoom? I see no hands raised. That would yes. be hilarious. Thank you. And that item passes. Our next item up on the agenda is strategic goal number four, high quality staff. Uh, and this is a report, a human resources report. Ms. Salasathke, thank you for joining us. I agree that the evening. consent agenda does not sound too great for kids. <laughs> Uh, in this evening's report, you'll see a number of updates, both about um, positions that we have added in the organization um, based on our student needs, as we've understood them since the beginning of the year, um, as well as some challenges that, that we're experiencing. Um, I would first like to point out um, that uh, since um, uh, the report was prepared, um, we've hired approximately 7.0 teachers um, uh, to the positions that we've had, and we've hired about 6.0 um, support staff members. We are planning to host a career fair focusing specifically on support staff positions in the month of November. Um, and we're also excited um, that the Urban Learning Collaborative and Alternative Teacher Certification Program in the area that partners with Mount Mary uh, will be available um, for during the career fair to talk with individuals who are interested in teacher certification, um, but also just interested in going into educational positions, starting to build those um, teacher pipeline tools for our organization. Um, later this week, uh, Dr. I don't want to hear about teachers and I will be meeting with our um, our Wauwatosa Education Association members in our second meet and confer meeting of the year. Um, we also have our first support staff meeting that meet and confer um, uh, meeting scheduled for the middle of November. And so far, there's been fairly good interest um, in attending those meetings. Um, and finally, usually, school uh, board attendings are very or, uh, school board meetings are very poorly later in the attended. Month of November. And so, we invited all of our staff members. It's not um, unusual. Dear, especially that's, those with Dearborn diverse was unusual. Diverse needs to come and learn about not only um, our benefit systems, um, as well as um, uh, how our health insurance program is running, and to help us really uh, map out a strategic path for the future. Uh, one of the other um, uh, components I'd like to call your attention to this evening is that um, last month, um, our colleague Matthew Vanderkamp was recognized uh, for his work with an agency uh, entitled um, the Ability Center to offer open gym activities to our recreation department. Uh, he was the first and our rec department was the first to come and get involved with that organization, uh, which offers uh, opportunities for participants to engage in indoor and outdoor activities like wheelchair basketball, sitting volleyball, goalball, and tennis. Um, and that program is growing in the area with some new sponsorships. So uh, keep up the good work, Matthew and the team in the recreation department. 
Um, and Tuesday, we're looking you're at killing me. The People continue month. the work that they've been um, working on to share with you that, when they were working um, we talked, on for believe, the important uh, work. <laughs> at the last year, maybe two meetings ago, about some dean of students positions exactly. that we would be adding to our secondary schools. These noodles are um, so our good. Our first dean was hired last week, and she'll be starting at Whitman Middle School next Tuesday. Uh, we have some additional interviews tomorrow um, for our other middle school position. And next week, we'll be interviewing for our high school dean of students position under the leadership of our colleague and friend, um, Sir Luke Pinion. We're looking forward to those opportunities coming up. And that's my report for the evening. Thank you. Um, before I ask the board for any questions or comments, I just want to make a comment on the Ability Center. Uh, Damian Buckman is a, is, plays a major role with that organization, is a parent in the district, and is um, so much positive energy. If you're just uh, tuning just in, a jewel for our community. It's they are um, the phenomenal things. They're stalling. The parks, uh, in the they don't want to hear the rest of the public so, comments. Uh, kudos. So they to said they Matthew wouldn't get back to him until after the meeting. Ways to in, in, engage and connect with them. And that's so we have to sit through this. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments from the board? Really. So for the educational assistant comp, um, do we have a sense of when that will be figured out and will there be the possibility for us to have a different comp model in high for second semester hiring? Uh, so I appreciate the question. Um, in talking with Dr. Means and with Mr. Brightman, um, we felt that the adjustment to those salaries was best held within the planning for our budget for next year, which would not have it in time for the second semester. And has there been any conversation about what we might be willing or able to do in the short term to to get folks in? Um, I know we're competing with other districts and and you know charter and parochial schools for those specific positions, and just don't know if there's any flex there for what we could offer that might be a little bit of a bump or a a one time you know signing bonus or something because it's you know you've heard me say this before. Yeah. Not, not for our current folks, much less to get new folks in. Yeah, um, we have offered signing bonuses um, when we held our summer career fair. That's certainly something exactly. we at. Um, get ready to strap in and well chat while this bullshit happens. Um, to other local school districts and what that means. Or get something um, to I eat. Think as you saw in the report, um, the way we I wish I could share these noodles with you. They're really good. Our educational assistants is based on their training and specifically educational qualifications. I think that is very savvy got in broccoli. comparison to the market. But we still and yellow need to boost peppers. the bottom up. So I think there are are some things that we can maintain steak, as well left over from last night way. um but we want to make sure that we're, we're ready and to rice go ahead noodles. and make that investment not just in new hires mm -hmm. and some um, kind of brown sauce same, um, very uh, good compensation and the same um gratitude for the work that's happening for our current staff members and so that makes it a much larger notice how no one yeah. is leaving I'm wondering <laughs> they're not leaving they think like they're going to make them leave <laughs> they're not leaving so they come on and they get an incentive bonus if they stay into next year um we have i've started working with that a little bit okay. in, in in with an employment offer um adding the fact that we will be able to give you an increase of at least this much at the end of the year right. to come back you month. should want noodles uh, no those kind noodles of were delicious about in terms of adjustments to those hourly rates okay and then final question have we thought at all about um Lurple, that's what my daughter had at school today at the cafeteria to fish and tater tots looking specifically at targeting recent college grads right um I was a 21 year old teacher and it was very hard to teach 19 year olds who were two years younger but mm -hmm. obviously you know i'm thinking about my oldest who was a teacher's assistant during summer school and was with in the elementary school and you know had a ton to offer so i just I keep yeah blurple about she totally told me that, that are, when she got know, in the car today she never tells me what they have to eat for lunch she was like ma we had fish and sticks and tater tots it was really good had as she had the same dinner you did or, you know, because that's basically the salary they were making at summer school. Why do they know, all look odd? Like the kids yeah, are out there. They all look kind of the same. Might, it's the white, might the like white lefty women. They all have yeah. the same look. Uh, we are, um, um, my team met today um, and they have been really thoughtful and, um, and very uh, creative in terms of thinking about how to go ahead and get at recent graduates. Although um, to be fair, and, uh, we did um, misrepresent the redhead, um, people and family you know? Um, Looks can be deceiving sometimes. Have connections with universities to help yeah. find um, students who are maybe on education you, pathway. I, just, like, I want to be yeah. sure we're turning over every rock because I know of teachers who are saying they're yeah. desperate to have them. every rock and leave. Yeah. And leave. And leave. Yes. yes. Great. Thank you. Of course. Appreciate all the work.
Have I tried noodles from chickpeas or lentils? No, gross. That sounds so. gross. I have not. I don't know what's wrong with rice noodles. So for our new students, school board members, um, what we have is about once a month, um, Ms. Elzaski, who oversees our human human resources. Ooh, rapid apathy. Um, nice comes link. And shares a I'm going to check that out. Of topics of kind of who we're hiring, what we're hiring for, um, staff morale, um, ways that we can do to make sure that our staff are taken care of and supported to the greatest degree possible. So you'll see this on the agenda about once a month um, throughout the year. So that's it's kind of a normal report that we have. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Meyer, I'm going to ask you to help me out with this one. So we have tabled the Education Foundation of Wauwatosa item. I'm going to bring that back onto the agenda. On the table. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Pull from the table for consideration. Yeah. Thank one you, of Second. us. Second. One of Please us. Ms. Mealfield? Yes. Ms. Fraley? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. Dr. Hoyt? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yep. Ms. Willis? Yes. <laughs> We are back uh, to an item for the Education Foundation of Wauwatosa. As, as our new president of the Education Foundation of Wauwatosa makes her way to um, the table. Thank you, Mr. Brightman, for your flexibility. Ms. Jack, Jackie Cox <laughs> has been on the foundation board since 2016 and has recently assumed the role of president. You guys, this um, is where all the important Foundation stuff happens at these little EFW boring board meetings that nobody goes to, the school district and which is why you should go. The opportunities available to students and teachers. And so, Ms. Costa, thank you so much for being here this evening. We really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thanks for having me. Do you know if the presentation is already downloaded? It is. Ms. Elizoski, do you mind helping me? Yeah. For while we're getting this set up, how, I'm curious how many folks in the office there in the room tonight have been to either the any of the EFW events? A couple of them. If you haven't been, uh, it is just the black and white ball is, I think, in May this year. Uh, is its new permanent uh, time. Oh, a fantastic black and time white to ball. With neighbors and Sounds racist. The community. Uh, raising funds for a great uh, have they considered and then uh, how really uncomfortable that, that might make some people feel to, to have a black um, and white ball is another big fundraiser what about the, the brown EFW people is a really great opportunity and place to engage uh, if you're interested in being a community volunteer uh, certainly what about PTAs them and PTOs and EFW does some phenomenal stuff and we're going to get to hear about a lot of that really good stuff tonight so if you haven't been there do some soul searching uh, make sure that you thought why you haven't been there and I think you can you get yourself to, to buy a table about and take why some you have something sure called a black and white ball. And raising funds for kids in Wauwatosa. Very binary of you. Very, How very binary. committed to going to an EFW <laughs> event. I want to see all your hands. Everybody in the room should be, if you, if you care about kids, raise your hand and say, I commit to donating money to the EFW this year in Wauwatosa. Is everybody, is everybody, let's see your hands. Who's. Like, I'm not seeing them. This, no, guy this includes he's, whether, he what I'm hearing. This is entertaining. Okay. Okay, so the, the, Listen, the great part man, about this presentation move it along. That, we're, um, we're using it. We're waiting PDF for the public the comment. Show. We don't get to see all the fun stuff. The segregation but, um, ball. <laughs> Why don't you just call it the segregation so, ball um, and be done with it? Uh, can I just uh, jump in? If you could share your screen, Corey, could you? maybe assist in sharing the screen so that we can see it online as well. This is why Thank nobody you. goes to these meetings. Has anybody rethought and so recommitted boring. <laughs> to donating money? And this guy EFW. really thinks he's, he thinks he's I'm a not comedian. I'm confused why everyone's not raising their hand. <laughs> he thinks he's funny. You're not funny, sir. That, that decision has been made. We'll be coming back to that in three years though. We're good okay. to go. We can see it Wait, online. Is there a chat you, going on? Oh, no chat. Disabled. All right. Well, thanks again for having me. Um, my name is Jackie Costa, like Dr. Means um, noted, and I've been on the Education Foundation for a while now. Um, our purpose is to promote excellence, innovation, and opportunities in the district uh, by raising awareness and awarding money for uh, teacher grants, and um, these grants are usually the main purpose is to enhance and enrich the learning experience for all students. 
Every time they say for all students, I get nervous. Um, training is a big down arrow the big space bar. Because the way they say it is so okay. self-important. For all so, uh, students. For 32 years now, we've been raising money and we have, have awarded it's like a more buzzword. than a million dollars. And in 2020, we actually gifted the district 30000 for Chromebooks to help, um, you know, during the hybrid needs. Last year in 2021, we funded our largest grant ever, which was $50,000 for this amazing technology. They really need to learn how to stand um, back from the microphone. Table. It's one of the only high schools in the state to have this kind of yes. technology. It allows similar to all votes. To all, all votes matter, um, even the illegal ones. Our, uh, the past seven years, you can see that this just is a little snapshot of um, how our grants have touched every student in the district at every school. Um, some of those, some of those. Uh, I thought I'd be able to read it better, but you know what? Are, I don't um, really care. <laughs> a little picture of some of the things. Just that make it smaller again. That we've been funding. Um, some of the names that you might recognize from last year's round of grants where we awarded $72,000 um, for eight grants. We funded a music lab at Tosa East. We funded $8,000 worth of graphing calculators for uh, high school students at Tosa West. And like I said, some of the names that you might recognize, Elizabeth Updike, um, Sarah Minsky, Heidi Hedgewood, Adam Stephan, all at Tosa West. Um, Lauren Rosnowski Hayden and Jay Reinke from Longfellow also got grants last year. And then from Tosa East, we had some awards to the amazing Ken Craig Griffey, who you might know. He's kind of famous now around town. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Lotto, Michael Hayden, and uh, Jeff Grubsack also got some grants last year. Our grant. See, this um, is how they think they're going to wear you down. Is now open so by being as boring as possible. And they think the people in the crowd will uh, so have better things to do, these, like, places to go. Um, like the board president just said, these are candy the crush to play. We run um, the EFW stampede. It's a pretty bad voice. Oh, there it is. There's the racist gala. After COVID. What about the brown people, I ask you? How come you leave them out? Uh, that's coming up in May. It just doesn't and, seem right. Um, tickets will be going on sale for that. Can we do Probably black and white galas quarter. anymore? I don't think so. Uh, we couldn't really do it without the help of our sponsors. So we have some of these terrific partners around the, around town who contributed to help. I told us. you most of these um, are ass kissing as well events. As some of the PTAs, <laughs> literally, from, ass um, licking. PTAs, PTOs, all PTSAs, the time. Our teachers are so hardworking, district. and this committee has been so good. Um, and Let's our see. leadership is just so wonderful. Of course, I have to give a little and shout out our to our school, website. a little we shout out to our web developers. And um, well, it's just ass video kissing all around. Video, but, yeah, they need um, to turn it into the I rainbow gala. <laughs> to be but all inclusive, on, it can't just be black um, and white. Channel. So it should be a trans you gala. Your time, and I can um, ask answer any questions that you that you have. Thank you. Representing Thank you the brown people here. in the chat, Yvonne. Um, the EFW is a, a wonderful <laughs> the brown organization. People and like to you be said, included. it really supports the schools and the teachers. Um, and if we didn't have you, we couldn't do all the wonderful uh, things. Look, more them. ass kissing. Um, oh, and, we and just and love some, you so you know, much. Course, very innovative things. Oh, you're so innovative. Um, my question for you is the um, the drop in, is it nominations for programs in the schools from last year yes, to blowing this year, sunshine up their own asses so they don't have to hear the public tell them how terrible so they are like and no lisa before. this is not more important well, just than what the, the public has to say to them presented. literally their oh, one job is to listen to the, the public the number of submissions from the, the hold on i'm gonna or... i'm gonna mute the ass kissing for a second they have one job to do they got elected to a school board to listen to the people to listen to the constituents. And yet here they are cutting the constituents off so that they can kiss their own asses, blow sunshine up their own asses for the next hour and a half so they don't have to listen to the public comment. It, they really should be shamed for this. 
this is absolutely ridiculous. They should have allowed the public business to be done first so that the families could go home and then they can do the rest of their ass kissing in, in uh, private. But there's probably been, I don't know how to explain that, um, but there's probably been a lot of change too, <laughs> maybe in some of the buildings. So well, I'm sure that can be arranged. Just the process. Well, you know, we award grants to- um, Although this is kind of funny too. dollars up to, well, that 50,000 was our highest. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, to be honest, the, the ass kissing is kind of funny. Requests that we get, um, the better. And I mean, we want <laughs> to give away the money. That's why we. I'm in the Rumble chat money. now. I got to catch up on your chats. Did anybody send me rants for pants? Yeah. I'm still in need of pants. Yeah, and so auto I just parts. want to make sure that it's not too cumbersome. If I missed any rants, because I, mean, I wasn't seem on the like page, I'm sorry. Past experience, but it seems it's gotten easier. Okay. Yeah. All right. Change the, change the, the yeah, I know. Ellie fan. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And maybe we can just what if, it more. Hold on. I'm muting them. What if they, what if they okayed the budget that had the curriculum in it before the public even spoke? What, how would we even know what they're doing? Like, could they be doing that? That would be bad. They love the ass kissing. Because yes, they just absolutely love it. That the school needs like to approach a teacher and, you know, there could be a collaboration between a student club and a teacher. Maybe I'll go down of, here. Like, what look, I look are. like I'm in the meeting. So this is something that I would encourage you to think about <laughs> how you take back this information to your own teachers to say, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could do this in physics or we could do this in, in something else? Because um, I think hearing from students about what they want to see. This in person in the right hand really square important. down on the bottom looks um, so and the second thing is I just want to call like out done with this and say thank you. Doesn't she look bored with this? Jessica walk run roles. something um, wills. We've been talking a lot about um diversity, equity she looks pretty bored. and accessibility. Um and I think that um it might seem like a little thing, but it I think it says a lot and even the visual itself. Oh God, these people love to hear themselves to talk. Great you know what we need? We need some, a little bit of mood music. Should we get some mood music going? Let's try this. Here we go. I would just like to call it out again. The website, tosaefw.org. It is such a happy, helpful, sharing, communicative kind of website. It's just been... You can go there and see what you're all doing. And please it's, visit that website, tosaefw.org. Thanks. We're going to wait you out. A little bit about, we can do this I've all been night. Along. There's been great social media posts of members of the EFW going into schools, um, sharing information with teachers who've gotten grants uh, and kind of doing little surprise pop-in visits. Can Everyone you lower about, your lighting. About what, that, <laughs> what that's doing, kind of the, some of the response you've been getting. It's, but it looks fun online. Yeah, well, um, you know, we have some... A little music kind of livens up this kind of board meeting, doesn't it? And when they call it a board meeting, they really mean B-O-R-E-D so board. Every year we make our grant announcement in March. And last year we uh, delivered donuts to the schools where teachers got some grants. Then in front of the students <laughs> this, this year, just last week, we surprised the teachers in front of their kids with little goodie bags and um, they didn't know, they don't know we're coming. Of course, we organized it with the principal, but um, I guess that the fun thing is that then the students can realize, you know, that their teachers are pretty awesome. All right, let's try a different too, one. And that they What's this one like? Done this no, I'm not a huge fan of that one. Let's do this and, one. Uh, we have no, I don't like that one either. To go. This one's okay. When that's gonna be. <laughs> um, but yeah, we um, we get our board members to go out to the school to do that. Usually every fall. Awesome. Thank you for the work. Lower right hand square, yeah, man. She looks like she's ready to bolt. Now, just a quick thank you for everything you do. It's such an important partnership. In our ass kissing, ass kissing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Send the link to that video. It's just one minute. It kind of summarizes everything I said. Awesome. Thank you for being here tonight. Thanks. 
What if we liven it up with some rock music? How'd that go? Next up is strategic goal number six, operations. Uh, action to approve the 2022-23 original budget and tax levy. So they're going to approve the budget, which it's probably the includes the, the curriculum. Original budget Hold on. and tax levy, levy certification as presented in both the attached on pages four through six and will be presented by Mr. Brightman and I so move. Second. Ms. Fraley. What if this uh, yes. includes no. the curriculum? Not yet. Oh. That they haven't let the people talk about. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But I'm just saying. Okay, thank you. I mean, it could be. For you to share it on the screen. Phantom Jade says, so says these guys, the about, these guys uh, need a reality check. School finance and Everyone on the board is great and wonderful. Year, and this is the statutory Wait till the people put y'all in check. Well, as certifying Should the tax be good. levy or resources we need to fund this current school year. So that's just something that's odd about Wisconsin. I don't know of another state where it happens like this in kind of a rear. Oh God, budget um, approval. So in a long-term legislative discussion, not for this next biennium, but it might be something interesting to talk about. Something that's more proactively thinking to where you're setting a budget financially now for something that would happen a next year from now or six months from now. So that's just something that kind of placeholds kind of where we're at. Um, I did prepare a budget summary in a little bit different format than you've seen in the past. Um, so I'd like some feedback on this as we go forward too. Um, there's a budget booklet that was attached in board docs and it's about 20 pages long. Um, <laughs> the front section The appropriate is a theme music of should be let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> um, I'm going to focus on the front end of the document, really pages th three you through You know, if we kill the YouTube um, stream, in, we in can play that on Rumble. Uh, we'll start with the budget calendar. We've talked about the long term. Oh, yes, Yvonne, great calendar. idea. This is the final snippet Drinking of the game. you're planning. Take a um, shot or a drink every time they smell their own farts. Um, and just again to remind you, the <laughs> and yellow you can highlighted play this items game are when the board takes board meeting, action on and you would be so drunk within the budget. And you can see we're at the October 24th, the last step in this current planning process. And we'll be requesting the budget adoption by the board as well as the tax levy certification tonight. Um, statutorily, we need to have that passed by November 1st of each year and then forwarded to the, the the clerks by November 10th. So that's really the next steps we do behind the scenes um, after tonight. Uh, pages four through six are where we present the budget in the minimum, or it's not the minimum, but the required format that the DPI has as far as the board adopting a budget. So it's in that format, but it's not the most friendly document to look at. So we provide this, and this is what we ask the board to adopt, but we provide some supplementary information and some other formats to the same information, make it a little bit clearer for the community and, and for the board to kind of process through. Um, one of the key things we're doing tonight is obviously the tax levy. So. Um, this would be on page eight of the, oh God, the tax it levy. What we call section one. So they're always tax raising taxes, always. And I'll get back to this after I make a few other comments. Um, you recall the board passed a budget back at the end of June, and that we call that the preliminary budget, and that gives us really spending authority through this time until the board Oh, yeah. Stops. We're going to teach your budget. kids uh, how to have gay sex. The budget, there's really no change. And how to use uh, back in June. sex um, apps. There's a, a minor adjustment. And we're going to charge um, you extra for it. We're going to raise your taxes. Program. But there's a uh, <laughs> I can't the offset Darrell on the revenue side and the revenue meeting. for the voucher costs as they um, <laughs> um, are part of our, oh. our budget as we adopted for this year. Um, there was another key difference on the revenue side. Um, uh, Look like at the revenue side. Oh, uh, state equalization aid. Uh, last year, done. the aid was certified as seventeen point eight million dollars. They're trying to wait us out, fam. Back in June, are we going anywhere? Twenty point eight million dollars. No, we are not. Aid. The actual number and if there any of you down, leave the stream, um, you will not be welcome so back. Do you understand me? We are here for the long run, state, soldier. So pitch, put sure your big girl pants need, on. As well as every district in the state had a tough time predicting where state aid would come in this year. Get some popcorn. And that's because of the way the shared costs are factored in statewide. We're here the impact to of the bitter end, my friends. Of funds and how they're spent different timing wise and different levels at different districts across the state, especially the MPS and the large urban districts. They really sway how that that impacts Ooh, the I like this formula. One. So we did get a little bit less aid than we thought. Slow jam. The tax levy's up a little bit from what we thought, but it's still down from what you saw. Ellie, if you so leave, you're not coming back. I will not let you back in here. 
Could you are staying. We are all staying um, through this. If I have to go through it, screen. you have to go through it. Uh, the tax rate <laughs> is what most people care you about. What does this mean to my you individual to property back. taxes? And even though the tax levy is up slightly, um, the tax rate is down significantly, and that's because of a 19.3% We're in this together. increase to overall property There will be no bailing. We predicted about a 2%, very conservatively, a 2%. You know how many of these I sat through? So that's much higher, so the tax rate in person? is much greater than we At the Orland Park back. Public Library? Um, that, that you can find all that on my ago. YouTube channel. Um, if you're a person owning that average three hundred dollars I should show you the home, video of my first uh, appearance there. Your school property taxes were just over $2,500, and this year they're just over That would be more dollars. fun to watch than this. Maybe yes, I should show you that while we're waiting for them to stop. But it would be just my luck that I would go watch something else and then the public comment would start again. put a couple charts in to kind of show the interplay of those taxes on that home as well as the actual taxes. property taxes on homes rates. went so down the right, so we can raise your tax levy happy. by the same I amount your property, property tax taxes. went down look oh my god Those so are all the other funds so depressing education funds, charts, fund, man. Uh, food service community service they're all unchanged with the board saw and approved back in june so i don't spend any more time can we discuss subject jurisdiction and so tonight we are asking <laughs> the board to approve the 2000 would it be fair to say, and by the way, make sure you get over to the merch store, which is linked in the description, or at least it is on YouTube. I'm going to have to drop it in the description on, uh, not in the description, in the chat on Rumble. But we do have new merch. Would it be fair to say grounds? Comes in a sweatshirt, comes in stickers, comes in a coffee grounds mug. And you know you want this. If you've been watching the Darrell Brooks trial, you need this. Head over to the merch store, pick one up. I'll drop the link. So um, I think that's a really good story for us to be able to, to tell um, that there's some relief for uh, taxpayers this year. So as we there's relief the for taxpayers on property change, taxes, so, but um, as you're talking to we're raising your, your, you know, your fees your here. And, and like that, that would be a high point to share with Other board comments or questions? The chat does not consent to being button. called that name. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's a lot of work that goes into this, Mr. Brightman, and I have been asked about it multiple times over the last several weeks. You have time um, to go and, to the merch store you know, right we now can point to, and buy yourself something nice. We can point to this information because you deserve some really share time. it with the community and you deserve how it something will nice like this. Impact our learning. It's the and bitch the switch you know, T-shirt. Flip it and these find things. out, which is what these people are about to do. Suppose. And just to give you feedback, I appreciate so much the calendar. I mean, even looking at the bottom of the Oh, page, ask kissing, take a drink. That's under development. It's so helpful. Lots of objection uh, hearsay you know, as well over there. Calendar, what Mugs, we'll be voting on, just so that, you know, beer glasses, t-shirts. Make Americans Friends so Again that. merch. Keep calm and sue everyone, which is basically the fuck be, around I and find out. Right, I mean, you started off talking about how So much over there. Uh, school finance in Wisconsin is. Um, when I first started on the board about six years ago, God. five, six years ago, I remember there was a blue ribbon panel uh, that was right around that Couch. time, bipartisan. Couch. Couch. A lot of ideas that folks <laughs> could read. This would be good stuff. Raising to fees to groom for kids. For, for schools. Um, they need more I money. Recall, none of that moved forward. To get more um, grooming so materials. I, I say this to share. So they can uh, put Fraley stuff in the I libraries that looks like this. Uh, we will. We have begun, and we will continue to make sure that we're advocating for resources Yikes. for schools, Wauwatosa statewide, um, particularly for our kids and our families and our in our community. Um, Shame so, on you! Um, I think the budget. Uh, you know what this meeting needs a more of? Hassan Shami. Uh, That's right. Shame, Shame on you! Uh, share with the board. That's what this summer. board meeting needs uh, more of. Bringing this back and for approval. Uh, and we've got work to do as Why a state, is my merch contradicting? Uh, issues. I know we've, <laughs> we've, we're seeing some some long-term drops. What's contradicting about uh, it? In, in terms of where we are putting money and resources. And uh, good news, $5.5 billion rainy day, I believe on top of the rainy day fund um, that hopefully oh, we can there, advocate. Is there anything worse than the phrase um, rainy day funds? Is a bong hit an acceptable substitution? Yes, earn, rapid apathy. Uh, money, if we had, like if I had a bong, so, I'd be doing uh, it we'll right now with you. Thank you. <sighs> um, Mr. Brightman, I'm wondering we if you definitely are need some jihad up in here. Just in a couple <laughs> sentences, what you were talking about in the beginning about 
we're a quarter of the way this through is, our business year. We need some and Dearborn energy. We need some of that toxic terms, masculinity is right. The legislative advocacy committee has been talking about is how do we actually educate the public oh, God. as to how this very complicated process works. We're not so stupid, them, lady. Super high level, if you can explain the timeline, might be helpful. Yeah, so I how can you the educate the public dots, about your tax um, levy? We'll get them from books Lady, so kind of anybody who's ever had a job understands taxes. Um, We're not but it stupid. Shows our full budget calendar. You're and raising the levy. Budget, so the we get it. Three twenty four uh, budget plan, and there, um, there are really two <laughs> Rachel, key can you actually make something like that? State aid formula. And are you serious? Um, that would that be so fun. An equalization of I don't have a PO box, but I'll work on getting one. Schools by probably, uh, you can send it to my lawyer. To some districts, I'll give you her address. Other districts, we've been in the <laughs> little state aid side of things. Email me. Um, it's based on an index of spending and then property wealth per student. And so it just depends on you fit in that formula as to the amount of state aid that you get. Uh, the second one is the revenue limits itself. And that sets um, really a revenue limit as it's called on um, the combination of state aid and local tax levy that any one district can can have in a given fiscal year. And it's not equal across the state. It's wherever you entered the system in 1993. That's another odd piece to the, the funding model. Oh, the it's contradictory. Kind of okay, make Americans friends again and keep calling them sue everyone. But here's the difference. Um, the Americans I'm speaking of, I'm gonna mute him. The Americans I'm speaking of are like us. And the people we need to sue are them, these people on the boards. These are government jackbooted thugs. Those are not the neighbors I want to get along with. I want to get along with you guys. I want these people to be sued, though, sued into oblivion for what they're doing to kids. <laughs> being that I want to make sure you if you disagree that with them, they educate you harder. Exactly. Any idea how much money it's going to be coming to us. And especially this year, <laughs> next June or July 1 is a state biennial budget. So every two years, the state passes a biennial budget that includes school funding. And we don't know what that means. So we're going to have to do our best estimates as we progress through that. Tay we'll MF wants to know how to donate. Well, well that's easy. You can send a Rumble rant that. if you're and on a browser on Rumble. Also July 1, uh, or year, you can buy something at the merch store. The or or you can subscribe to my locals at meganfox.locals.com where you'll get um, <clears throat> exclusive streaming, backyard chicken really visits, having the budgeting ability to be able to keep the schools running. Pupper videos. And first and foremost, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Also, your explanation was very nice. Oh, God, ass kissing, drink, shot, drink. Any community comment on this item? No, everyone wants to talk about your crappy curriculum. Hi, my name is Alicia Bartz. I live at 1421 North 69th Street in Tulsa. Oh, look, it cleared out. I don't out. know if this is appropriate, but I'll just mention that I'm curious where donations are counted for in the budget so you know what the actual costs of things are. Some of our booster clubs and sports teams are very, very good at fundraising. And so as a parent, I find myself handing money to many of these clubs. And I think if certain parents retire or certain booster clubs go away, you'll have a lot more dollars hitting the budget. So I just don't know if there's a place where you keep track of in-kind gifts or donations. So you have a sense of those real dollars that maybe aren't coming out of the budget. And you may do that somewhere else, but See, I just want to mention it because I, I do sometimes wonder if we're accounting for the full picture of what it costs to run our fantastic theater programs, our band programs, our sports, when there's money coming in. Are they money laundering ways. in Thank this you. school? Is the money going missing? Are they skimming off the top? And I can provide a, a pretty quick answer to it if you're okay with that. That'd be great. Um, we do have general fund, which are general operations funding for those programs that My we mentioned. My grift game is very um, But any gifts that come in, whether it's through the foundation All right, let me or try again. clubs, I'll mute is put them, in a separate fund. And I'll try and again. So it's isolated for the purpose it was given. If you want to support before. this show, so there are several ways fund, to do it. You can go to the merch store, which I have linked in the description so no for you, where we have all kinds of merchandise that you can buy. I've got sweatshirts, T-shirts, mugs. You know, we've got all kinds of things. Objection, hearsay, merch. When, when, We've when got all kinds of things. Or you can go on YouTube and send a super chat right there. That's how, how you do it. Click on the little money thing and you, you send some, some dollars. But if you're not a big fan now, of YouTube that, and you're watching us on the Rumbles, you can do be, the same thing on Rumble. Never, it's called a Rumble rant. So I think that's something. Wait a minute. I thought I just muted them. Why are they not muted? 
So, Rumble Rants, merch store, locals.com, Megan Fox at meganfox.locals.com. You can send me, uh, you can subscribe there. All right. Let's no, they're in the hands, Christ. Where the heck are they? It's called me. Where'd they Ms. go? Neufeld? Right. Yes. Now they're Ms. voting. Freddy? Yes. Mr. Meyer? No. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. Dr. Hoyt? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Willis? Yes. And that passes. <laughs> Remember, folks, it's not doxing if you Our volunteer to announce your name and address. Yes, yep, that's right. For Medicaid. Meganfox.locals.com. That's it is correct. Recommended that the school board approve recommendation it's of only three dollars a month, which is a pretty good deal. Medicare reimbursement claims for the district. You'll get lots of Archie Ruckus uh, videos. In fact, I am trying to upload one right now that is hilarious, but locals is giving me a problem. But I made this video of him uh, and all the frisbees that he's destroyed, and playing with him in the yard. That's pretty funny recommending Compass Care LLC as the district's federal Medicaid service agency, and that will be effective January 1st, 2023, but they'd have some gear up and some ramp up time prior to that if they are approved. Um, this recommendation comes down to past practice and experience with um, the new staff coming Hey, the are you on the Rumble app Medicaid, or the browser? Because uh, if you're on the app, you won't be able to send a rant. Very low but on the browser, you can. So if there's a little, little gold bit, money bag next to the messages. And on the prior provider, um, wasn't as aggressive with the reporting and coordinating internally. Oh yeah, Daisy, I forgot. To do to get that reimbursement. <laughs> um, I forgot my real job. Just... Hold on. Hold on. We're not done here. And if you want to support me, you can go to pjmedia.com where I write columns every day. Click on columnist, click on my name, Megan Fox, and then click on everything I write every day. Clickety click. Costs you nothing. Just a little carpal tunnel in the finger. And uh, you can get your little handy dandy mouse and just start clicking away. Clickety click on all the things that I write. And my friends will drop links to those in the in the chat right now because I know that they're listening and I know that they will do that because they're awesome. Um, the current provider has been notified of a 60 day contractual termination um, with them. We've been with them for a number of years, well over a decade, could be a couple decades. Lisa, we have the same um, thing at our school. Like this new agreement to go in. Okay, it's not that we have to purchase it because they will send home the original artwork, but they also put it through a digital app so that we can put it on magnets or mugs or t-shirts or postcards, which I kind of enjoy because I buy them for gifts for my parents and stuff. But I do get the original for free from the school, but they do take pictures of it for the digital thing as presented. I'd just like to add as well, the um, Compass Care Service is, is a higher level of service and a different level of service as well for providers that are actually doing the billing and counting and tracking their minutes. So they provide a really great customer service as well, um, as well as tracking. And it's it's above and beyond, I would say, what our staff are typically used to in terms of the support around Medicaid billing. Thank you. Rapid apathy. Any Hold on. I'm going to the mute them. Rapid apathy. You're asking, do they donate to those programs? Yeah, like the, the sports and the boosters and everything. And actually, we had a scandal around here where somebody was skimming off the top from those clubs because nobody ever pays attention to what how much money is coming in. So that mom that brought that up, she's absolutely right. <laughs> they should be auditing that every year. Hold on one second. Sorry. Dead fault so, panic. Someone I know around here actually went to jail for that. I'm an address. Uh, thank you. Hi, Deb Falk Palak, Wauwatosa resident. Um, I am just curious if this billing for Medicaid will still require the district to be sending notification to parents um, because the district staff don't always know, I don't think, um, which students may have Medicaid coverage as a primary or a secondary coverage. And I can tell you it has been several years since district staff have sent something. Um, so I don't know if this is primarily the fault of the provider or what was happening internally with our district staff to reach out to families to let them know that the district would like to um, bill Medicaid for those services. Um, and then also, I would just really highly encourage that um, there's a strong look at confidentiality with sharing of information with this new provider. 
with um, family names, et cetera. And lastly, um, Ms. Willis, I think when you made the motion, you had said Medicare instead of Medicaid. Um, so there's um, obviously a big difference on that, but there's just a technicality there, which could, you know. Oh, it's huge. working. So thank you. The dastardly plan to put us to sleep is working. I think I'm really no worried. Morning, right. I'm worried that the people are giving oh, up and going away. Ms. Milfeld? The, the yes. boardroom's looking a little Ms. empty. Riley? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Jessup Anger? Yes. Dr. Hoyt? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Willis? Yes. No, you missed nothing, Blurple. Absolutely nothing. Next up on this, I, next up is action to approve a construction manager for the Washington Playground Project. It is recommended that the school board approve recommendation of VJS to serve as the construction manager for the Washington Playground Project, and I so move. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Mefeld. Okay, thank you for a quick summary in this item. Uh, the district has bid out the construction manager work for the Washington Playground work, um, again, planned for this spring and summer. Uh, the board did approve the actual project just last March, and so that's all good to go. Uh, we've done everything with the planning, design, permitting, all that is ready and set. Um, the next steps were to identify the construction manager, and then that firm will take everything out to bid and get, get everything in place for the project to actually happen. Um, there are some questions as to whether the scope of this project still fit under the refer referendum definition. It's still a referendum funded project, but it kind of went beyond the duration of the scope of that work. So um, we thought to be safe. We would rebid that out. We had four firms bid on it. We sent it to, I think it was eight, and received four bids. Um, How many BGS people did have left? The winning bid and they were the referendum. I'm nervous that this place cleared also. out. I tried um, to get a hold of a Jamie to ask her how many people docs. left, but I haven't heard from her. Um, they they could be sleeping right now. Fees, They're all fast this is asleep. This $110,000 compared to about oh. $200,000 with the rest of the providers. Um, but then there was an offset on some of the self-reported Oh, Lord, work. when does this end? The total bid came in at $410,000. The next highest was $438,000. And then the two bids from C and D did not bid on the self-performed work. So we identified the lowest of the two costs there to add to their totals to get an idea of what the total cost would be with their bids Neck involved. Neck is cramping also. up. So again, it's a pretty straightforward project um, in scope compared to the other things that BGS managed for the referendum projects. Um, but we wanted to go through and bid this one. Just All right. To I can't handle him anymore. I'm just going to tell you a story. So remember I told you I had to buy my daughter a bathing suit. I was supposed to buy myself some pants with the rants that I got for the pants. And then it turned out that she had to get a bathing suit or one of these one piece bathing suits for gym class and swim team that are expensive. So I had to go all the way to like a sporting goods store and buy a, a one piece bathing suit. Now, this was the instructions that came home from school. We were supposed to buy a one piece bathing suit for swim class. I find her this beautiful bathing suit, but it's like $60. Plus I had to buy her uh, goggles. So that was another 20. So $80 on that. And it was not in the budget. She comes home from her first day at swimming less practice today and says, Mom, I hate to tell you this, but they told us we have to order a specific bathing suit and it's $50. What? Why on earth did they tell us to get bathing suits for them for gym class if they were going to tell us to buy a bathing suit, a different one, for the swim team? Um... Is that fair? It just doesn't seem fair. So now I have to spend another $50? Just, I don't get it. All right. Jess says, I tried ranting via browser on your AM show because I only use mobile app. It wouldn't let me rant via browser. Maybe because I don't have a card tied to DuckDuckGo. Oh, I don't know. What browser are you using? I hear that it works on Chrome. But yeah, right? Wasn't that unfair? Like I just bought a $60 bathing suit and it's perfectly fine. It's navy blue, but they want them to have green and something else. And like, couldn't you have told me that before? Before I went and bought a $60 bathing suit? I mean, it's not like going to go to waste or anything. It's a nice bathing suit. But still, still. Oh, you're using DuckDuckGo, but that's that's not a browser. That's a, a search function. What is your browser? That's not a browser. DuckDuckGo is not a browser. It's a search like Google. So you have to be using a browser to access DuckDuckGo. Right? DuckDuckGo is not like an app on your phone. You go into the browser, which is Safari 
or Chrome or Firefox or whatever that other one is. Uh, there's another one. Clarification. So the Washington Elementary layout oh, is a Lord. north and south playground. We're, now one we're talking about green. playgrounds. Okay, I can't. I can't handle this. Um, I'm just going to look at the chats. So we'll try and figure out this rant thing. Hmm. Oh, God. See, they did. They cleared out the room. Oh, wait. There's some people over there. Maybe they're staying. Well, blue. Okay. Blurple Dragon. Apparently, they do have a vendor I'm supposed to order from, but why didn't they tell me this? A week and a half ago. Why was I told to go buy her a one-piece bathing suit before swimming started, only to then be told, oh, by the way, you have to buy this bathing suit from this place? I don't get it. Rachel says, Temporary, temporarily disabled DuckDuckGo, make the rant and try it that way. I guess, yeah, you should try it that way. Maybe it's blocking you from doing it. Um... Okay, Rachel says, a free and fair education is no longer a thing. My sons cost me three to $500 a year. Yeah, even at public school. Although I, I do have to say at our public school, the sports are still free, except for this bathing suit thing. Apparently, I have to pay for that. Um, but I, I mean, they told me to, to get, a, get, get one, and I did. And they didn't say get this certain bathing suit. Uh, use Brave as a browser and try that. Yeah, DuckDuckGo is just an extension. Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Microsoft Edge are browsers. Right, that's how I understood it. Yeah, Seanette, that's what I was, I was under the impression that they just had to have a modest one-piece racing type of swimsuit. So that's what I bought. And it's perfectly acceptable and it's brand new. I don't understand why I need to go and buy another suit. And I feel bad about it, but... They want them all in matching colors, you know. They should just buy suits at the school. Don't they have extra COVID funds? I mean, we pay so much in property taxes, it is sick, okay? For what we pay in property taxes, the bathing suits should be covered. <laughs> like, honestly, the bathing suits should be free. New York has the highest property taxes in the whole damn country. And we ours are double than they were in Illinois, if you can believe that. And Illinois has, has the second highest in the country. So if the second highest and the high is is half of what the highest is, just imagine how bad it is. Yeah, ish, they used to issue bathing suits. Why don't they just do that? I guess nobody wants to wear the same bathing suit as somebody else. You know, that that could be kind of gross. Um Oh, no. Rachel says, my son was penalized by his geography teacher because I couldn't afford the materials for his volcano. That's just plain wrong. I ended up making it home with him and it had and had it erupt glitter all over his damn classroom. That's good. That's good. All right. What else? I'm looking at the uh, back to rumble. Do we have any more questions over there that you guys need answered? Oh, they're asking for community comments, but I think it was on this topic and nobody cares about this topic. Uh, uh, we mm -hmm. have two hands raised online now. Julie Alexander, you have the microphone. Please state your name and address. Address. Okay. My name is Julie Alexander. I'm at 7224 West State Street, Unit 1A in Wauwatosa. Who the um, hell gives their address I, on these uh, things? Stop doing that, people. I just want to say that um, I know that we talked about this all last March, uh, but I'm a little concerned about seeing the final plans and accessibility issues here. So um, I would, it would be nice to take a look at that a little bit. Um, and I know that uh, the school district uh, said that they'd be working That's with weird, Tay. Uh, our committee. And I haven't I don't seen know why that, that yet. You're so having such a hard I, time. That, that was just my comment. Thank you so much. All right, Tay, I'm going to look you. into this. Come okay, back next to future is, streams uh, and I'll have BJ you figured Amitz, out. You have the microphone. Chrome's not letting you do it. That's a bummer. 
Thank you. This is BJ Ermans, address 2749 North 75th Street, and a member of the uh, Commission for Persons with Disabilities. And I thank uh, Board Member Mufeld for uh, mentioning the fact that there should be some community involvement, but especially for our commission. So I'm also agreeing with the Chair Julie uh, that we have an opportunity to <laughs> look at the plans. Uh, and do they have special pricing for Leah Thomas swimsuits or do the trans kids get those for free? <laughs> That's a very good question. Farron, are you done with your live stream? Do you want to pop in here? There, we're, uh, we're waiting on these people. <laughs> they Here, I'm going to send you an invite just in case. If you can pop in, pop in. <sighs> these people are waiting out the public who want to tell them that they suck. But instead of letting them do it, they shut down public comment and said, oh, you have to wait until the end now. So we've been sitting here for the last, I don't know, how long have we been sitting here? Two hours? Three hours? Well, two hours. Oh, my God. Oh, whoops. I forgot that I had it muted. <laughs> Not that you've missed anything. I think we're you in haven't trouble. missed anything. That's Ms. the good news. Yes. Oh, Ms. Fraley? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Well, they're Dr. finally Jessica voting. Hunter? Yes. Thank God. Dr. Hoyt? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Ms. Willis? Yes. And then Chad loves Baron. Next up is a presentation and action to report, approve the creation of finance and resource Rachel, standing. She board figured it out. Rachel yeah. sent a rant. It is recommended uh, this is a text that the school with the duck, duck go extension enabled. Interesting. And resource so Rachel was able to do it move. with duck, duck go extension okay. enabled, whatever that means. I don't know what that thank means. You. That was quick. Um, but thank you for the rant. Mr. Brightman, Mr. Phillips. I have officially made $1 on this stream tonight. A dollar for three hours, but that's okay. I still love you guys. <laughs> no, wait, someone sent two earlier. It's not just, there was a $2 rant earlier. So I've made $3. I made a dollar an hour tonight. That's okay. It's all right. I forgive yeah, you. I'm sure I'm familiar. It's a tough economy. One dollar. That's okay. Like showing off his. I do this for you. Good. Awesome. Oh, okay. Megan and so, Farron uh, streaming thanks, together uh, couldn't get any better with people who still uh, have their clothes on. <laughs> time. Uh, your comments and suggestions a couple of weeks ago were it's fantastic. Uh, really impactful. What are we and looking I at? Did here? my best to incorporate those into the slide. I guess I need to back up. An opportunity of something that I may have Oh, missed. no, please, it's uh, the finance you know, committee. I want to go back through what, why, and how of the finance and resource committee. Um, and, and then for the folks that were not able to attend uh, a couple of <sighs> weeks ago and then uh, turn it over to you all for for any feedback so they're on, trying uh, so the, hard so lurple dragon right? thanks so for the five dollar super five, chat i love uh, you core too functions of school board all right i've made eight dollars in three hours resource committee really we're up to eight dollars um, <laughs> i told you my grip is terrible that's relationships with our vendors very bad um, at relationships it. with um you know contractors that we use relationships with uh different parts of the school district whether that's um, you know, tech or whether that's recreation department, things like that. And then the other Yes, clicking the PJ the Media core, link uh, is free. It touches is and it helps. So it goes to my paycheck every time you click that link. Um, a reporting structure, um, the ability for a smaller group, a more And nimble, I wrote an article uh, about gays against groomers that I will drop in the chat the board, for you guys. You can go click on that, back that need work, and read um, about Jamie Michelle. Board, really, Michelle, uh, Jamie Michelle, I always say it wrong. It's Michelle. For this committee to review key key things as we work on them and and, and uh, our resources on this on the next slide here, i think i'm going to be on the radio um, uh in these, missouri uh, tomorrow core... let's mute this so my article that i wrote uh that published this morning or last night whenever it was the one about the fake news abortion horror story in missouri well i have some radio appearance in missouri tomorrow this is like my specialty. I find fake news stories that are politically motivated. And then I investigate them the way they should have been investigated by the journalists who are too lazy to do their jobs. And this one was a doozy. So go clickety click on the link that I just dropped in the chat. I just dropped it on YouTube and I'm going to go drop it in Rumble. 
Um, PJ Media does keep track of how often and where the article is shared. I mean, they, they can tell where the clicks come from. I don't know if they can tell where it's shared, but if someone clicks on it from wherever that place is, then yeah, they know where it comes from. So it'll tell them it's from Facebook or Twitter or uh, Rumble because they use Google Analytics, which tell them all those things. Um, but yeah, so that abortion horror story stunt, the political stunt in Missouri is really quite something. And I'll be on the radio in Missouri tomorrow morning, very early, very, very early. I think it's like eight in the morning, seven in the morning, maybe seven or eight, seven Missouri time, eight my time. I will be on St. Louis News Talk STL 101.9 and 94.1 FM. And it's probably going to be like an eight minute spot in case anybody is around Missouri and you're, you, you know what that uh, is. <laughs> oh, tomorrow. I should tell you what's coming up tomorrow because this is very exciting. Tomorrow on this program, uh, you we are going to have Sinead Watson, a detransitioner, on the program. I need to verify with her because uh, I, I booked that like a week ago or two weeks ago, so I hope she remembers. But she is going to be on this program tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And hold on, let me check my calendar because I think I have somebody else. Oh, yeah. Andrew Branca is going to be here at 1 p.m. tomorrow on the live stream to discuss the kerfuffle that he got into with LawTube over, well, with one LawTuber, over a police video, a police shooting. He had a different opinion than one of the LawTubers, um, and it kind of turned into a thing. But I thought we would watch that video with him and have him talk about why he had his opinion that he had. Because when I saw the video, I thought, hmm. I don't know if the police should be shooting at a guy like that, but according to Andrew Branca, they were within their rights, or at least he thinks the argument could be made. So we thought we would talk to him about that. So Sinead Watson will be live with us at 11 a.m. Uh, Andrew Branca will be coming at 1 p.m. It's going to be a great show tomorrow, so do not miss it. And then I don't think I will stream on Wednesday. I need a break because I did literally three live streams today. Uh, but I will definitely, definitely be here tomorrow, and that will be a lot of fun. Lightgiver says, Blaze TV dropped a video on YouTube earlier today. You should hear this father. Ooh, well, I wish we were watching that right now, but we're stuck watching this ridiculous board meeting at, and the Finance Reserve Committee in uh, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, because they shut down public comment before it could really get started. Jess Wag, you did it. You sent a rumble rant. Thank you for the $5. She says, yes, it's my first rant ever. Megan, you popped my cherry. Ew. <laughs> LOL. Good work. Hey, and what am I up to now? That would be uh, $13. Hey, it's almost worth it. <laughs> 13 bucks for three hours. You know what? It's better than two. I will take it. Um. So Edge worked for you, Jess? Was it Edge that worked? Okay, let's see. Uh-oh, somebody's here. Somebody's here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Is this Hello? the eight-hour hookah? Hello, how are you? I have COVID. <laughs> I heard. Oh, my God. Yeah. How did you get COVID? Where'd you I get was it? In, um, I was in Detroit all week last week for my new work orientation. Yeah, and um, I was exposed to like three people that didn't know that they had it, oh. and um, like Thursday, Friday, I was like working around the clock doing like three or four different stories, um, mm -hmm. and then was um driving driving home and like just I was like God, I'm starting to feel like shit, and then boom, yeah, I am so sorry. Iron That's dog, one of these things. 
Iron Dog, thanks for the, the super chat. 20 bucks. Ooh. That's huge. I never send super chats as a general rule. However, I'm making an exception because your dedication and perseverance in exposing this filth and the grooming issues deserves a reward, even this modest one. Thank you very much. And Light Giver was right behind you with another 20. I appreciate it because this Canadian loves you and I'm donating for your pants. Rants for pants. Rants for pants. Rants for I, pants. I've, I've shrunk out of all my pants, Farron. Uh, That's amazing. So, it's good, except every time I go to buy pants, my kids need something. So I have to buy them stuff. Or the car breaks down. Or there's a flood in the bathroom. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just, it's unfortunate. I'm going to have to go to like the Goodwill and pick up a, a pair of like $3 pants. So I'm not walking around with my pants around my my uh, ass. Um, I'm so sorry you have COVID. How's it going? I was going to say, okay? damn, like what size are you? Because if, if you're tiny, you probably fit into mine from high school. You just have to I'm not them. tiny anymore, <laughs> but I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm back to size eight, which is amazing. Oh, damn. Uh, Cause I haven't been in an what, eight. What's your secret? In 20, almost 20 years, 15 years, 16 years. Mm -hmm. Well, I told you my secret is uh, that they changed my medication for ADD and suddenly I get the message that I'm full. So I eat like a normal person now instead of like a ravenous beast. What what medication did they change it to? Well, I was on that methylphenidate stuff, which has terrible side effects, and I didn't like it at all. So I mm -hmm. asked them to change it, and they put me on Vyvanse. And the stuff is like a miracle, I'm telling you. No side effects except weight loss. Damn. So it's great. And then I've just been eating. The one that I'm on, I don't like it. I need a different one. I'm just eating better stuff. I'm eating like... Mm -hmm. Although I kind of like plateaued after 25 pounds. So it's like I lost 25 and then I went down a couple more and then came back up to 25. Um, and I'm just kind of staying there. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I, I'm 25 pounds lighter and I feel good. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So what's going on at the school board meeting, by the way, if I had okay. a dollar for the amount of school board meetings that I've had to go to, too, <sighs> folks. They're good so Lord. boring. And what these people did is so awful, Farron. So it started out and they let the public start making their comments, but it wasn't mm -hmm. going well for the board. And the, and the public was all like, why are you giving porn to kids and you're bad people and stop doing that? Where in Wisconsin is this? Uh, Wauwatosa. Oh, and okay. gays, for, gays Against Groomers are there. Moms for Liberty are there. Like it's a big mm -hmm. event. They even had a protest outside uh, beforehand, which, oh my God, hilarious. Uh, we had Jamie Michelle on the show. She walked up to these counter protesters, these white women holding gay flags. And Jamie's a lesbian. She's like, are you gay? Are you gay? And the woman's like, you know, you can be an ally and not be gay. She's like, so you're not gay. You're not gay. You're holding this flag. You're not gay. I'm gay. But you're oh, speaking God. for me. You're out here like trying to trans the kids and put this gross, explicit sex ed in, in my name. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Oh no, yeah. porn bots are back. Hey girl. We don't care about your hot photo. No. Ooh, I and do. so so I'm like three, three, <laughs> maybe they had like what? Guys in the chat. What do they have? Like three people who who spoke? And then the board was like, well, we're shutting it down now. Oh, okay. Uh, because we're waiting till the end. We need we have business to get to. So you can come yeah. back afterwards uh, and you can have your public comment then. So then yeah, now they're just, we don't work to... for you at, at all anymore. Oh. We, we only work for us. Mm -hmm. If I had been in that, in that meeting, I would have protested that. I would have said, absolutely not. You're doing, mm -hmm. you're doing public comment now. Let's, let's go. Yeah. We, we pay you to do this. Actually, yeah. you get a salary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so they're going to make them wait two hours before they can have their comments. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, and also they try to intimidate Jamie Michelle, she lives in Wisconsin, but she doesn't live in Wauwatosa or wherever the hell this is. Mm -hmm. And they tried to make her say her address. And it was like they knew who she was before because they're like, where she did you should have gone the Alex Stein method. Have you ever watched Alex Stein? Oh, yeah. I love Alex Stein. What does he, he say gives, when they ask for his he address? He always gives an address that's in the county. He oh, gives, yeah. You he, gives, like, he gives the address like a Taco Bell. Yeah, Taco Bell. You mm -hmm. can just lie. They don't have a right to ask you. Yeah. where you live it's yeah. it's intimidation and they have they have uh won this in court before like this has been in court 
So these people are still talking. They kiss each other's asses. They've been kissing each other's asses since they shut down the public comment. Oh, you're so wonderful, Sally. And we just love your calendar. And the calendar is just exactly like giver. That's doxing. I told Jamie next time she needs to say, you will not dox me on the internet. Not no, giving there's, there's no requirement by law that I have to give my address, bitch. Sorry. No. No. So I have them muted because all they're doing is ass kissing one another. And mm -hmm. we're just waiting to get back to the public comment because uh, it's just crazy. So yeah, actually tonight on the uh, debate, you had DeSantis and Chris. They had a whole section where they went through the whole child grooming and the HRT stuff. Yeah. And Charlie Crist kept trying to revert it back to a woman's right to choose. Yeah. And DeSantis was like, no, like we need to bring it back to like the schools. And like, we're not <laughs> talking about abortion. We talked about that already. Yeah. No, um, Charlie Chris is a former Republican who was a governor of Florida. So-called Republican. Yeah. In name only. But he was a governor of Florida um, who did not win his reelection. So then he went to the Democratic Party. But he's in Congress right now that hasn't done shit. DeSantis um, showed how in the 100 and um, 35 days that they're required to be there. He only served 14. He was only in DC for 14 days. And oh, he's geez. like, how would, he's like, how would you like that as your governor? Jeez. I mean, like, it's just, he exposed him for everything and it was glorious. Um, then there was a point where Charlie Chris tried to get DeSantis on by saying, um, <coughs> he was like, do you commit to serving four years? And DeSantis is like, we can't ask each other questions. Like, I can't answer you. He's like, yeah. did you not read the rules of the debate? Yeah. He's like, but do you commit to serving four years? And they looked at the moderator. He's like, is it my turn to talk now? Then she's like, yeah. And he goes, yeah. He goes, the only thing that I'm worried about is uh, trying to make sure that like this old, like, um, like this old worn out. Um, uh, oh God. What was the term that he used? He's like, he's like this old worn out like dingbat i'm only worried about getting this old worn out dingbat out of office and it's the guy right across from me he's like that's the only thing that i'm worried about for the next four years and then the media proceeds to come on and say that he never answered the question it's like no he did answer the question he said the only thing he's worried about for the next four years is getting this old dingbat or no he said putting this old cow out to pasture he said, I'm only worried about putting one old cow out to pasture and it's the guy right across from me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was a great debate. Um, oh, worn out, worn out old donkey. Thank you. I thought worn out old call. I cow sniped donkey. your stream while we were waiting for the uh, for this meeting to start for a little bit. What part did um, you jump in on? It was kind of boring. Uh, they What were they talking? I don't even know what they were talking about. I've forgotten now. Um, but what gets me is that DeSantis, I love DeSantis when he's in front of the press, but I feel like during a debate, he kind of reverts to that, that stiff politician thing that they do. And it makes me miss the, it makes me miss the bully, the bully DeSantis. You know, I, I like you know, the, I your fake news was, DeSantis. You know, what I think a lot of it was, and I totally agree with you because I think Carrie Lake is like this where she just doesn't give a shit. Yeah, I prefer that in my so So tonight was the only debate they've ever done. My dad was like, I watched them do a date, a date before. I'm like, okay, no, then you're getting senile. They've only done one, and they're only going to do one. Tomorrow night is Dr. Oz and Fetterman, if you want to hop on for that one. That one's going to be good, because that's going to be all oh, about his stamina. Oh, that's tomorrow night? You know, I might yeah. do that, because I don't think I'm streaming tomorrow. I, I Oh, no, tomorrow I'm streaming during the day, but not tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night is going to be good. Tomorrow I've got... Uh, Andrew Brank is coming on at I heard. Uh, 1 p.m. Also, Sinead Watson, I can't wait to talk to her. She's a detransitioner that is just awesome, and I love her, and I can't wait for that. But, yeah, so it's uh, Fetterman and Oz. But mm -hmm. see, that race is so weird because Oz, Dr. Oz, like, is he for real? Like, he just seems like a, I don't know. Let me tell like you, he, Hollywood he kinda... barely won that primary only because of Trump. Right. Um. I mean, he hasn't really, I mean, a lot of the candidates, they haven't lived in Pennsylvania for very long. I watched the whole Republican primary debate on my way home from Detroit on Friday and, um, or on Saturday. And a lot of the, a lot of the candidates, they do, don't live in Pennsylvania full time. You have one where she was, 
um, an ambassador to Denmark who was gone like the last four years under Trump. You had McCormick that was going to and from China for business shit. You had then um, Oz, who is in New Jersey. You had the only guy, it was hit, it was a guy, Jeff something, and another girl, Kathy Barnett, who were like the only two that were like actually in Pennsylvania and served in the state house. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's gonna, he's looked at as a, as a carpet bagger. I mean, Fetterman really is going to have to be on it the entire time. Cause if there's any, if there's one health issue that shows mm -hmm. then voters will go to Dr. Oz, but Dr. Oz better be on it because if Fetterman doesn't show any health issues, they're going to stay with Fetterman. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be, I mean, the poll is so tight. Um, well, I'm getting yeah. excited about the New York race, to tell you the truth, because Kathy Hochul, apparently Lee Zeldin has closed the gap and is mm -hmm. polling ahead of her, even by a slight margin, which is kind of amazing. I don't want to get too excited, though, because I always get disappointed in New York. But people do seem to be very upset here. But again, I'm not I'm not saying it's going to happen. Get out and vote, people, because it's going to be a squeaker. Um, and then in Michigan. Apparently, Tudor Dixon has pulled close to Whitmere, too. But yeah. you know what? Here's the problem that I don't think anybody should get excited about that either. Uh, because we what we have here is, oh, wait, what are they doing? I have to check this meeting. What are they doing? Is this a person speaking? Hold on. Let me see. Uh, I had to take the volume out because it was driving me crazy in my ears. Wait, how do I do this? What did I do now? Oh, yeah, join audio. No, there, you yeah, know, nothing. Okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so here's the thing with Whitmer and Tudor Dixon. So people on the ground in Michigan keep telling me that they didn't think Tudor Dixon was a good candidate, not the Republicans in Michigan. And they wanted to run somebody who was less MAGA, more, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I guess you would say moderate or whatever. But right. Trump refused and has refused all over the country to support any candidate that isn't his. Right. Which I got to say, I don't know how smart that is. You have to support um, the candidate who can gamble. win. Mm -hmm. Well, if she wins, then we'll see how smart it is. I mean, if right. she actually pulls it out and she wins, well, then, you know, I'll be 100% behind it. But I, this is one of my issues with Trump is that he won't deal on some of these things. And he backs people sometimes that, and I don't know anything about Tudor Dixon. So I'm not saying, I, I don't know if she's a good candidate or not, but he will back. She's, people like, a, she's like a watered down Carrie Lake. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. like he backs people sometimes that I think. Good. I don't think, ba I don't her. think backing Dr. Oz was a good idea. Either do I. It's like, that's the perfect example. Like you could have found somebody who would have been more, um, a, you know, accessible to people who are Republicans or conservatives who aren't going to be thinking, I don't want this Hollywood guy, you know, like what's mm -hmm. this Hollywood guy going to do? Like the guy was Oprah's doctor. Like, what do you think he's going to be like? He's, he's a fraud. Most likely, most likely he's, he's a lefty like everybody else, but Trump has these ideas that he has to have his people. And I don't so think he's a they, good if, judge of character. What I keep saying, <coughs> if they were smart, what they should have done, they should have ran Oz for uh, governor of New York. Oh, if they, geez. If, they, if they if they were smart, because he could have gone in there as a moderate and Maybe. as a New Jersey guy and ran on um, taking a tough stance on crime and all the COVID shit and how Cuomo did terrible because Oz was very, very um, uh, tough on Cuomo for how he handled COVID. And I was like, that, that'd be the perfect transition. Yeah, and he went to Pennsylvania, and I was like, "All right." Yeah, that, and the that's thing is, yeah, he's he's a World Economic Forum member too. He just got a lot of stuff in his bag that's just not not Trump esque at all. Um, and I think, and I question the people for name recognition. I question the people that Trump um, trusts because he doesn't have good 
instincts. Like he keeps on. I mean, the first person he brought in when he didn't, when he said he wanted to drain the swamp was John Bolton. I was like, you literally I know. brought the swamp back. You brought the swamp back. Like yeah. he, you, he didn't clean out any of those Obama holdovers. He didn't get rid of um, anybody in the, like the generals and the military that, that should have gone who mm -hmm. were Obama appointees. He didn't do any of that. And then he hired people like Omarosa what and you mm -hmm. thought she wasn't gonna turn on you is that a joke i mean i just i think he has bad taste in um in in people that he hires i think he has very bad bad instincts when mm -hmm. it comes to those people and so i don't necessarily trust him either when it comes to uh candidates that he's putting his name on and backing because it's like well i don't know i know everybody loves marjorie taylor green i really don't and I'm not saying that I dislike her, but I think that what she does and like kind of her persona is not very helpful. Um, and I think there are some things that she's done that I think are, you know, good and she's pretty courageous and stands up to a lot of it, but some of it's really dumb. So I don't know. What, I don't, what know. don't you like that you think has been dumb? Just I'll, I'll be, I'll be real with you. Persona. I used to not like her. I used to yeah. not like her at all. Now I love her. Do you? I loved her ever since she stuck she stuck her neck out there and said, why in the hell are we giving all this money to Ukraine? She was one of the first people, her and Tim Massey. Well, and that's true. And I, I agree with that 100%. And if anybody who set, comes out and says it, I'm with them. Um, now, do, I think she's, do I think she's nuts as far as like, you know, oh my God, name my name, my name, my name, my guns. Like, do I think that's yeah. like a little much? Yeah, but I'm also not from Georgia. But when I'm going to talk strictly on voting issues, and I'm not seeing anybody asking questions about Ukraine except her, who's the crazy one. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm at least glad that she's crazy because I know that she can't be bought. She doesn't give a shit what people think. You know, same with Tim Massey, who's <clears throat> congressman from Colorado. Super, super smart dude. Engineer. Very libertarian. Was like, I'm not. He just started following me on Twitter. I thought that was weird. No, he's a he's an awesome dude. He's actually one of the candidates or one of the congressmen that I want to interview interview first because he came in as a freshman. I want to say two or four years ago. I can't remember. And him and Rand Paul are like this, and they they are the ones that question a lot of our finance. And I like Rand Paul a lot. A lot. I love Rand. I I used to interview Ron all the time on my show. I love him. Um, I miss him. Um, but uh, it was it was a funny story. Um, I don't know if I told you this or not, but Dan. Um, um, Daniel McAdams was his chief of staff for the entire time that um, Ron Paul was in office. Uh, Rand Paul's dad. Yeah. And I used to interview him all the time and, you know, talk. And there was one time where I was like, hey, I was like, talk to me about the first day in, in Congress. Like, what was it like? And he was like, oh, he's like, I'll tell you exactly. It's like me and Ron, it, it's etched in our brains. He's like, it was a House Armed Services Committee. Because it was anybody, you know, House Armed Services used to be where if it was you were an active military or a military veteran and, you know, you were on that armed services stuff, you know, like the Judiciary Committee, you got to be a lawyer. Um, before this is before those positions were bought in the early 90s. And he's like, so we go into this meeting. He's like, and we're sitting there. He's like, and Ron's got these like that got this binder of all these things that he wants to look at as far as the financing for veterans and all this other stuff. He goes, we sit down and Ron's like, Hey, you know, I want to start with this, this one motion that was passed, you know, last year. And they all like kind of got quiet and they were like, Ron, we literally just meet and gab here. Like we're not focused on like getting anything done here. Oh no. And he said that he looked so defeated. Aw. And he said, that's when we realized like, wow they really do do nothing they really don't do anything you know, yep. we, you know what they do i heard one congressman a new congressman um i don't remember who it was at the time but he had a story where he went in for his first day and was all excited to like do lawmaking and found out that what he was expected to do was get on the phone and fundraise yep and his entire job was to get on the phone and fundraise all day long every day and if he didn't hit a certain number it's just like a sales job and I just find that to be so gross. And Farron, I got one question for you. Why couldn't <laughs> why couldn't these people have used a picture of me smiling? Why do I look like I'm giving a lecture? Well, why am I the one with dark hair and Star yeah. Wars girl got the blonde hair? She's got the dark hair. It's weird. It's we it's I, I think this is actually hilarious and it could be really good. 
but they got it switched around. First of all, I look like I'm giving some kind of angry lecture. And it's all it also says Nikki's angles on it, which is a misspelling. Uh, somebody, it's a said, whole somebody said, uh, um, somebody said, um, equilateral, obtuse, and, and acute. An acute. <laughs> I'm the acute one. <laughs> I'm the acute one. <laughs> You're obtuse. <laughs> I must be obtuse then. And it, yeah. The, um, uh, where did it go? Somebody sent me a fixed one, except it's too blurry. It doesn't work because it's blurry. Wait, hold on. Where'd it go? Oh, Joe, Joe Nierman might be coming to the uh, debates tomorrow night, too. Oh, yeah, good. So That'll Betterman be Oz fun. Debate, Betterman Oz debate is going to be really good. Well, maybe. Or maybe I'll just be bored by it. I don't know. I'm. Do you think he's going to have to drain his little thing in the middle of it? They oh, say there's God. like a lot of buildup. What are you talking about? Like from his head, from the stroke the or whatever? Stint. The stint. He's got like a stint. Oh, God. Yeah. I just don't understand. Should he legitimately there... looks like he's, he looks there like There should a... be rules about this. Rules, I tell you. We need rules about health and politics. We need people to like actually have rules about this, mm -hmm. about age limits and you know, if you're not in good health, like Joe Biden should never have been allowed anywhere near the button. Hello. Did you see him fall asleep on Sunday? <laughs> All right. So here's one with a smiley face and she changed the name. She changed the word to angels. So it actually works, but it's too blurry. So we need like the original one with, mm -hmm. with an actual smiley face. Look at this. I look like I'm lecturing. What? You're like, you're like excuse me. It's I have the biggest tits in the picture. I'm like, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. Yeah. Excuse me. There's a, there's a misspelling. <laughs> yes. Why do I look so serious? And everyone else is laughing. We're women. Let us speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. That was oh, so boy. funny, though. That oh, that, so that's funny. stream, man. Oh, that was so good, right? Finally, I watched it the day after because I finally opened up on her. Well, she had somebody was like, "Oh man, they're like he he um." He, somebody said something like, "Oh yeah, he got he pulled a ferret and got too drunk and said how he feels." And I was like, "No, no, no! Pulling a ferret <gasps> is getting too drunk and doing a dance move. You think you can't see your ass? <laughs> <laughs> like a ferret. putting your your ankles in your head in the same uh, frame, yeah." yeah. And did I ever tell you that I thought that you literally couldn't see my ass? I thought you were just going to see my legs fly up, but that was not the case at all. <laughs> Luckily, I think I stopped playing it before we got to that part, so oh. it's not on one of my streams. Because I was like, "Wait a minute, I'm I'm backing out of this. Let's not watch this just in case." Oh uh -huh. no, but um, no, but uh, no, and I I could not agree with them more. I talked about it a little bit this morning on my locals. I was just like. Girl, you had like 10 people tell you, even her first video where she was like, a lot of people have advised me not to do this. It's like, so then why are you doing this? Like, if I have one person that's like, I consider a really good friend to be like, maybe it's like, you should like, hey, girl, this. like, do you think that's a good idea? Like, if they're questioning me, <laughs> I'm going to question it. If I have two friends that are like, you probably shouldn't do this. If I have 10, oh, wait. I'm definitely not. We're back. It's back. Here we go. Assistant. My hangover um, is huge that day, by the way. Less focus time for both my son and his peer. Um, we also learned just recently that his special ed teacher is resigning and moving to another school district, putting further strain um, on the staff that's already strained, um, and meaning um, you know less uh, less um, services that are provided to my son and to um, to his peers. Um, this holding the wage and and um oh, know, this may be unrelated the to the curriculum filling these open positions does mean that disadvantaged students remain at an even further disadvantage um, and that the strained employees remain even more strained um i would uh why does it always like seem like the, the board it's always rethink, strained um and reevaluate uh -huh. raising the wages sooner they get and, so much money but they're always under financial stress. Return, which I think was um, yeah earlier, 
uh, to make sure that After we gave ourselves a lot of pay own. raises on the administrative side. World, right. Assistant that is working with my son and, and the staff that work with him throughout the day. Um, and really want to make yeah, sure a lot of empty chairs because people, people got given, up and gave up. You know, they didn't want to they have jobs in the morning. He's yeah. Um, again, but most or they have to maybe go take care of their kids while their um, husband goes so to the night shift. Yeah, so right. So it worked. Thank you so much for being here tonight. They got rid of the people who Frickin came assholes. to speak. All right, here comes somebody. Oh, I love black dads. Please be good. He's like, I'm taking this shit. My name is Bill Brewer. I live in the Slinger School District. Um, I want to first of all say thank you for allowing members outside of your school district to make public comment. It's really appreciated. So um, earlier, this is Muehlfeld. Is that, I say that right? You made a comment about What's your name, how a picture bitch? really provides <laughs> additional or <laughs> the, you know, needed perspective when you're talking about the playgrounds and that sort of thing. I couldn't agree more. Um, I came tonight because I'm really troubled oh, and I'm start troubled with positive. primarily, at, at least at the start, by an illustration, an illustration from your human growth and development curriculum for five-year-olds to see explicit female genitalia. Oh, God. And even with an X at the most critical place, a local news reporter tonight said, I can't even show that to the he public. Did. Sure when I did. see an illustration like that, that provides me with perspective. And I'm going to ask each of you and the parents in this community and the students to really search yourself for this. What's the purpose of that illustration? Is it to teach accurate biology to five and six year olds? Or is it something else? <laughs> I think you need that kind of an illustration to teach accurate biology. It's not going to be used for that any more than teaching white privilege in that myth helps you to teach accurate history about our nation. And that's coming from a black guy. It's a folly. He must be a white supremacist. The purpose Mary. behind that illustration is to desensitize kids. <laughs> Thank to you. What should be taught at later ages at a more appropriate time. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to build on that for a five and six year old, I have to ask myself, what's next? Do I need to see what else is next to know what the goals are by the time that child becomes a graduate of that same school district? And all that time, some of the most formative years, we've desensitized these kids to accept as I wonder now what normal. This guy's job is. Not normal. And that is exposure to this stuff. It also points me to the abdication, unfortunately, that so many parents in our nation have had giving up their God-given rights and authorities as, as parents to teach these kinds of things to their kids in the privacy of their own homes. Yes. That's not an advocate. 30 seconds. Thank you very much. It's not an advocation to hide it. Well, at this all. guy should run for something. It's parents' responsibility yeah. to teach those things. It's the school district's responsibility if you're given that privilege to conduct technical education for these kids and not social education, not desensitization sexualization, desensitizing, and those sorts of things. So I'm asking you to search your souls. Don't worry about policies. Search your hearts. Ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Right time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate or it. this is what comes next. Unacceptable. <laughs> Shame on you. Mm -hmm. We need more of him. Hello, school board members. I like him, though. Amy White, and Me I too. live um, at 68th. He looks like a football Street coach, high school village. football coach. Thank you for allowing additional comments at the end of the meeting tonight. I was tired, as we all are, but you do this all the time. So I thought oh, that I you. could hop off a of Zoom and drive here um, and provide some public comment. As I've shared before, I was on the external committee to reevaluate the HGD curriculum. Thank you for approving it. The process was long and all parents were emailed the opportunity to participate last November, almost a full year ago now. Oh, a okay. Reminder for some I know it needs to come in here now already. The families can opt out of any individual lesson Shame. or all lessons. Shame. This has always been the case. So this is a teacher. For parents who have been in this district uh -huh. for at least a year, they know that a handout for parents to review and sign. Because you missed it last November. You're not allowed to have an opinion and about it for now. Is sent by email weeks prior. Oh, last November when no one was there. Reminders. Yeah. So this has happened. Well, this guy's like, oh, fuck this bitch. Yeah. He's like, I'm getting ready. Um, 
Um, Shame. It was like, yeah, I can look at my phone too. Shame. It was outdated, and I think that the Shame. outcome is a good one. This is a public school district that bases its decisions on hardworking committees and experts <laughs> and parents she and she looks teachers like a and doctors and workers and disability <laughs> rights activists and a pastor. And that's not a comprehensive list. And a pastor. I know the content of this curriculum and I support it. I'd Confess. rather have one of our amazing Wauwatosa teachers <laughs> who choose to teach this curriculum present this fact-based scientifically sound information, then leave it up to chance that the information they're exposed to online through social media or discord servers, which we all know middle schoolers are on, that that might be okay. I trust well, my friend's more. kids are not on discord. Servers. I am most upset, frustrated and sad. However, that extremist oh, no. groups the guy in the back, or even people external to Wauwatosa school district are targeting our school board meetings. And I support you as a board if you decide to put more stringent guidelines for oh, public attendance and oh. conversation in place, mm -hmm. such as requiring a Wauwatosa address via driver's you license can't do that. or an electric bill or tax bill, no, just like we do, do as parents when we need to re-enroll our kids every year in the district that's illegal um, to be able to enter this room and speak. Do you let your kids wear your pussy works. hat you wore six the years ago? Has to check this, <laughs> but um, the some of the extremist group tonight heckled and hassled the local crowd members prior to the meeting. <laughs> oh. Not good. And made an older elementary school kid cry. It was oh. awful and scary. And I urge you to consider ways to kidding? limit the involvement of these harassing extremist groups that are external to our district and our city. Thank you. Thank Look you. at the black guy. It's like, yeah, this guy's like, all right, bitch, sit the fuck down. And there's that outside. I wasn't going to speak. About Excuse me, can you share your address? Oh, no. Uh, I'm Milwaukee. I'm uh, Milwaukee. Did uh, you say Milwaukee Avenue? Yeah. No, I'm Milwaukee. No, the city. Oh, so not from Wauwatosa. And not from Charleston. And I thank you for giving me the time. I wasn't going to speak, but I wanted to counter what was uh, just said. Uh, the opt out option is not available for everything in the external and internal uh, curriculum development. Uh, committees, uh, they take various topics, pink and uh, yellow, uh, which uh, were available for intern or uh, they call them a uh, universal, uh, which make it uh, them topics that can be brought up mainly. And I think this paper say social studies in English. Uh, so there aren't opt out features on that. Um, uh, there's also I want to bring up and uh, this will be uh, more to Mr. Meyer. <clears throat> uh, the a definition that the uh, curriculum I uh, used was uh, for equity. I don't think he's nervous. I think he's got to if, uh, You've heard it before yeah. because I didn't see your name on the uh, uh, slideshows. The constant act of everyone engaging in purposeful educational social justice leadership to disrupt acts of injustice, dress. dismantle systems of oppression, marginalization, and produce disparities. Yeah, I think it's Now, from watching just... the videos, I can tell you politics agree with that part. That, uh, but as a lawyer, I want to point you to uh, two, uh, two main things. The constant act of everyone. Uh, so this is a totalizing uh, critique, or it's a totalizing mission everyone into alignment on a political view in the entire school district while the state DPI, <laughs> while the state uh, DPI uh, talks about a, a diverse uh, viewpoint uh, base in schools. And if you haven't heard the uh, terminology social justice leadership before, social justice leadership is the practice of keeping social justice as a main focus uh, to eliminate the, the discrimination based on a number of identity groups. And therefore, the search mission is to keep social justice at the center of everything. Sir, until just, just a support. moment. I want to make sure. I would ask that you not address any specific school board member that you address. That is also as illegal. As myself as chair. He can okay. say sorry, whatever chair. he wants okay. uh, so mm -hmm. about whoever he wants. A leadership means that, uh, centering social justice for or everything, on like everything. And you, uh, your district uh, mission is to eliminate inequity. That means bringing everyone on board politically. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to understand lawyer. what he said, but mm -hmm. I, I think I understood. This is about politics, is what he's saying. You're trying to force a political agenda on everybody. Seeing no other public comment in the room? Yeah, because they waited everybody out. We have three hands raised. BJ Ermitz, you have the microphone. Please state your name and address. 
Thank you very much. I am BJ Ermans, 2749 North 75th Street and member of the Commission for Persons with Disabilities. I'm very glad to hear how inclusive the school board is being regarding asking for community input, I'm gonna uh, speak. especially uh, in oh, really? the yeah. abilities group. Okay, how can I get in? Things such as uh, the new playgrounds. You have I to would be in on the that, Zoom. Uh, You're on the private send it in the private chat. Or possibly okay. even before it's in the private considering chat. outside groups that you uh, not on, not make it a point here. to reach out to okay, the internal groups who focus on some of these areas, such as the Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Um, I highly respect the work that the Abilities Group is doing. One point I would like people to remember is that they focus on mobility issues only. Uh, and that is admirable. That is a huge area and they're accomplishing wonderful things. However, they are not considering other disabilities, which our commission does keep in mind. Things such as uh, people with disabilities, even to the point of full blindness. There are services, for example, that make it difficult for them to transverse with their canes. Uh, and this includes playgrounds. So I would ask that you uh, please keep us in mind when these things are I think are I'm getting COVID up. all of a sudden. And I'm especially coughing. with the newly approved Finance and Resources Committee, especially since they are not only dealing with facilities. And to that end, I would make a point of saying that some of the facilities are also used as polling places, and we need to keep some of those needs in mind when we're talking um, about it for people with disabilities, as well as technology. And technology has come a long way, but in some cases, uh, people out on the internet are not doing as well as they might for helping with screen readers that are required by people with vision loss, just as one example. So please keep our commission in mind going forward. And thank you very much for all that you do and the careful thought that you put into everything that, that, you, that you do do and decide. Thank you. Okay, next is Scott Shelnut. You have the microphone. Please state your name and address. Hi there, uh, Scott Shelnut, 815 Glenview Avenue, apartment four. Um, so first off, the board members, I don't know how you guys do it, dealing with all this BS from oh, all these people. Ass kissing. That aren't even from Wauwatosa. Some of them were respectful tonight. Others were batshit crazy. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, He's the only one that swore. But this is ridiculous for me to sit here and, and watch these online. And I left without too much there, reverb. From the other people. But um, I want to applaud you for the you know, good choices that you've been making and moving the curriculum curriculum forward groomer pedophile uh, some of the here. stuff talked about tonight i mean there's infinite i mean the whole grooming narrative and i don't know how you know some of these people <clears throat> show up and just create so much tension and so much there's so much hate there's so much hate that was there tonight um oh, i didn't hear and i just hate. don't understand the attacks and why people keep targeting wauwatosa um, and I guess don't let the, <coughs> the loud few, you know, uh, upset you guys. Cause again, uh, you do this all the time. I don't know how you do it. I guess I'll have to run for school board to, to so see what it's all about. Kissing. Apparently there's, where are you going? Uh, I don't know. Some excitement to when it. They call me, I guess. But, um, I would say to anyone that is there tonight or listening or, to do some of their own research online, especially for some of these people that spoke tonight that are just so far out there. Is he telling them to research um, citizens? I really encourage people to actually the look at the human growth development. I'm looking at it right now and I can't find any of these uh, 
horrific things that people keep talking about because I believe they're just hearing it secondhand and not doing research. There's a question, sir. Do you have kids? And uh, that's unfortunate that, again, our school board has to listen to this month after month after month of people who share something on social media, they read a headline, and magically they're an expert. I mean, all these people are experts. Um, So, again, thank you for all that you do. And I'm sorry again for the few hateful people that spoke tonight. Thank you. Okay, Thank next you. next is uh, Deb Falk Palak. You have the microphone. Whoops. Did you raise sorry. your hand? Um, yeah. Deb just disappeared. Oh, she's oh, there you are. Her hand okay. again. Deb Falk Palak, you have the microphone. Please state your name and address. I just want to be like, he doesn't even go here. I pulled my (laughs) hand down too quick. Um, Hi again, Deb Falk Palak. Um, First of all, I really liked what Mr. Phillips laid out about the Finance and Resource Committee and how to notify the um, community. And just if, if we could have some idea of how we can see minutes from legislative advocacy and the (laughs) policy committee. Thanks, Ms. Fraley. I know you said you were going to work on getting those. And um, I know one of my fellow PTA council officers is on. What qualifies you as an expert? To be able to share that at our council meeting next week, um, what's happening to see how we can support some of these. I will give you $20 if you say, by the way, please go to megadfox.locals.com and donate to the brands for pants. I will. I'll totally do it. I will give you $20. You know, his committee, he (laughs) would would, um, start to share those things. And I wanted to talk about, um, I'm really happy to see that we're on this (laughs) review cycle now or getting on a review cycle of curriculum. And I saw (laughs) science is up uh, first. And I, I, I really, really want to make sure that when we're looking at any curriculum, whether it's science, social studies, math, what have you, that we are looking at the materials the district has for children who take the alternate, alternate curriculum. Um, my only issue that I've brought up with the human growth and development was the fact that there was no evidence that this was looked at that the materials from 1988 seem to have been okay. And we did not look at other curriculum that is more current and out there. So when- I'm reading the Open Meetings Act right now. to the board or administration, so I can get caught at, up. You know, don't even mm-hmm. wait until that point where I know several they are, members of the community have to bring it. forward, what about us? Um, let's make sure that us includes all of us, not 98% of kids, not 99% of kids, but all of children when we look at the curriculum. Got to need some lastly, water for all this bread. This is National oh. Disability Employment Awareness Month. If you've been on the board or in, in administration, you've heard me talk about this. Um, um, and this year's theme, the national theme is disability, part of the equity equation. And I would love to encourage our administrators to look at the website. There's a lot of good information for schools, how schools can um, celebrate um, persons with disabilities and see people with disabilities as future members of the employment sector. So, um, or even getting down to in human resources, who are we, are, are we looking to diversify our applicant pool by reaching out and what is this working Why? with organizations She's well to find time. qualified applicants with disabilities. Yeah, I know. Do we know She's who those organizations like are six. to reach out to? Um, if not, you know, once again, this okay, bye. Thank you. Ability gets bye. Yeah, we district, Thank you, God. <clears throat> okay, next is. Um, Julie Alexander, you have the microphone. Please state okay. your name and address. Do you need an address for Taco Bell? I, okay, I don't no. have the microphone. No, I'm going to yell at them uh, about the address. Do you hear thing. me? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to educate them about the law. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, They're intimidating uh, first people. First off, I just really want to say that uh, I have really been enjoying lately the discussions that all of the board has been 
uh, going through. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everyone being a participant and being on the board here. Um, and uh, I just really uh, appreciate each of you. So I just want you to know oh, that. God, more ask uh, I, <sighs> on the other hand, I, I also want to let you know that I'm really happy that you're looking at the a finance committee as, as well as approving the other committees, because I think that that will help improve uh, the board in terms of uh, helping them really be able to uh, provide the services that they need to and keep on track with finance and benefits for the district. Uh, I know that uh, basically um, I'm also thinking about the mother uh, that talked uh, talked about the need for um, for increased pay for special ed special ed assistance, et cetera here. And I really uh, would like you to possibly think about that because I know this year we're, we're, we're having more and more people with special needs that are in the district. Uh, and it's, it's a daunting, it's a daunting issue. And I know that the budget is tight, but just to think about that and sort of see if there's a way of doing something this year would be helpful. Uh, and uh, good God. Also, uh, I, this is Disability Awareness Empowerment Month um, and uh, really looking at people with disabilities as being part of the equity equ equation here. Uh, for the administration on, on, on down would be great. 76% uh, of people with disabilities are not employed. So it's a big issue. And we've, as, uh, as the commission that I work for, for Wautosa, you know, we're really looking at that as a, that is an issue as well, but it's just, I mean, the school has a part in this too. So I'm just trying to see if there's a way of, seeing if we can make a little bit of a dent of some sort. So uh, thank you so much for listening to my comments and I hope every one of you have a nice evening. Me to sleep. Jamie, I see we've got one more person online then I'm gonna come back and see if there's anybody. Is it me? Request, if anybody's got something awesome that they wanna share with the community and things going on, uh, lots of cool things happening uh, at East and West in the middle schools, lots of music and theater and athletics. Um, so if anybody wants to, we'll swing back anybody in the room if you have going to brag about anything cool happening, uh, that's how we'll end up for the evening. So Jamie, our last online person. Uh, and if you want to share whoever your last online person is something, you want to start out by sharing something great about Tosa Schools, you can start out that way too. Okay, that you have the microphone. Please state your name and address. All right. Hello, my name is Megan Fox, and I'll tell you why I'm not going to give you my address. For one, I just read your Wisconsin Rules of Open Meetings Act. It's a law. And the law in Wisconsin is uh, that the public has a right to participate in your meetings and nowhere in it does it say that anyone has to dox themselves online in order to participate in a public meeting. I want you to know that school boards like yourselves have been sued successfully before in the past for doing this. It's considered an intimidation technique. Now you can sigh and put your face in your hands, but you need to listen to me when I tell you that you can be sued for what you're doing. You are violating people's rights and you're doing what you did today by cutting off public comment in the beginning of the meeting when you had a full house of people who wanted to speak to you and you made them wait two hours and most of them had to go home because they had to work jobs tomorrow or because they had to get kids somewhere or because they had to go home and get dinner. What you did is violating the public's First Amendment rights to address their public bodies for grievances. It is a violation of the Constitution, and you should each be ashamed. Sharon, you should be ashamed of yourself. Leanne, you should be ashamed of yourself. Michael, you should be ashamed of yourself. And you too, Jenny, and you too, Jessica. And let me tell you something else. When people use names in front of your school Energy, board and they mean, come in and they say, I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about a specific person on the board. You are not allowed to tell them that their First Amendment right to speak is curtailed in some way because they want to use a name. That is illegal. What you are doing is against the, uh, the Wisconsin <laughs> Open Meetings Act. Now, listen, I have three minutes and I know that I, my time is not up. You are not to interrupt me while I am speaking. This is public comment time and I'm a member of 
the public. You can sit there and be as uncomfortable as you want, but I have this three minutes. So listen to me, Michael. When you are talking to people, when they come here to see you, you are put into this position, by the way, by the people of this town. They are your first priority. Surprise. Where are you? They are your first priority. They are the Just people continue. you're responsible to. You need me to. to mute this? Yes. Why Thank would you. you why would you I why would you mute okay. me? Okay. Sorry, I, my I three minutes you, uh, are not up. My three okay. minutes no, are not up. At the point where we start wow. respecting individual board members, um, we devolve. Well, they're wrong. Uh, if you've already spoken, um, your time is up on that topic. Anyone? Uh, my time was not up, by uh, the way. They're full well, of crap. To attack. <laughs> Look at them. First, they're so uncomfortable. The chair has a right to cut off comment if the comment is not what? aligned with oh. the dignity of the body. Oh, no, you don't. So, Oh, um, no, you just to put that out there. That so is not we, what the First you know, Amendment says. If there's says. something inappropriate being said. What was inappropriate? Was inappropriate? No, that's a judgment call. That's true. What? But the chair does have authority to do that. Bullshit. The chair does not have authority under our rules to cut off a board member. We have no time limits. <laughs> so I can just keep talking here once you recognize me. But to Look say there. whether you support me or not in the community, we have an orderly process. What was unorderly about that? And I had three minutes. The chair is running the meetings, and the chair has certain discretions. And that's I could sue okay. him for this. That's probably a good idea. You um, should. I second should. Second thing about minutes, we learned years ago to keep the full board minutes to legal, legally required items because it became unwieldy to recap. The conversation. <laughs> I'm going to check minutes. the rumble rant. They're going crazy I in think, there. think, though, with respect to the committees where you're looking for active community participation to work with you, if in your. I'm going to have to come back next month and do it meeting, again. And in your minutes, you provide some narrative that uh, uh, not to discuss the topic in the minutes, but to raise interest in the community when they go what are these what are these committees doing like oh well they talked about this today or they talked about that and and wow i think i'd like to go and watch that meeting or you know, there's i think from a committee we need to get this to alex stein your objectives <laughs> in the minutes, i'm going to clip that not legally different but just paradigm different he needs to go what you and with your notices as well to generate, you know, those people. He literally you know, just said he had the right to, to make them stop know, oh, a person from speaking. And, and he's speaking literally about wiping his ass out. Now. Yeah. I know something about that. So I'm uh, that meeting I'm going to come to. Who is this so guy? I, I don't even know his name and I need to sue him. More community but I don't know his name. Who's theory, talking? Right? Who knows what actually happens? But okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I don't know who was um, talking, unfortunately. Who was that man? There has been quite a few public comments about the human growth and development many not from Wauwatosa. Um, at this point, that decision's been made. Um, agree or not, the decision's made. We're moving forward. Oh, so they um, didn't even care. We won't take this up again for another three years. Um, that's per policy. We're not reconsidering it. We're not, it's off the table. We're moving forward. It's being implemented. Um, at this point, if you're a TOSA parent and you've got concerns and anxieties, I understand. Um, I would say this is a great opportunity to reach out to principals. Do you think I know enough lawyers to, the team, to get Dr. a lawsuit Marble. going? <laughs> uh, we want to hear those thoughts yeah. and concerns. It is really hard as a board member. And I'm, I think Minnesota and Wisconsin have, uh, have a dual have thing where you can practice in each other's state. In the curriculum. Really? And they're yep, valid. I'm almost have, positive. And you I should, should talk to Nikki talk about it. My, my cousin is a lawyer in Wisconsin, uh, and, and I'm pretty things. sure. Hang on. Um, with some of the other comments that we've gotten, um, so feel free to comment away. You will have that opportunity at least until a policy may be changed by any three of the policy. I don't know if it'll be the policy, policy committee or I'll throw it to Mr. Phillips and his colleagues. But this is this is over. Um, so the community had a lot of opportunities for feedback. There were multiple opportunities. Uh, beginning a year ago this month is when I first saw the information shared uh, seeking community participation. And those continued through January. And it went through that that body. 
It went through an internal body. It went through the curriculum community, which also had several parents and community members on it. So if you would like to call and talk with me about it, if you would like to leave screaming voicemails about me being a pedophile about it, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> well, you sound probably like won't have sir. much of an impact on my thinking. Uh, if you want to sit down and have coffee and really discuss it, I'd be happy to do that. I think most of the board members would as colleagues, but I would say I'm really interested in what parents and community members in Wauwatosa have to say. Um, I respect other school districts being able to do whatever you would like and advocate at your school district. Please do that. Democracy is important. At this point, we're moving forward. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. Um, Democracy is important in a lot of states. Uh-huh. I have two quick things. Oh, here comes One in end. response to what Ms. Falk-Pellick and Ms. Uh, Alexander shared about disability um, awareness months and our partnerships. Mr. This Phillips one was raised, very upset. Um, She's the one who put her head in her hand. How we might write into policy, <laughs> uh, preferencing vendors perhaps that build a relationship with the district. And so I'm just curious. Yeah, they're if it's literally taking away people's voices, by the way. Consider as a board writing a thank you note. I didn't even get my three minutes. The one who was a little bitch was the one in the jean jacket. With our transition yeah, she was really upset too. You know, the one that didn't let like, even put an ounce of makeup on today. And like, I just you know, think it's an opportunity like, for the board Jenny to show the employers in the Hogue. community who work with Jenny our, Hogue thinks um, she's better than everyone else. I appreciate that they are taking that opportunity. Um, and the These second Jose thing loyal. was you asked for something positive. These Jose loyal. And I wanted to call out the custodial staff at Tosi East. Do they know Mr. what Chewin democracy means? Can I say his name right? Nope. Chewinski. And Nick Hughes. For <gasps> I, I, would have, I would have gone Alex excited, but like, that, hey, old bitch, um, do you even have kids in the fucking in, 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 the, in the goddamn really school district? Along with the chick really next to you. Um, so guy down in the corner with the English accent, for, um, you don't even go well here. Chick, um, I got that Target time, jean jacket so back in 1980. It's calling for a rewash. And the trans chick all the way on the right, I know that you're really for this. I would just fucking rip them. All right. Um, so uh, our fall sports at East are in their postseason. Yeah, and, and the weird guy and doing the ASMR announcements. Team and the girls yeah. volleyball team are both regional Why champions. Why is he whispering in the um, The girls volleyball team has the game People tomorrow, and the boys soccer team has the game on I'm Thursday. So we can see the people there. Um, it is very a lot of support for the guys um, and the girls. Uh, and I think we can get deep into this uh, run this year. So. Cross country is going to stay too. Girls, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's daughter. My ASMR. <laughs> ASMR in the microphone. Oh, parent moment there. <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, if you My three minutes are oh. not done. <laughs> I have ASMR to do. New <laughs> I, oh, I yeah. like and for the next 30 Arvin. seconds, I will and lick the microphone. And you have to listen so to it. <laughs> And if yeah, you want to leave know. messages like, calling me a pedophile, um, <laughs> is that a promise? A phenomenal music, uh, phenomenal arts. Um, and this Saturday, as I was meandering my way past East, I saw I, what I think is the first time was like a democracy means shut up music. You guys, introduction that's why my book is called. Three. So big thank you to the shut staff up. who did that. Uh, if you have not experienced I, Band Blast Off, I have, um, I have which met is a summer school program before. for kids going, mm -hmm. I believe, Every public grade, board uh, is full of band. these same people uh, it is a hoot. who want to silence and my censor you. And, Wow. There's a That's whole a book a about it. Um, oh, Megan Fox, so Minnesota really lawyers cool. and file for reciprocity of their good standing um, in Wisconsin. So <laughs> each of the middle schools are going to do some great, great. productions. Uh, the secondary schools and then parent-teacher conferences, if they have not started already at the elementary. I believe elementary school are in the midst of them and then middle school, high school are about to start out. So uh, this is a great opportunity for parents to engage uh, in the schools and make sure that you're doing stuff. Um, so a big thank you to all the teachers. The one bitch down at the bottom. She's like, things. excuse and me, we need to end we're this. We're also doing a lot of extra additional grade engagement. So she looks like my one cousin is a total bitch. Oh, she's going to regret this. Regret this. this. I'm going to so look her up. I'm going to find out everything there is to know, and I'm going to print it. So a big thank you. Um, thanks for everybody who came out tonight and participated in democracy. Um, they participated in democracy. What? I want to thank and the uh, and Julia. The burning of the Thank you for participating in fascism. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you for Let's give ourselves a round of applause. A round, of applause. a round up for fascism. <laughs> we love it. so good at silencing the First you. Amendment rights of Americans. For all of you that were silenced, we Wisconsin thank you. We thank you for coming. Um, round of applause. I have a motion to adjourn.
So moved. Anybody wants to want to do something in the name of communism? No, we're good. <laughs> okay. Thank yes. you. Ms. Fraley. The meeting is yes. adjourned. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Dr. Jessup Inger. Yes. Dr. Hoyk. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Ms. Willis. These people yes. are doctors. Have a great night, everybody. Oh, they're in so much trouble. The recording has stopped. Oh, thank God. Well, I know what I'm doing tonight, Farron. I'll be uh, clipping that and I will be writing an article about the fascism going on in the, the Wauwatosa School District in Wisconsin. You witnessed it here first, folks. There is fascism in the United States and it is happening at the Wauwatosa School District. Damn. I'm trying to think the... um. Yeah, the, the, the Wawa socialism community um, <laughs> hey, my was God. on a roll tonight. My God. I mean, they just don't even hide it. They're like, we have a right to cut off. And, and you heard him. He, he stuttered. He was like, comments that are are inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? That other guy swore. line. That other guy swore. He said shit. And, and that wasn't inappropriate. Mm -hmm. How well, he said, com comments, comments that are out of line. They what? didn't like to hear me telling them, you're breaking the law. You're violating constitutional rights. You're keeping people from speaking to their government, you bad, bad people. Out you should line. all be replaced. Out of line. The little out of line. Hog. What did I say that was so inappropriate? Well, the thing is, they said it was out of line. And it's like, well, define out of line. According to who? Yeah. According to who? Like, who's the judge? Isn't that why we have a First Amendment? Because none of he us also are the said judge. It wasn't, it wasn't illegal for people to address certain people. And it isn't. And it's if you not. watch every single one of Alex Stein's, like, the reason that I know this is just because I've talked to Alex Stein and how he does this. But they try to make it be out of line. They're like, you can't name right. names. Oh, fuck you. Yes, and, I can. An Open Meetings Act across the board. Mm hmm. You have the right to go, you have the right to speak, and you have the right to address people by name. Alex Stein, in his open meetings, in mm -hmm. his city council meetings, goes and addresses people one by one and brings up every single one of their scandals. <laughs> I love it. That's what I'm going to do with these people. I'll, and anyway, I'll find you the, I'll find you the right their, one. It's look amazing. Look at how uncomfortable they got when I was just saying their names. Right. You exactly. absolutely can't. And they will try and stop you, too. If you go to a school board meeting and you're like, I want to talk about Mr. Smith, the science teacher. They'll be like, you cannot talk about personnel issues here. Fuck you. Yes, I can. This mm -hmm. is America. It's a public board. And if I want to say that Mr. Smith is doing bad things and wearing super tits to his class, I can say that. Like, mm -hmm. I think Mr. Smith is sexualizing my kids because he's wearing super tits at the woodshop class. And I wanted to stop because Mr. Smith is a pervert. I can say that in a public meeting and I don't care who it offends. Fuck mm -hmm. you if it offends you. This is America on the wall. Get on the wall, you people. You, it's just outrageous the way that they behave. It's outrageous. Mm -hmm. The yeah. entire lot. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We want your name and address, but you cannot say our names. Here. What kind of bullshit is this? I hear I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to you in the private chat. You want you want to talk about going rogue on a freaking city council, let alone a school board? Play that play that uh, okay. video. All right, hold on. This I is one get, of my favorite ones I that have he to get does. past the ad because I had to cancel my YouTube uh uh what I whatever you call it, premier pre premium. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. If you'll come up to the podium and uh, give your this name. This is my all-time favorite of his that he does. I don't think I've seen this one. I'm excited. I love Alex. Oh, yeah. They didn't bring out... They didn't bring up, you can't call it members okay, as they were so, being complimented. Listen, uh, Mayor Dan, I'm just going <laughs> to That's up right. Cliff real quick. We got to talk about Cliff and his issues. So uh, uh, Cliff Hennehy or Kelly, he, whatever his name is, in 1995, you know, he was a city manager of Dallas and he got caught lying about a misappropriation of funds. So it's just funny because that's what we have is we have a bunch of liars and cheats. Like when I come up here to speak, you limit my free speech. You turn off the cameras. That's because you're afraid because you're never going to get public embarrassed because you're doing a terrible job. That's why your city, the cops are getting killed. The dogs are getting killed because you're not good at your job. You're a loser. You're a pathetic <laughs> idiot. You're going to get disgraced and you're going to get publicly this embarrassed you, and a level the that way. you've never been embarrassed before because you do it. 
You're a public servant. I don't serve you, bud. You serve me. So when yep. you got elected, you have to realize you work for the people. But all of you guys are a bunch of self-righteous idiots. Kenny, Jeff, Jennifer, you think, oh, I'm a little city council person. I'm so smart. That's not how it works, bud. You work for us. But you're going to come up here and you're going to limit free speech. You're going to make it so it's impossible for us to get our point across. But that's not going to work, this bud, is the because way. you're dealing with primetime 99 Alex Stein. I'm from Highland Park High School. Just like we prime worked time for Alex Stein. Every, every year we killed y'all in football. Every year we <laughs> <laughs> because you guys are a bunch of podunk idiots that ride horses. You guys are a bunch of dummies, and you guys are all bad shape, fat headed losers. And that's that's best for the guy shape. in the Freemason tie. You're a loser. You're a loser. You're a loser. <laughs> You're all pathetic losers and cowards. And so we're going to expose you in 4K. And this is just a start. So I'm going to get Freedom of Information Acts. We're going to get you guys. uh, We're going to get anytime you guys send an email talking about city business that has to do with me. We're going to expose that because at the end of the day, I know when you have guys like Cliff that got in trouble, that is a known liar. And then you hire people like that. That shows that you don't follow the rules. You're a bunch of losers that don't think the rules apply to you because you think that you want a city council membership. Oh, I'm so smart. I'm the city council member. I can. Break the rules. I can make the rules. But guess what? The same rules that apply to me are going to apply to you. So we're going to expose you, Dan. We're going to expose Cliff because he's a known liar. You guys can look that up. Go go to uh, the Dallas Observer right here in 1995. For anybody here that don't know it, it talks about how you're a liar and you, you blame oh, yeah. it on the Big lowest person in your staff. Right that shows you how pathetic you are. You're a pathetic person. You're a pathetic liar. And the fact that you're even a public servant shows how bad this town is. You guys are all a disgrace, especially you, Cliff, because you're a known liar. We got you lying right here so the fact that anybody here would trust you shows that your judgment skills are stupid you're an idiot bw you're an idiot tandy all of you guys the fact that you picked this guy as your city manager when you know that he's a known liar it shows that you don't care about the people all you care about is yourself yep. and your own ego but sadly you guys got like me people like me prime time 99 hours time that's going to call you out 24 7 because i don't 99. let public officials tinkle on oh. me and tell me it's raining i'm going to call you out and cliff you got busted at 4k you're a liar i'm going to make sure to expose you Thank you for my can time. You give your, yeah, can you give your name no, and yeah, address? Yeah. My name is Primetime99, Alex Stein, Dan, and you just got God. And what's your address? It's 7509 Inwood Road, Dan. Right, and let me tell you, you something, though. It is, it is the fact <laughs> that you time hired is up. I don't, time is so up. Why would you hire that guy that time, you know he's a liar? Time is up, I know, but why would you hire a known liar? You can be seen. Oh, okay. wa- the time you're wasn't up for him to get the address, and though. Look, you turn off the camera again. again. Mm-hmm. Your, your time is up. Blurple We're moving forward now to child. citizens' comments. At this time, any individual wishing to discuss any matter on the agenda shall be allowed to speak for a length. Look at these assholes. I mean, mm-hmm. honest to God, that is the way they should be treated because seriously, they think they're gods on Mount Olympus. They can't do anything wrong. It's their little fiefdom and their little kings sitting on their little thrones and they just want to stop you from speaking. In fact, you know what? I am going to do it. I'm going to pull up the first board meeting I went to at that public library so you guys can see it because bef- that's how I'm going to close out the show tonight. I'm going to show you. I was I looked like Sarah Palin that night too. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the, you work for me, bucko. I don't work for you. You work for me. Uh, yeah, way too. This was my first appearance at the library after I had sent them a two page letter about my concern about seeing the pornography in front of kids that they allowed these guys to, <laughs> to do to watch. And instead of responding to me, this woman sicked the police on me and had them investigate me for real. That's what happened. Um, so. <laughs> 900 like 500 n word road is my address is that what he said 500 n word road oh my gosh that's hilarious i'm oh. looking for my for my playlist where did it go oh god i gotta find it i gotta find it because it i want to see the playlist why can't i find the playlist i mean it's really a long time ago so wait where's the orland park public library there it is view full playlist there it is all right. So it'll be the first video all the way at the bottom. Oh, God, I, I have so many of these on tape. If you guys ever are bored and you want to watch um, me talk in front of board meetings, there's an entire playlist on my YouTube channel called the Orland Park Public Library uh, Pornography Scandal, I think, or Child Porn Scandal. And uh, Are you still in Illinois? No, I'm in New York now. But when I was oh. in Illinois... Uh, I, I fought this big war and I wrote a book about it with my friend, Kevin. Um, and so Orland this is, is it. Far from the, me. This is my first. Yeah. Orland Park, the Orland Park Public Library. You yeah. know where that is. Uh, this was my first library board meeting public comments. Here we go. I had dark hair at the time. 
Oh, wait. Frankly, you have no right to demand answers. You have no right to demand answers. This guy is such a weirdo. I'm a library patron. It's a little bit hard. It's a little bit low. Volume's a little know, bit low. I know. Volume is low. And the October 21st, excuse me, it was emailed last night. It's Sunday, October 20th. Um, to my understanding, you're requesting an agenda item on the 11th. It'll get louder because when Kevin talks, you can hear, you can hear him. I can't promise you that that request will be accepted because the library director and the board president set the agenda for the meeting. You've expressed your intent to speak during public comment today. Um, you've expressed your desire to speak on two matters. The rudeness of you voting for our public library. Well, 157 of you on Rumble. Hit that plus button, you degenerates. So this is him set for one. He takes all this time setting up what Kevin's going to talk about. You asked to talk about two things, this and that. And before you talk, I just want you to know, we might respond to this. Or we might not. Like, it's so ridiculous. And he goes through yeah. all of this, like, here's what you will do and here's what you won't do. He's still talking. Two minutes into this, this asshole is still talking and saying what we will and will not do. Um, and now he's, I will set your timer for two minutes. Desire to express that you oh, shit. Where does it go? Where does it start? And it does answer. Okay, here we go. Policy to prohibit pornography. That being said, five minutes, you're on the clock. Go. 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 The government body is responsible to the people. And it does answer to the public. And that's, that's in the U.S. Constitution, by the way, which Where is overgoven by you. <clears throat> Where does the U.S. Constitution state that the board has to respond to your response? Pardon me, I think you're on for five minutes. My five minutes, and you can add that on to the end. You I don't ask me questions. Excuse me, ma'am, you are out of order. I'm if sorry. If you speak up again, you'll be asked to leave. I hope someone's keeping track of the time he's I speaking. am keeping track of your time, ma'am. You've been given an additional 17 seconds. 17 seconds. Agenda. This is an edited one. What am I showing you? This is the wrong know. one. It's edited <laughs> and the volume is too low. Hold on. I have one that's not edited where you can actually hear the comments. Where is it? This is going to drive me absolutely crazy. Uh, oh, shit. Because these people were so bad. So bad. Um, 14. Well, the way he's talking to you there. Oh, oh, yeah. Total jackass. While you get that. All right, now you can hear it. Hold on. Now it's, I got the right one. I got the right one. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. This guy was, his name is James Fessler. He was such a dick. I mean, James just Fester, like Fester's in your grundle. Fessler. It just awful. Well, Fester. Like he festers in, yes. the, in the grundle area. <laughs> So now he's going to go back through his thing. He's in. The, he's festers in the gooch. Listening to Kevin's comments are hilarious because nobody interrupts Kevin. Of the library. All right, here we go. And congratulations to the new Madam President of this August board. August have, board. Um, several concerns I'd like to raise here, starting with the extreme rudeness of the library staff. And speaking in general terms, I have found that the staff at the Orlando you know Public him? Library yeah. is the absolute That's my bestie. Collection of public employees I have ever encountered. And since this is Chicago, that says something. I actually have, <laughs> after a terrible experience here That's on October something. 4th in your library, went around to the different libraries in the other surrounding communities, such as Mokina, Tinley Park, and Palos Park, and New Lenox. Every library employee I encountered in those facilities was incredibly professional, very kind, had a willingness to help, was nice to people when they communicated information that is the complete opposite of what I have experienced here as a Bunch library patron bitches. in terms of the Orland Park Public Library and how they treat people. One thing that was interesting to me is I found that you have well over 100 people working here at the Orland Park Public Library. And I refer you to your staff listing as of October 5th, 2013. Well over 100 people, however, you appear to not have any policies at all. They like in the your boots. policy and procedure manual 
pertaining to customer service or the fair and equitable and kind treatment of members of the public who paid for this gorgeous and opulent library. <laughs> it is the most extravagant library I have ever seen. <laughs> gorgeous. I have not seen five-star hotels that look this nice. But yet <laughs> the people who work in this building are not up to that same caliber. They do not belong in <laughs> a five-star hotel. Or they don't. Even staying in Trust it. me. But yet they are being paid to be here what I think exorbitant salaries in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars, 70 thousands of dollars, many thousands of dollars, and yet they are intensely rude to members of the public. There's a problem here. There's a problem that there is a colossal policy and procedure manual with many sections, section A6, section A10, section whatever, that there's not one word written saying to the library staff, this is how you should treat people. I want to refer you, since this building looks like it could be a gorgeous five-star hotel, I want to refer you to a company called the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Company. Some of you may have heard of this. If not, this is a library. There are books probably on hotel and hospitality management. I know the Ritz-Carlton has written a book by Horst Schultze on customer service. They have a process there called ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. That is the attitude that every Ritz-Carlton employee takes when they are addressing well, people. True. They never address anyone rudely. The other thing that I want to get into is in terms of your computer waste. There is excessive waste of computers. If you look at your own stats in your own figures, the computer usage in the adult rooms, the adult floor that's upstairs, is in every single month in the year 2012 and 2013 that I have these stats, every month it's thousands and thousands of hours of computer usage. 3,000, 3,000, 4,000, all of these thousands. But when you look at the computers being used on the first floor, it's only 400 hours here, 200 hours, 300 hours. 10 times as many hours are being used on the upstairs floor, yet there are so many machines. Yeah, Daisy, he can thrash you with a smile on his floor. face and he does I it. I observed library staff perfect. chasing away a mother and two small children who wanted to use that computer as a family, and they were chased away and told to take mm. a mother and two young children. Up they to did the that adult to me. floor and use oh. computers there where adult men were viewing pornography. I saw this. I saw on three separate computers men viewing pornography, two heterosexual pornography sites and one homosexual pornography site. Oh, yes, this is where young children are being sent. I sent I him up deplorable. there after I saw I it. I went downstairs because he was with the kids and I was like, go look, dollars. go see. There's other mm -hmm. libraries that I visited in my investigation. They only had two or maybe four computers devoted to that children's section. And on top of that, families with small children were also allowed to use those computers instead of being chased away rudely. My final thought before my time alludes is if you do have something to communicate to a member of the public, such as this computer is not available for use or there's another area there, there is a way to say that to people that is treating ladies and gentlemen like ladies and gentlemen. You can communicate that effectively, politely, with good cheer and in a way that is respectable and that is worthy of this gorgeous, gorgeous building. Treat people better here. They deserve it. They paid for this building and they sure pay enough for your staff. Thank you very much for my time. Thank you. So they never interrupt mm. him. But this wait, do you see what they do to me? Uh -huh. The board has received your letter and your desire to express the ignoring patron letters and hoping they will go away. <laughs> and pornography on the library's second floor, which was just addressed by Mr. Dijon. Um, you also suggest that you demand answers. Um, frankly, you have no right to demand answers. Um, second of all, with regard to the 11 21 13 meeting, excuse me, ma'am. With regard Nothing. to the 11 21 13 meeting, you have <laughs> Never mind. Policy Never mind. With regard to responding to the community's concerns, <laughs> I will advise you that under the Freedom of Information Act, you can submit requests for written documents to the library. If the library has those documents in the possession, they are required by law to produce them to you. They are not required to answer your questions under the Freedom of Information Act, nor are they required to re prepare documents that respond to your questions that are not in existence. So therefore, that is why you are not allowed to demand answers. Um, with regard to pornography on the library second floor, you say that you'd like to have a new policy to prohibit pornography. That being said, Five minutes, you're on the clock. Go. Go. 
My name is Megan Fox. My topic for comment is the unresponsiveness of this library board to uh, patron concerns and the lack of pornography policy, creating a clear and present danger in the Orland Park Library to women and children. There was no response to my letter of concern, and I sent that letter to this board and all library directors and the village. <clears throat> it's been 16 days, and I have still not received one word of response to the complaints within that letter. What policy does the Orland Park Library under under that it makes it okay, operate under that makes it okay for a government body funded by taxpayers to sit quiet and not respond to a concerned parent who encountered a serious problem at your library? In your board meeting rules, you state that you will not take questions from the public. So, one, you do not respond to letters from the public, and two, you also do not respond when the public shows up in person. What kind of operation is this? Is this a monarchy? Is this a board of overlords? I, I, I'm here to tell you that this government body is responsible to the people, and it does answer to the public. And that's, that's in the U.S. Constitution, by the way, which where is under-governed by you. Listen, he's asking me questions. Where the U.S. Constitution states that the board has to respond to you in response. Pardon me, I'm going to take five my five minutes. minutes, and you can add that on to the end. You I don't ask me to. questions. Excuse me, ma'am, you are out of order. I'm if sorry. you speak up again, we'll be asked. That was my friend who popped in. I hope someone's keeping track of the time he's I speaking. am keeping track of your time, ma'am. You've been given an additional 17 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am here to formally request that your policies regarding response time to community concerns be added to your agenda for the next board meeting, and that action be taken to ensure that no parent or concerned person of the public waits unanswered by taxpayer-paid staff for 16 days. Now, pornography policies. You are aware, because I, I thoroughly detailed the incident in my letter, of the pornography that I personally encountered in the adult computer lab which I was forced to use because of your terrible policies against parents with children. The Orland Park Library has no written policy on accessing porn online. The policies are very vague. I've been given them all and I've read them all. All four area libraries to which I traveled, including Mokina, Tinley, New Lenox, and Palos Park, have very clear, no-nonsense policies regarding porn. They do not allow it, and if you access it, you are asked to leave. So there is precedent that these policies exist. Had I listened to the advice of the rude staffer who demanded that me and my children go up to the adult computer lab, I would have exposed my children to pornography that was on the screen. When I informed one of your staffers of what happened to me, she said, we have a lot of those. And she meant perverts looking at porn. <laughs> Curious about the danger, I requested all police reports of incidents that occurred at your library and uncovered several incidents that I would expect to find in a place that does nothing to discourage this deviant behavior. In 2012, an adult computer regular user was involved in an incident of stalking a teen requiring police presence. He was sexually harassing her. In 2006, a wow. man was masturbating in front of a teen victim in the library. In 2008, indecent exposure, a man pulled his penis out of his pants and showed it to a woman at your library. In 2009, and this yeah. is very disturbing, someone, a patron perhaps, called the police to report someone in the adult computer lounge accessing porn. When the police arrived, your library clerk refused to make a statement and suggested that the police talk to the perpetrator who had already left. This clerk did not take down any descriptions or help the police in any way. Why is Orland Park Library staff protecting perverts and sex, sex offenders? Why have you made Orland Park Library a place that is attractive to perverts and is dangerous for women and children, as evidenced by police reports. I made that pen. Why was I told by a computer <laughs> lounge clerk then and today that anyone can access the online system with no ID, no library card, and not even a signature? You just give it, they give you a number. This is, this is perfect for people who want to commit crimes online. Not to mention, not only against children, but a haven for terrorists and criminals who want to leave no online trace of their plans. How does the library ensure registered sex offenders are not using this facility in close proximity to children? And the answer to that is well, no, the upper right's like information from she this makes point. a lot of good there points. Are, there's no policy <laughs> regarding sex offenders and your children here at this library. Orland Park Library needs to revise <coughs> your family unfriendly policies for parents with children regarding computer use and bring them in line with Tinley Park, Mokina, Palos Park, and New Lenox. Further, your adult computer area should be modeled after those libraries who position screens strategically so that no adult material goes unnoticed by staff. I have given this board written copies of my concerns and I want it noted in the record that I have presented issues requiring immediate action and response by the board that should be added to the November agenda. 
These issues should be addressed by this administration. And at that Excuse time, did Fox. you add 17 Excuse seconds me. to my time? Excuse me. I was just about to say to you that I'm going to add 30 seconds to your time if you don't <laughs> overreact. I only have one more second. If you don't overreact. What is your name you again? 30, go ahead. You've got 30 seconds. Well, if I have 30 seconds, then I guess I can continue for longer. First of all, it's completely unprofessional of you, an attorney, to not state your name when someone asks it of you in a public meeting. And your overreaction started this entire affair. It did, sir, Mr. Nameless Person. <coughs> what is your name? Can you respond? I'll give you some of my 30 seconds to actually give me your name. Well, your 30 seconds are up. I'll be more than happy. My name is <laughs> Can you spell that for me, please? F E S S L E R. Thank you for your comments. They're appreciated. The library board will take them under consideration. <laughs> These assholes. They had no idea what was about to hit them. This was the first meeting I spoke at, and we then went on to speak at a hundred meetings. Like every month, we were there for three years. Oh wow! Three, three years, like Aaron. Fetch Mac and Megan, Megan Fox again. Every every month, and we had a judge order them to give us FOIA requests every month. They had to give us copies of their of all their emails every month and it was like they worked for us we turned them into our employees it was fantastic <laughs> and they ended up having to pay us fifty five thousand dollars in a judgment uh because they violated so many open meetings uh act laws and foia laws 55 grand is what they had to pay to us for what they did so when i tell the board at wawa wherever wisconsin that, wawa you have a, socialist. <laughs> that you have a problem on your hands because you just shut down the first amendment i ain't no newbie at this mm -hmm. i know how to sue a, a, a board i have written a 600 page book about suing another public board and i will do it again god <laughs> Damn it, I will do it again. You and I will write down. the forward. You shut me <laughs> down. Yeah, fair. We can write it together. It'll be fantastic. Let's sue these people for shutting us down. Let's go back next month and try again. I mean, seriously. I said that they're not going to bring it up for the next three years. Good God. Mm -hmm. Sue they ass. Yeah, right. Well, what is my motto? What You know my motto. If you go over to the merch store, you can find my motto. And this is why it is what it is. Uh, because when people do this shit to you, you cannot just lay down and let it happen. No, no, no. You keep calm and you sue everyone. <laughs> everyone. Okay? And then you have a mega pint later. But we <laughs> sue, we sue everyone. Uh, and you know what? These people are going to stop fucking with Americans eventually when we get enough of them to learn the lesson. Uh, and that's that's the lesson. Fuck around and find out. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Farron, thanks for stopping in tonight. I really oh appreciate gosh, anytime that. Anytime. I love coming by. <laughs> it's always a good time. It's yeah. always fun. It was worth it, wasn't it? It was worth it. Even to hang out for like two hours in that this meeting, it was worth it. I'm going to clip that and I'm going to put it up real soon. I'm gonna Where can people Nick buy your book? Amazon.com, baby. Shut up. The Bizarre War. The Let's one go club it. library waged against the First Amendment. Go pick it up and come back tomorrow because I'll be here at 11 a.m. Don't miss it. I love you guys. See Thank you guys. later.